Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join our cult. I'm so happy I'm with two lads actually want to sing along That's with that. Do they not enjoy, they don't get into it? No, it's been Ro- Ross curses years. under his breath. Uh, it's a novelty <laughs> for us still, isn't it? Yeah. It, it still is, but you know, give it a few more weeks of doing this and you'll be doing, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't notice every time. Hello and welcome to a thrilling edition of the Cult Like Wrestling Podcast. You are joined by the dulcet tones of Mafu, Fraser and Adam. All right. Hey. Back, hey. Yes, Back you are. Again. In my head, a crowd cheered then, victoriously. <laughs> and you know why those crowd are happy? They're not just happy to listen to our amazing, well-thought-out and dodgy references from the 80s and sometimes the 1960s, but also they're chilling and thrilling at the idea of going to AEW all in Big. and never having to use Ticketmaster <laughs> ever again. It worked fine for us. I hate you. Well, I say it worked fine. It wouldn't let us. Um, it wouldn't let us select the actual tickets that we wanted. So auto assigned some tickets, and we had to take those. It wouldn't let me change mm-hmm. anything. Um, but we we got them. I was in the queue. I was at two thousand plus as well. Quickly dropped like five minutes. I was in there. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry. To, I'm rubbing it. No, in no. I, you got I, your tickets. I right? you get tickets. Mis- oh yeah, I got them. Yeah, okay, good. How, how but, the it, but the original ones I got. I got the pre 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 because it's not who you are, it's who you know, and it didn't matter because everyone else was in the know, as it turned out. So Ticketmaster went, ah, and uh, just pooed itself to death. What so that? I got so to the very, wait, wait, I got to the very last page of three tickets sorted, and there's the, the, the tickets, there, 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 clicked, and he goes, oh, no, you can't have three. I went, oh. So then I went and tried to refresh just to do it again, and it was like, ooh, ooh, I don't know what you want. You can get three tickets. So I had to wait for the pre-pre ones, like everybody else. Oh, the regular pre-sales. The regular pre-sales, yeah. Oh, not with them. Yeah. Ugh, that, that you managed, to, you managed to get some. How are the seats? The decent seats? Oh, no, they're lovely. Good seats? Yeah. Good, good, good. The lovely, you should fat? expect from the pre-pre ones. Ours are a bit crap. Oh. Ours are like... The, are they? The, yeah, well, it wouldn't let me select anything else. Ooh. I don't know. Fingers Try crossed we'll get some media ones and mm. be front row, obviously. Oh, yeah. Green T-shirt and then one with the long hair with his mum. Oh, the side. oh, yeah. We should cosplay as other fans. <laughs> <laughs> Ray's got that Brock Lesnar like, I was going to say I was going to say like, Ray's got that weird oh what's in the t-shirt company the UFC yeah, t-shirt yeah. Like, wow Tap Brock Lesnar fans looking a lot, lot less annoying nowadays oh, oh, it's Fraser <laughs> speaking of which how are you sir I'm doing grand I've, I've had a bit of a hay fever attack the past couple oh, of days so I'm really sort of like nasally and just bunged up. It's not very nice. So apologies to any any wheezing throughout the podcast. Yeah, you sound really nasal. It's very off-putting. It's very off-putting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed and, until you'd said uh, something. And yeah. All I can hear is your nose. <laughs> How are you, Matthew? You good? Uh, fantastic, mate. What a good. weird week of ups and downs and left and right. It's like an old cheat code for a Mega Drive game. It so, uh, yeah, can't wait to discuss it all with you lovely lads. And how are you in this magnificent jumper you're wearing? Thank you very much. It's a bit Christmassy, isn't it? It's rather Christmassy. Cheers. Cheers. Is it cozy? Uh, yeah, it's really nice, yeah. Just pay no um, attention, by the way, just current. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I've uh, I've injured my foot, but in the lamest way possible by wearing oh, no. Wellington. This is not on camera very well, yeah. Sort of see what's going on. It looks like a bag of Harry Potter. You, heard, there, you, yeah, yeah. you hurt not, your foot, you said. Da, da, da. Yeah, in the lamest hurt, way. Hurt my foot. Yeah, I was wearing a pair of Wellington boots that were too tight, and it's it's absolutely obliterated the back. You know when you, you oh, shoe yeah. rubs. I've got that. Oof. I stepped outside of the house yesterday to do the food bank, and um, I was like, nope, can't walk. I had to Uber a fifteen minute walk just because I was I was so out Ooh. of it. But I'm covered in plasters now, and everything's hunky dory. You so. poor thing. Yeah, I know. Poor right? thing. I know. Oh, but. You made it here today, though. I, I made it here. That's this the is, thing. Yeah, yeah, We're this. so thrilled and honoured that you managed to make it here with you. Well, I'm honoured. I'm honoured to be welcome back for a second week. I thought I was going to be cancelled uh, <laughs> following last week, so it's really good to be I here. I think you were hoping, so you never have to do it yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you've been, you were so successful, you were rebooked. Damn. I'll say something really problematic this week. <laughs> it was your springtime for Austrian painter, wasn't it? <laughs> say myself there. Bloody hell. That's a reference. Ask your granddad. Anyway, the news. AEW, yay! We've already covered that. Uh, also then, Tony Khan riding high on the uh, the copium. So was it Mike, ESPN's boxing reporter, Mike Coppinger, claimed hearing Wembley is scaled for only 40k for AEW. Far cry from last April when I was ringside for Tyson Fury and Dillian White. And it was packed to the brim with 94,000. Nothing beats the big fight feel at Wembley, just advertised himself, I guess. It's prompted a furious response from Tony Khan, who replied, Lies! What a load of crap. Tell your agent, Nick Khan, to shove it up his ass. 
Khan then added, since you carry the credentials of a credible reporter and represent the worldwide leader, what you hope that is, is that key? Well, I'm just curious, who is your source for this? And how can a reporter representing ESPN tweet something about legit news story that's so blatantly wrong and easily verify as a falsehood? Coppinger has not responded to Khan's tweet as at the time of this writing. <laughs> Bad week for supposed reporters, eh? Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, come on. <laughs> Do we have to? We don't just stay. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, so, great news for AEW. So, what have they done to bring us down to the hard, cold relatives of life? Uh, they've scrapped Dark and Dark Elevation. Now, Dark Elevation we knew about because it ran a best of the previous week, yep. and it was like, okay, you know, it's just a little show that's there, if we're being honest. Cancelling Dark, I mean, it's the first time in a long time... A, a wrestling podcast with lots of views has been cancelled and, and Matt K had nothing to do with it. I think you guys should have just put it Sorry, in this Matt. week in Sorry. wrestling. It, it should have been in there. <laughs> Both dark and dark elevation every single week. Well, it doesn't matter. No, is it? The rumoured Saturday night <laughs> show is set to premiere on June 17th with CM Punk's return and the new series will air on TNT in the United States. I hate CM Punk. I've never liked him. Collision. Cool name, though. Great, it's one of those... great time slot on a Saturday night when yeah. everyone's, everyone's in, in the house not doing anything. Just watching wrestling. <laughs> Coming on at 6.05, I guess. I'm excited. I'm excited for Collision, though. Yeah, it should be all right. Well, Dark and Dark Elevation are crap and boring, aren't they? Let's be honest. They were there to uh, get the numbers up. As people yeah. have speculated, they were going to try and sell AEW's content as a package deal and goes, look at all the hours of content yeah, we've got. Yeah, right. Look at all this Dark and Dark Elevation. Look at this stuff. AEW Dark. Matthew puts that on and does chores around the house. Matthew was ironed so many times that bloody thing. I have no idea what Matthew's happened. You don't happened, iron. <laughs> you do not iron. Oh, do I not do. give me that. I do. do. Really? You're looking really smart today, in fact. Thank the waistcoat, yeah. I thought it would nice to go with the little joke as being a bit of an Italian waiter. Is that a pocket square? Mm. It, is. it is a pocket it is. square. It Look is. That. And it's got no way of putting anything in because I haven't taken this Still. It. Still. It looks looking, good, though, yeah, doesn't it? You're looking dapper. amazing. Really nice. Thank yeah. you. It's good for people listening to this in audio form. <laughs> Just imagine you looking nice, I guess. Anyway, I'll get your order later. Wait for Tubman in Japan if you, yeah, if you love her. <laughs> <laughs> is, that really our, well. is that our AEW dark? <laughs> Tubman in Japan. That's our main event. Three people love it, and they're really sad there. See so you go. So, yeah. Uh, Roddy Strong, a report revealing when he was able to leave WWE. It's been revealed. Uh, PWE Insider Elite have reported that Strong's WWE contract came to end last November, though, due to, I wasn't aware of this, due to WWE not publicly announcing departures from the developmental brand, and due to this being a contract expiration rather than a release, it wasn't known to many. So that's how I was able to just appear and go, oh, it's, it's bloody him. It and worked out really well, didn't it? Because nobody was expecting that. Normally, mm -hmm. you catch wind of something. No, Nobody was tuning in to see Roddy yeah. Strong. It was great. I love the pop as well. It was, <laughs> no one was tuning oh, in to And they great. still won't. Like, no, 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 I, like I like Roddy. I like Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange that you, you, you would assume that usually what Sean Ross Sapp will report, like so-and-so has been let go from NXT, and we never had that with him. Even that, I think the same report notes that People in WWE didn't know that he was out of contract and they were surprised to see him, which, oh. like... You, and wait, it expired end of last year? Yeah, November. Yeah. So why did it take so long? Because the NXT no-compete is one month. Maybe yeah. it was on a three-month, I don't know. Yeah. But even then, the dates don't line up. What's he been doing for, like, Injured. two months? Oh, he, he healing? Hurt. I think Still. he was he probably think healing, so. just recovering from injuries. Yeah. And well, it's nice to see him back. Good to see him back, mm. yeah. Yeah, wondered Robert... Robert... Uh, Robert Root. Robert Strong, not Robert Weak. Hey. Long way to go for that, huh? Uh, CM Punk is doing his little tour. Mm. It's like Hawkwind, who I went to see with my dad uh, in Manchester. He's done WWE, and now he's doing Impact Wrestling, that place where he had like three matches in mm -hmm. 0203. Uh, yeah, he went there. Uh, he took some photos of Jordan Grace. He then played a round of Uno. What? Um, yeah. yeah, that's what you go Impact for, playing a, Uno. A rather, than watch the show. rather than watch the show backstage. <laughs> Ouch. Backstage, <laughs> playing it. <laughs> yeah. And again, just because we have the best news monkeys in the entire business, Aiden Gibbons wrote, it is unknown if Punk came out on top. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no yeah. idea. He's gone backstage to numerous shows. Monopoly at MLW. Yeah. You know, oh. Impact. Be great. Whole round of board games. Get him on a board game channel. Playing some board games. Yeah. The show's up. Yeah. You know. Cool. 
He's a mate of Matthews. Alicia Fox. Company, that, by the way. Oh, we, we, yeah, we've not got oh, that. Damn it, damn <laughs> oh, that's why he hasn't shown up. Now. <laughs> Alicia Fox has departed WWE, which was a surprise. What is this about? She she was reported as released ages ago, right? I remember being sat there doing one of those awkward live streams. And I'm sure I read Alicia Fox's name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I remember reading Alicia Fox's name. What's she been doing? Chilling out. Yeah, fair. I hope she's been getting paid the whole time. I hope they just JTG'd her and just forgot she existed. For I a like bit. that that could happen. Got a nice little paycheck out of it. Right, I, I like that, Alicia Fox. Like how it's been called the JTG. It's just, yeah. it's just <laughs> don't pick up that phone. <laughs> yeah, uh, she has been a regular fixture on WTV since 2019. She did make appearances at 2021 and 2022 Women's Royal Rumble matches. Did she? So I was like, oh, <laughs> the, on, yeah, honestly, I <laughs> no, thought, right. I went, did she? You I'm say like, oh. so. <laughs> I, when Aiden was reading this story out the other day, uh, I looked up her, like, when because she, she debuted on SmackDown in like 2008 as Edge's wedding planner. Mm. But she yep. also mar- managed this guy called DJ, DJ Gabriel, Gabriel. DJ Gabriel. Gabriel. on, on ECW. British guy. L- yeah, I looked him up, and his Wikipedia now says he's currently a waiter at ZZ in London. <laughs> That's his big thing oh. now. But it was just very strange, his list of wrestling accomplishments, and then amongst them is waiter at ZZ's. It's not what I expected from the ECW original. I can tell you, uh, that's something to get ready for when we go to London. It's something I forget every time I go there. ZZ's? Uh, I'm sure. There's DJ Gabriel. People. Yeah, ZZ Gabriel, very good. But when you go there and the pe- the waiting staff, the bartenders, and even the cleaners at the London restaurants and places you go to are all like tens. <laughs> They're all stunning. It's so forgettable. Like a London four is like a Newcastle ten. You go there, you're like, oh hello. It's like, yes, can I take your order? You're like, <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> just thought I'd point out. Is that, that your out. Hall so of Fame? It's just that's what that's what that's so you're excited. For I mean, it's really gonna be. We're in. gonna have to get. I'm just letting you guys know. And hopefully, you see someone there. You go, oh, Matthew was right. Right. Okay. <laughs> DJ Gabriel, would you put? That, 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 yeah, I, he's I got a beard now. Has he? Yeah, he's got a beard. Oh, he's got a show What's a name? So uh, DJ Gabriel doing waiting at uh, ZZ, Z- Z- whatever the hell it is, ZZ Gabor's, um, is, doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But yeah, it sucks to hear Alicia Fox been released. It does, but I'm looking at it like you said it. I'm really happy that she was able to get some money for yeah. not much. So good oh. for her. Best Northern Lights. I thought they the were legend returns when she was in the Rumbles. Not she was on the payroll. We've yeah. been hoodwinked. <laughs> I can't say I'm too upset. Good luck to Alicia Fox. I like her. Northern Lights suplex and all that. And other things. Say to see maybe got impact or no. What? <laughs> <laughs> For what? Book-a- Bookaroo, mouse trap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, also, Lever Bates announced on Twitter that she will no longer be working for AEW. A- AEW original Lever Bates. That's right. And it's rare that AEW release people nowadays. They're more about gathering than yeah, releasing. Yeah, so. con- contract expired and they chose not to renew it. She was really involved behind the scenes, wasn't she? I don't know yep. specifically what she did, but maybe that's part of it is what Will Washington's taking over. Yeah, it possibly. sort of seemed that way just because he had a bit like we, we, I'm sure we'll talk about it shortly because everyone loves Will Washington um, but he had a big list of stuff he was like oh he's going to be doing social media he's going to be yep. doing live event stuff he's going to be doing creative alongside Tony Khan it's like, how many hours in a day he's like, he's like it, the master of lore in AEW yeah he's sure consistency and wow. it's crazy the amount of rules a hell of a job there yeah man. right <laughs> yeah, the AEW's Tom Campbell I think they're calling Will Washington already so good for him not in that way um <laughs> Also, Eddie Dennis has re-signed... He does coke. Eddie Dennis has re-signed <laughs> with WWE. Well, makes the UK star Eddie Dennis has re-signed. It has been revealed on WWE's LinkedIn page. What? I didn't know that. Um, now, Dennis had re-signed as a writer and producer in NXT because he's properly retired. Mm. For now. Mm. Was, it, was he hurt? Was he banged up? Did he have to I don't retire? Because he's think so he good, didn't he? he chose to because uh, he's play. got other options. As he was a teacher, teacher right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A very good one, if I'll, all accounts. Were you a student? School. Uh, no, no. I saw it say something nice about it. I couldn't back up. <laughs> Who's teacher? your source? And a good one. Like, Yeah, where did you get that story from? Who's your source uh, on him being a good teacher? What children? Did you, yeah. Did you see the Devo? You remember Thank Devo? You. The band? Oh, no, uh, David Firth's mate from Fat Pie. You remember Devo? You're too nah, young. Big, you're nah. too young. Yeah, sure, you don't remember not? Devo? Joel remembers Devo. Right? Right. What, did, what did Devo do? He was, well, you don't even know who he is. So does it, he was a teacher, right? And they found his old videos... And they sacked him because he was making oh, no. na- na- naughty jokes in there. But he had another name though, didn't he? MC Devo. Oh, that's him. MC Devo and Shady Pies. So you don't remember Devo, but MC Devo, yeah. No, well, now you've put the MC, it's made it. <laughs> he got sacked. Muck, for it, he's Irish. Which is, it, I'm, I'm done. If this all falls apart, if they look at my Tuesday streams that all these scumbags have re-uploaded to YouTube, 
see me making jokes about bloody Michael Barrymore and the, the troop of nonces that were on TV in the late 90s. I mean, you've I'm got, you've done. Got Moti on a t shirt. <laughs> when did you put Modi on a t-shirt? Whoa, 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 whoa. It was uh, Modi 316. Oh, just, no. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say My that. My gran owns one of those t-shirts. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What? The, the Pitch yeah, of the yeah, Mania yeah. ones? Yeah, she was bought, she watching? Well, she bought one um, because I shared the link. <laughs> oh, well, thinking it was something to do with you. Because yeah, my name's on the, we put on the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> for like the security. So your nan's got a so my gran, out going, I'm my so gran proud has of one that's got like <laughs> it says piss flaps on it. The top one, it's yeah, like yeah. all stupid references. Piss, and then piss, it goes, piss flaps Spunk right on the, the breast. garlic meal. <laughs> Did she wear it to do the garden? Yeah, to right? ballet. To ballet. Yeah. Piss flaps to ballet. Yeah. What, so oh, can we get a picture of your? I'll try and get my gran. Yeah, I really try and get appreciate that. that. Yeah. That's amazing. Hope that goes in the whole thing next She wore her best her. gear to the ballet. Well, absolutely, yeah. I'll see if she's still got it. She might have... She's I'll, moving, I'll get her another place. one printed. <laughs> she can have the original. I think, yeah, I think my That's grand, amazing. Grand got one. Nanny piss flaps. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. The ballerina <laughs> midway through Swan Lake looks over and says, <laughs> Moti 316 and a yeah. shirt. He literally said <laughs> Moti and Tiny yeah. Fee. It was just an inside joke. Yeah. that has nothing to do with Raul Mo. It was just to do... Oh. With with uh, mo do moats it. in general. <laughs> it, 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 people use castles. This stream's a bit moaty, isn't it? As in, like, oh, it's deep. Because when I get deep, they go... <laughs> like the well, hole that you're digging for yourself it, yeah, right that's now. that's what it is. That's what Nothing it is. to do with row moat. Yeah, they're falling for it. Don't worry, we'll get you that teaching job. Yeah. Uh, so... Also related, NXT talents didn't know about main roster call-up during the WWE draft, which we get onto later on, obviously. I wonder if that included Eddie Dennis. Did he go online and find out, Arm, oh, I'm a really writer now. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> to cast that holiday to Butlin, sorry. Uh, Baron Corbin breaks the losing streak at a house show in Paris, France. The fans of the City of Light were huge fans of the former Mr. Money in the Bank, and they ultimately powered Corbin to victory as he defeated Rick Boogs in a roll-up to a big reaction for the French fans in attendance. Beautiful. I really it's like a, Baron Corbin. Yeah, He's me too. genuinely one of my favourites. Yep. Uh, so do the French the fans. I think they heard the reaction and went, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they called an audible on yep. a Baron Corbin match. How awesome is that? Really I, hope, I hope that bleeds over into the televised product. He, yeah. sh he should be replaying that on the Titan Tron yeah. every mm -hmm. single week. Bring back Happy him. Corbin. Yeah, I liked how the, the, you could clearly hear the French with the accent on the chant as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, it's his first win since he beat Akira Tozawa in the November 14th, 2022 episode of Raw. Brilliant match. Mm -hmm. I remember it well. The, and uh, finally, because all the other news comes into the rest of the wrestling that we do later on, it's going to mm -hmm. cover three hours. The New York Times revealed in the profile that Hasbulla was invited to WrestleMania 39. I hope I'm hoping to get the pronunciation right. The 20-year-old, what? was offered front row tickets to the Showcase of Immortals, but he turned down the invitation as he already had plans to travel to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, for Ramadan. Hasbullah said about going to WWE, I have my own principles that I will not break for any money and fame. Which is amazing to hear from a guy like him. Who but imagine, strangles cats, strangles, or whatever yeah, punches, it was. So you're right, you, you punch, you punch is that, cat. Is that what he does? He doesn't strangle. He didn't strangle. In he fact. just, he I don't want to. Just punched him. He, he, he just, just punched yeah. him. Yeah. Do you not see oh, that I, video? No. And then yeah, he, yeah. Went, he, uh -huh. he went. Oh, sorry. I love my cat. I love my cat loads. Otherwise, it wouldn't live with me. Um, and yep. he had been pulling its ear and punch on video. Yeah. As well, I'm not saying do it off video. I'm just saying don't, <laughs> don't hurt your cats. And don't do it on video. Kind of anything nice, can we? I was no. unaware of this. I went, ruined my punchline. Of, imagine Hasbulla punching Miz and calling an audible, but it doesn't work now, does it? I can't say it. Well, that was supposed to be the funny bit at the end of the news, so that's bollocks. So Sorry. let's carry on. Sorry, I didn't say something, about, say something about a horrible Round incident mode. that happened in the I mean, it was funny when Mike Tyson <laughs> tried to cuddle him and think he was a little child. <laughs> he just picked him up and started what? nuzzling him, and then someone pointed out to Mike Tyson that he's actually 20 years old. Is he 20? Can, yeah. can someone clarify, what's the appeal of... He's just funny, eh? Why? Well, he's just, he just, he posted lots of videos where he was kicking the crap Kicking out of people. Cat. Yeah, he was punching Conor McGregor and stuff. What like made that. him go viral initially? Um, like, was there, was there, there any was video that set it off? A, I don't understand the appeal. I think it was a TikTok where he was driving a car or something and he just went viral from there. Because he's little. And then, yeah, and then he had a fight with another guy. Who? He was also little. Hey, did you see the boxing match that's been announced? It might have been, it's, it's really soon. I'm just Bloody some... Wings of Redemption. You not see this? Wait, wait, who's it? Who's Wings of Redemption? That playing? Boogie guy. The big lad. <laughs> Boogie, <laughs> two, two, Boogie 2988. Yeah, that's really. Francis. Yeah, and I think it's uh, Francis. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It, I think it's in the uh, I think it's in the UK. I'm pretty sure it's in London. It's for Misfits. Oh, oh, yes. Why yeah. is it in England? You're not, you're not he, see this? No. 
uh, Wings of Redemption. He's familiar with Geordie Jordson. Nah, not familiar. Jordison. Um, he Geordie is uh, an old. I think he did like Call of Call of Duty or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. He was an old FPS gamer. Wow. Um, and he's a big lad too. This is going to be a cow. fun fight. Hey, don't say lol cow. Is that a bad thing to say? No, no he, is. he is. He's a massive lol cow. Uh-huh. Literally, he's. It's going to be a, an absolutely titanic battle between we two need of to the biggest tickets. big men in the business. We need, oh, I'd rather that than AEW. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> like Wembley. Same weekend. <laughs> I can't. Oh. It's, it's soon. It's. I'm sure it's soon. Unless it was next year or something. Money I thought people weekends. were. I genuinely. Oh, I have heard this, but I thought people were kidding. No, no, it's like, happening. Oh, what next? You know, Chris Chan's like, a special you know, guest ref. What? <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Chris is out. I've seen the pictures? Walmart, Nintendo Switch. Should we move on? <laughs> yes, let's. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Tubman in Japan. As this illustrious episode of the podcast goes live, Richard will be on day 30 of his ride up the length of Japan. Who were? Brace yourself, Mafu. Over the past week, he's been to... Oh, is this just me trying to pronounce Japanese names? Uh, Hanamatsu, Shizuoka, Ise? I-S-E, how do you pronounce that? Ise, uh, like Ise Sagawa, probably. Yeah. Ise. Nagashima, Kumano, Oshima, Shirahama, and Gobo. No doubt he will visit another Japanese places, it says here, in the coming days and weeks. Wow, that's th- amazing. It's thrilling. Let's have a look at some of the pictures. Short of ride today. I like that one. That's actually nice. Back but a very head, nice one shiny with good weather. Hair. Look at that at the bottom. I oh, know the sun's out. Oh, that is? The sun's out. Well conditioned fantastic. as well. I'm dragging this out, by the way. I'm going to see how long we can go. That, is, that is stunning. Mm, look at that. The shoreline. You could wander on that beach for hours. That's an out of focus iced cream. <laughs> no, but it's nice <laughs> stylistic. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the. It's, you've got threes. You know, it's centered, out of focus slightly. You've got the shop in the background right. with a strawberry on the shop. Stro- strawberry. Strawberry is the theme strawberry here. Strawberry on the shop. There's strawberry on the top. It's kind and of And then the bottom right hand corner, which you might not be able Symmetry. to see, is also red. Like yeah. a strawberry. Okay. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. That's wow. a mountain. Which one's that, Matthew? Big one. I'm going to take a guess. <laughs> <laughs> and a road. Go, sorry, go on. Have you got a guess? No. There's a bridge. <laughs> Ever- Everest. Which Japanese mountain could it possibly be? That's Hopefully you'll tell us next episode to make this somewhat exciting. What does it say? Rest in Fuji. Oh, uh, it is Mount yeah, Fuji. Yeah, you don't yeah. know that. Massive, isn't it? The size of that. Yeah, he's 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 gonna sit in the park and look at the mountain. That's beautiful. I can't yeah. read that from here. Do you remember those um, adverts with the mountain in that were taught the T Rex? Oh, that looks tasty. That no, no. Oh. I like gyoza. That's, that's lovely, nice. isn't it? Why why has it got an empty bowl? What do you think that's for, Matthew? <laughs> What would he put in there? <laughs> His false teeth. His false wow. teeth. <laughs> Don't get stuck on the delicious can we, can we Japanese see those cuisine. Images again, actually. They're yeah, really go nice. back to the start and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Ross is passionate about these. They are amazing holiday snaps, aren't they? they? Are. Can I call them holiday snaps? Is that truck small or just far away? Because even from a distance, that looks like a tiny truck. Looks like a Tonka, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. My granddad would play with them. Let's get him on the phone and ask him. Have you got his number? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, go in the next one. Different mountains in the background. Um, Ooh. That is... I like the blue bag. The blue bag? Yeah, the blue bag. Oh, and nice the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Japanese Ikea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep going, yeah. That one again. It's like nice, that almost. No, it's pronounced nice. Thanks. What do you think of those buildings uh, are on the shoreline? Because they're not beach shacks, are they? Oh. They're not. What would you put? What would you put in that building, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> it's bodies. Yeah, okay. Uh, and that one again, mm. which is out of focus, sort of artistic. Wait, what is? It so is those, quite artistic. What's the pink stuff? That was that's ice, ice cream. cream. That's strawberry ice oh, cream top. topped with, I assume, vanilla ice cream or maybe a, uh, just a cream. Ice Ooh, cream a in a. In a plastic tub with cream on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a... Seems like a, a... A container to have ice cream in. Yeah. Like a tub. That's not going to protect you from the coldness of the ice cream. But it's probably quite warm, right? That's just going to be juice. Juice with four awkward strawberries floating around. Next one. <laughs> Mount Fuji! <laughs> hey, Mount Fuji! <laughs> How you size doing? Of that. Look at that. Oh. Big boy. Look at that little bump in the road there as well. I'd love to go Imagine over that on a bicycle. <laughs> Imagine the air time. You know all the people who have gone that route go, wow, oh, Mount Fu, and then they go over that. Yeah. <laughs> and every time it does it, Mount Fuji goes, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> With his mouth. <laughs> like he's a person, yeah. but it's not oh, a mountain. Oh, oh, oh. It's just a big mountain. Next one. Never gets old. 
That one. What's that little bowl for? What did you put in there? <laughs> <laughs> Loads of noodles. That's too much food for one man. And he's got a pint of lager beer there as well. <laughs> so he's got to do is doing all this walking and what? biking. And biking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope he didn't have too many because that it's would be quite carb heavy, what, that. What ABV do you think that beer is? So are they quite strong in Japan? Yeah, they love drinking over there. Do they? Because drug, uh, well, proper drugs, obviously, uh, is frowned upon. But So that's when everyone just gets blooded. So get beard up. Wow. Some beard up. Maybe like are there more pictures? Lager? Are there more pictures? I actually quite like this. I like seeing what Tubman's up to. Well, he's, he's done. He's done quite a bit. Long, oh, longest oh. ride so far, but quite flat, so not bad at all. Another sunny day certainly helps. It's like he's with us now. Yeah. Wow. A bridge of some, another oh, bridge, like a bridge. they really Just love the four bridges big, up here as well. Four Brilliant. big grins. Uh, I don't think. What's that? Can we zoom in? Enhance. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh. <laughs> the computer's jumped around. Well, this is lovely. A trip, oh. down, a trip to Japan. That's more of a hill than a mountain, I would nice say. Nice wee filter on that one as well. It's a filter on the mountain. Mountain. It looks quite filtered. <laughs> River. He's doing some Instagram editing. That's lovely. That is actually really that's good nice, composition. isn't it? That's, really, that's like a Windows 98 background. Oh. <laughs> Remember? Who remembers Windows yes, 98? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I try not you. to. Classic. Reg edit to get into the old registry edit. So you love that, don't you? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Friday! Whoa, look at that thing. that looks delicious. Up. As big as Fuji itself. Some What's he got there? Maybe spring some, onions there? Yes, yeah, some spring onions. A wee bit chilies. Yeah. Some and rice. some white stuff. What's the white thing? Mayo. Why is he eating it with a spoon? He's got a spoon to the side. Oh, That's yeah. not very good. You'd think in the time he's been out there, he would have learned to use chopsticks. Chopsticks right? with rice. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. It's the next uh, picture him being thrown out for using a spoon. Oh, oh we skipped it. Go back, go back, go back. <laughs> it's just a view of directly outside the place after I was asked to leave politely. That's nice. He's on his own there. Where is everyone, do you think? Everyone got, avoided him. He went, that's the guy that, <laughs> that's that bum that got thrown out the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> he tried driving out. Mr. The, the Mount Fuji was going, there he is. What do all those signs mean? Go away. <laughs> get out. Top, Use chopsticks, you get. Best segment ever. <laughs> That's not a bit overexposed. I wonder if he'd stay there. Do you think he stayed there? Do you think he stayed there? How yeah, close is that? Where's, where has he stayed? Is he in I a think tent? He's, he's te yeah, we saw a picture of his Pitching tent last week. Pitching in the middle week. of the city? Yeah. Just... Uh, yeah, if you say so. Yeah. Look how close that is to the side. Though. That's almost like if you're making something on The Sims or whatever, and you really mm. want to consume, like, Use you're space. really thinking about landscape. Yeah. Erosion. You've got to be careful. That's what I mean. You? Yeah, that's a natural thing. <laughs> that's what I mean. You didn't, you didn't pop in Jack's voice there for a second. <laughs> I'm really excited. Come from? <laughs> Finally, a similar thing to Any talk more? about. Any more? He's got his story. Quite a many repost. Don't know why I'm <laughs> deciding to stop to look at shrines during Golden Week. Busy, what's, busy. What's Golden Week? Do his voice for Busy Busy. It's the... Busy Busy. It's the... <laughs> it's, it's everyone running away from him. Oh, it's him. <laughs> Bike fiend. <laughs> no one's looking at him. <laughs> Quick. Right. Vamos, vamos. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, that one. I did, 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 did. into my camp shoes before walking up here. And then a little face like... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Why did I do that? What's he like? I put, I put my camp emoji here instead. <laughs> Keep going. Hello, oh, I know friend. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello, Fuji. Hello, bike feel. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Uh, another one. Another Fuji. one. This no, is now another only one. Fuji photo. This is now only Fuji, Fuji photo hours. Here we go. And another one. Fuji! Fuji! Hey, come on, let's keep it going. It's Fuji photo hour. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh what the hell is that? A Guinness. No. It's a craft beer. Craft beer rest day. My tried and tested combination. Oh, I hope he's relaxing. Yeah. I hope he's resting up. Bless him. Ready to post another day of photos. Three. Tried a few <laughs> non-alcoholic beers for when I've been sitting out in the sun at camp. Honestly, for someone who never drinks non-alcoholic beer, not too bad. Nice. Four. Beery. Maybe nice. it was a non-alcoholic wow. beer with his, his noodles. The zero yeah. content in the beer, just like that segment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tubman in Japan. Shine on your crazy diamond. Is it a troll job by Ross? He loves it. He loves it. I, I, I find it interesting. It. I find it very hard to tell sometimes when Ross <laughs> is trolling when he's being 100% serious. So. It's I good. He loves it. Can we look at that Mount Fuji one again? <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, I don't know how we could possibly top that segment. We'll do our best with everyone's favorite segment, the Hall of Fame. 
in condescending order from, I say last week, it was last night, just saying. Uh, Panda Jeff Cobb, 23%, which is sent in by Luke Osborne, who's probably unfriended me now due to that pathetic performance. Sorry, pal. Matt Stone and Trey Parker, 33%. Happy with that, Dan. There we go. And Ben Askren's tweet about his wife, 44%. A worthy winner, to be fair. Very Very funny. Yeah, it's good. (laughs) Ha ha. People getting divorced online. Ah, oh, fantastic pick there, Fraser. Uh, what have you got for us this week? Oh, is that me this week? Um, so I, I I quite like a musical, right? I went down at the weekend to London. I, I went and saw the Great British Bake Off musical. And I stumbled upon what is like a mini musical in three minutes on Right Move. Because I recently moved flat, so I was looking at stuff. Don't ask me oh. why I was looking at houses in Bedfordshire. It just popped up on Twitter. But someone has posted a version of the never-ending story as a f- house tour on Right Move, as they're sort of like, ah, come and have a look around the house. It's incredible. Joel's got the video. Okay. Um, hopefully, we'll not get flagged. You don't think we will, right? Uh, there's you no content ID n- thing no in the content. description. I think we should be all right. All right. So this we'll, is we'll the, talk never, over it to help. the never ending property. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. It's dire. Um, but Joel, if, whenever you're ready. 581k views. Oh, yeah. It's For one property. For one property. It's never ending. It's big. There's so much here to see. Look, look how gorgeous the Living house is. Room. Look at the beams. Oh, it's nice. These <laughs> <laughs> covered in beans. <laughs> a dog? A dog. I think you could lift that dog. Oh, look at that horrible stock pump. photo. Solar panels. Uh, no, Solar too. panels too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a small, small, small business. business. There is so, so much you can, can do as long as you're in never ending, ending property. Is it pool table? Uh, right next to busy motorway. Uh, <laughs> another, another room. It's like Tubman in Japan. Another uh, room. <laughs> 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 so it's, I, I really oh, like just how much effort they've put in. Do they do this for every property? No, just, just, what? just this one. Just what this are they? One. Pause, 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 pause. pause, pause. <laughs> What, go back, um, go back. Why are there back, back, back. massive <laughs> seven-foot rats? Because this is the rat room. They have It's never-ending. They've They're got a room, a room for room everything. For rat room, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you mean by rat room? I'm not from it's Bedfordshire. It's big rats. Look at them. I'm, I'm aware of the big rats. They're They've terrifying me. They've got tartan but... trousers on or shorts. All right. Are we a tartan scarf? Is it, it a Christmas thing? Cool. There's nothing else Christmas, is it? That's I mean, a it permanent was, fixture, was, isn't it? It was five months ago, so it's... Oh, maybe. Christmas maybe. time, but that's weird for rats. Christmas. Yeah, that's not even Christmas, is it? No. Rats, it's just too it? much effort to take them down that they're now a permanent fixture. Do you think they've got names? Maybe they own the house, like on The Simpsons. Simpsons. It's the Simpsons. rats. It's the Simpsons. <laughs> that's how you do it. Now. <laughs> like the cats. That are there. Yeah. I'm going to say a Simpsons reference. I'm going to kick you on the table. <laughs> so that's that's the, the never ending property. With, Every room's a nightmare. Uh, uh, rats, rats, rats everywhere. It's just, it's a, it's a work of art. It feels... Keep going. Go on. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Room. Room. Oh, I see a bit more. Dining, dining room. room. We're not seeing a course. bathroom. The yet. dining... Well, you'll see some bathrooms. What, a you snug eat? games room and a kitchen. Lovely kitchen. Oh, yeah. So really you're supposed nice. to eat in the company of two giant rats? Yes, maybe your family. Growing teenage kids. How many toasted are they? Sorry, there's more than one toaster <laughs> there. Skip back, skip back, wait, skip back. more than one toast? Yeah, I'm sure that Hang on, they got one of big ones. Right? That's a slow cooker, sure. Yeah, or an air fryer? Cooker. Is it slow cooker? Air fryer, slow one cooker, two, yeah, yeah. either side. They've got a nice big oh, cooker. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. An Where, espresso the machine. Keep them going. That's fancy. Is that, how much is this? Okay, and it's then... $750,000. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a, I'm four, sure that's that's a bread. two toasters. No, you're on it. That's a bread bin next to it, I think. Oh, that's that is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. A big four slicer. Thank the Lord. A four Lord. slicer, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, then we no love seat. Seat. They've got the little um, uh, ice dispenser in the fridge. Good oh. dog. Good dog. Netflix. I have to pay never for my own. Ending property. <laughs> the beams are uh, and then there's more stairs, it never ends. Oh, it's coming yeah. oh, 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 hey. Whoa, is that three floors? Uh, it's here for the choice. I think there's about four. No. Look at the big TV room. at the end of the bed. Look at the pop vinyls covering the room. Nice. That's, oh, no. Look at all of them. More money than sense. <laughs> 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 bathroom. Wait, big what? Cloth oh, freeze bath- freeze Hang on, what's the hell is up with? Wait, 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 go back to that bath. Where's... It's a big Talking over the music, talking over the music. So there's a step up. Wait, the bath's there. Yeah. You have to walk around it to use the toilet. Yeah. That's a horribly placed bath. It means you're fancy and you're rich. You've got freestanding. If bath. the fire alarm goes off and you're on the toilet, you deed. 
I don't like. <laughs> no, wait, get past that in a hurry. The taps at the side of the bath would wind me up. If you need to really? refill halfway through, that's going to get on your yeah, thigh. Yeah, but then you can sit either end. You've got freedom. Yeah, true. Freedom of yeah. movement. Never ending freedom. Never ending. <laughs> Look at the big garden. Not a very nice garden. Oh, it's a nice. Well, it's it could be done a up nicer. A garden. Considering, yeah, considering the house get with the rats. Get some rats out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Get your rat out. So what so what, what we're missing is, is rats in the garden. Um. I've not got this far actually, so this is exciting for me. This is like H.H. H. Holmes' not... house. Oh, another this is your Hall of Fame pick, and you've not watched One the whole thing. No, no. Okay, Road outside is near. Oh, yeah, that's a bad thing. Oh, look at the yeah. crap on her face. Don't oh. despair. There's double glazing here. There's double. Oh, it's so beep, beep, yes. oh. No. Oh, so they Why can is there a child okay. in the... Oh, right. Okay. Stranger yeah. things have happened. Spacious master oh. Oh. room. Oh. Garden, garden is so, so pretty, pretty. Uh, but there's quite a lot <laughs> to do. Yeah. Yeah. Never ending property. property. Yeah, see Too ah, close to the ah, ah, hot tub. <laughs> property. And they've got an outhouse. Uh, an outhouse. Two car house. Three cars. Uh, rub. <laughs> uh, there's not. another bedroom. Yeah, it really does really go does. on, doesn't it? Yeah. More ways than one. It's amazing. That's yeah. it. <laughs> So there's oh, got back in the dog room. Tiny dog room. room. I'd worry what that gets used. Like, They've made the house that MC Escher did a painting of. <laughs> that's, so that's amazing. The never-ending property. Just knock us. And is that still no, available? No. Five it's not. Months ago. It was sold actually. I'm not surprised. It, that the effort they put in to to get that shifted. I was I was tempted to buy it. Yeah, I, uh, I would if I had the money. What would you do with all the rooms though? <sighs> It just it never more ends. Rats. I'd have so many options. Yeah. More rats. Yeah. Yeah, I've let out six of the 17 rooms to rats. Uh, <laughs> ain't a killer now, actually, yeah. Says Fraser. Rich bastards. So that's, I, I was quite last minute on my pick today. It's hard, and uh, yeah. I panic over the Hall was, of Fame things. And mine went down really poorly last week. My joke didn't land. Oh, was this the, the Trish Stratus, Stratus looking sexy. Yeah. Uh, and then I chopped and changed it. So I've got, a, I've got a good one. Commit. I was no, going to do, do Star Wars. You had three picks. It was meant picks. to be a one thing. It was just like Trish Stratus. Oh, <laughs> she looks nice. And then move on. I did have three picks. I've got a good one today. Are you, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. This is a good hang one. On, you, you get one. Yeah, yeah, this is going to change this is gonna be like lives. It's going to be one of those dodgy Transformers that has three forms no, longer no, goes on. No, no, this is that. a good one. This is, uh, this is genuinely going to inspire people, and I promise this will change at least one life. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not messing about here. Okay. It is my method of getting dry after a shower. I read this on Reddit. Right? No, no, stick with me here, because this is good. This is good. You get out of the shower. What do you do? Oh, are you still in there? I'm in the shower. Rub down. <laughs> right, I get do? mocked. I get mocked for that. Right, mocked, okay. Mocked, the, mocked, oh, it's two so seconds. Yeah, oh, you're gonna love this. Yeah. Right. So okay, okay. You, you're in you're in the shower, right? You you're, you're sopping wet. You're just absolutely soaking. Right. right. You stand up. Petit, you stood up for yeah. all your listeners. Yeah. yeah. Like that. You rinse it off. You you push all of the water off. Your towels don't get too wet. It's honestly a game changer. Yep. Say that again because you're so passionate. You're like what well, ultimate your warrior. Hand, your ultimate is warrior is about the Russell Hogan levels of energy. <laughs> I'm in a shower, right? I've got that bit. And then okay, what? You're soaking wet. Oh, after the it, shower, yeah, you mean? Instead of just whacking a towel on, right? I, yeah. read, I read this on Reddit and it's, it's I've been doing it for the last year. Okay. And it saves a lot of time. So you you, you basically you form a, a, a human squeegee, a hand squeegee. You push all the water off. Whilst in the shower. Like, whilst in the shower. Right, shower's yeah. off. Right, right. You, you, you get out, you okay. stand there, you just dab yourself down. It'll save you. Three minutes in the morning. It does save a lot of time. Oh, it's good. It's really, it is actually I good. get mocked for it. Rachel takes the mick out of me all the time because I'm like, it's the quickest way to get dry. Quickest it's way. She's just watching you. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can, I I can be dry yeah. in, in three and a half minutes, if that. Not even that. Is this a new punishment video? No. No, it's no, not. It's a reward. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're laughing now, but the comments... <laughs> The comments will be full of people going like, I've tried that, and Adam has come up with, not Fraser, Adam has come up with something really magnificent that he read on Reddit there, and you try it. You try it when you next shower. So, June? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> when you next shower. You, do, you try it when you next shower, and you will be able to... Cheap on there. Uh, and that was you, good. That was good. <laughs> and you will be amazed. You'll you come in and you go, I tried that, and actually that's really special. Like you'll 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 find yourself washing your towels less. I don't recommend that, by the way, because <laughs> you should keep your, your towels hygienic. But really special. Okay. That's special. Interesting. My other one was Mount Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Matthew? 
I was so tempted after last week's, one of the many, many diversions we had during the Hall of Fame uh, bit, to put in the bit where Augustus Gloop eats the microphone head. Because mm. it's one of those things that stuck with me as a kid, and thankfully the people where it's not me debate. But there was so much other stuff happening last week. I think people are like, what are you on about? Shut up, you weirdo. Get over it. So instead, I'm going to pick AW Dark. Just because it's been bloody cancelled. So one, paying That's tribute to a lovely little show. Mm-hmm. And two, hopefully people will go, ha ha, good one, Matthew, and actually vote for it. That's so, nice. What's yeah. your favourite AEW Dark match ever? Match? Yeah. I haven't got well, that's what Tom this is a great... Like, a complete ridiculous <laughs> thing here. What match? I'm re- have, you, have you got a favourite? Like, I can say my favourite WrestleMania match, and Dark is on a similar level. <laughs> <laughs> Make one up, they won't know. Oh, Joey Joey <laughs> Janella from the first one. Yes. Nice, go on. Because <laughs> the only one I can Great think match. of is on the head. Great, Matt. That's a really nice way for them to go out as well. I imagine that will soften the blow if they pick up the Hall of Fame win. So I'd <laughs> say... Yeah, we can go, hey, sorry you're out of job, but hey, Hall of Fame win. There you go. Nice mm-hmm. picks. Yeah. Nice yeah. picks. Love it, it, Ta- Taz and Excalibur is having good old laugh. Yeah. Some bunch of friends just saying silly bollocks. Somewhat relatable, I think. Yeah, yeah. weekly free basis. as well. You can't you can't go wrong with that, can you? That's very generous. That's right. Remember those times they talk about their mates going to Japan on a bike and <laughs> <laughs> the Bear Bronson's in the ring trying to do something and like, oh, whatever. No one's watching this stuff. Who cares? Uh, Brian Cage, he's crap. I mean, he's re-signed. Oh, God. <laughs> Fantastic little snippet insight into two magnificent wrestling minds. So... To recap, never ending property. Never ending property. Uh, 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 Adam's method of drying oneself and <laughs> oneself. <Yeah. laughs> and AEW Dark, RIP. There's a clear winner there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that Robert Dias advert? Yes. So yeah, you good. sent me that uh, one I actually. You, that? Yeah, you yeah. must have seen that. We'll get away with, with playing this. I think we can get We'll this. get away yeah. with playing this. Search Robert Dyer ads. This advert. should be an honorable. This is, this is legit, right? This is on their official um, YouTube DY yeah. advert. You'll, I love this. Uh, that's it. That's, it, that's yeah, the yeah. one. Top one. 1.1 1. 1 million views. I, I love this. I believe you've not seen it. I love this, no, Willa. No, it's really funny. Oh, it's it? really, right. really good. Trust me on this. Christmas. Oh, God, no. I no, remember this. That's great. Hi. My name's Marcus. I work at Robert Dice and I'm gay. I like going out with my friends yeah. and playing volleyball. I also like showing our gay and straight customers a funky range of our Christmas gifts. <laughs> Hi, my name is James. I'm straight and I work at Robert Dice. <laughs> I like sailing, baking, and showing off all our Christmas kitchen gadgets. Gee, this is a hate crime. <laughs> it's I'm really straight, funny. I love shopping at Robert Dice. I'm gay. I love shopping at Robert Dice. Isn't this inclusive? What are you I'm talking about? I'm bisexual, and I always find something I love at Robert Dice. <laughs> Look at this Christmas tree. It's perfect for a gay person or a straight person. Oh, <laughs> nah, nah, tapping out, tapping out. No, no more, no mask, no mask. That's on the official Robert it's, Dyer it's, channel. It's That's an legit. incredible. I remember advert. this. It's like a bad memory. I'm coming through through therapy. Oh yeah, this. Oh yeah, great. It's it's amazing. It's got more. Go on. There's only no, it doesn't. It's got, it's got for some reason it ends prematurely, like the Sopranos ending. Stop. Robert oh, Dyer's, yeah. where gays and straights can buy drills and much, much more. <laughs> That's like uh, one point one million views. Is oh, the really, support of it. Really impressive. Well, it's inclusive. It's meant to. It's meant yeah. to be celebrating. All the comments are hi. We're bi, straight, and gay, and we all hate this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the straight idea, straight person's idea of inclusivity. Yeah, who pitched it? Like who went? This is a good idea. I don't know. They might have been straight. They might have been gay. They might have been bisexual. It, it could Robert have been Dias. anyone, but they all shot Robert. Well, I'm saying right, it was a straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. What are you talking about? <laughs> we don't know sexuality. Straight as hell. <laughs> I've left the house in 20 years. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Abisham from Bleak Great Expectations. <laughs> AW Dark, yeah. never ending property, AK never ending segment, because Bacitti's on board this week. Sorry. And Bacitti's method of toweling yourself off, who were misses. No, pre toweling. Pre to. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, you can vote at patreon.com forward slash call the holic, whether you're straight, gay, bi, <laughs> or completely disillusioned with this podcast. <laughs> Happy voting. <laughs> that says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in wrestling. 
Yes, there is some wrestling this week. SmackDown. Someone close the door, man. It's a bit drafty on this week's SmackDown. Lol, teehee. Triple H appears and says anyone on Raw or SmackDown is eligible to be drafted. We have half the roster being picked tonight and half being picked on Raw. There will also be some NXT names eligible. And the new rosters will officially begin their lives <laughs> begin their lives on May 8th after Backlash is out of the way. We don't know who's making the picks and how the NXT lads and lasses who didn't appear in gimmick on the show, the cowards, qualified to be drafted. They were shown watching it all dressed in, you yeah. know, the track the track suits. Is. Yes. Right. Uh, round one picks. SmackDown gets the Bloodline, which is Heyman, Solo, and Roman Reigns. Heyman, not first the pick. Usos. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Literally, was, yeah. that was the first name yeah. out of Triple H's mouth. Fantastic he stuff. Uh, Banker Belair, Raw Women's Champion, going to SmackDown. Uh, Raw gets Cody Rhodes and Becky Lynch. Good picks for the first round. I'd say so, yeah. Um, is there anyone you, you'd swap out there? Let's say you're the general manager of Raw or SmackDown. Would you have sacked off someone there to... I, I think either right. Becky or Bianca needed to switch brands. Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah, I'm glad they didn't one but kept another. That's all right. I guess because it was on Monday, you could argue that Rhea should have Rhea, been, yeah. been there. But that was that was announced ahead of time. It did, does, yeah. however, throw a big old wrench in the works. Hopefully, maybe not. Maybe there's something to go against it. But Roman's on SmackDown and Cody's on Raw. Oh, so the closest Cody's going to get is the bloody fake title coming up. No, but his dad never won that either. <laughs> so he can finish the story. And it's good. <laughs> yeah, Fraser. <laughs> Triple H then introduces the Usos, who promise to get their titles back and dedicate their upcoming win against Sammy and Kev in the main event to Roman Reigns. Even though Roman hasn't got back to them after they try to contact Tribal Chief via several modes of communication. Sammy and Kev appear, and Sammy says it's proper interesting that Roman wouldn't get back to them, yet the Usos are dedicating their match to him. And yet they weren't even drafted with Roman. Ooh. Jimmy Uso then floats the idea of Kevin turning on Sammy again, which then sets Owens off in a shouty wouty match end scene this whole Sami Zayn and the blood thing thing has gone on a bit too long Ooh, I think it's interesting. just she's kind of it's having watched like every show for graded like it's mm. all just ending the exact same way it's rinse and repeat it's the exact yeah. same thing where they beat them down Sami's like oh we beat them they're horrible they beat us up I still think there's good in Jay and I, it's just like I oh. thought this was going to go somewhere where the Usos were announced as um, as being drafted separately. I thought, oh, that could shake things up a little bit. Yeah, they'll they'll, they'll be off to Raw, and the rest of the Bloodline sticking around on SmackDown. Spoiler alert: Nope. Yep, it, it made this status quo is the same. I would disagree because now the story is I get this is just to get us over to a, the Usos the next bit of their storyline, which is, hey Roman, hi, yeah, we didn't get the ta- hello Roman, hello, oh okay. Yeah, that's the next bit that's coming up. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Kevin and Sammy, but that's what riddle. Draft, isn't it? That's it. Oh, the poor bastards. Banker <laughs> Belair is in a hotel room in Northern Ireland and says he'd be happy to be SmackDown Women's Champion or something. They're going to swap the titles like they're toys again, aren't they, lads? Here's hoping yeah. with drama occurring, yeah, which is good for well us last in the hits time. on the news. Yay. Yeah. The People's Champion, The Rock, defeated, and I quote in the words of Michael Cole, the marauding, manging mutt with a bad attitude, Butch. We should I mean, clarify, Ross wrote these notes. Yeah, yeah. Way, just, we, we need to clarify, clarify just that. Just in case you're was, wondering. <laughs> anybody could have written these notes now. It's Good him. match. Really, yeah. really oh, enjoyed it. Uh, I think a great chemistry. It's a dumb thing to say, but we need to say it. He's very over. He's all like The Rock. And he did do this lovely little bit where he did the jump up to the superplex. Mm. And everyone went, whoa. It got a massive reaction. Very happy to see that. Uh, and then he won with the... Oh, what's it called? Something trauma. The blunt force trauma. Oh, my head hurts move. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't, that move didn't get a big reaction, but everyone else did. And I realized, oh, it's because he's not won it for months. No. Yeah, he's not. He's just yeah. done nothing but lose it's since that bloody are. Bray Wyatt Mountain Dew feud. You got to be really good to be that over and not be winning. Right? Yeah. He's, he needs to win money in the bank this year. It's literally what's yeah. on my notes there. Yeah. He should win uh, money in the bank. Yeah. I, I, it's between him. I reckon they might give it a theory again. Really? Don't say things no, like that. No, I don't know. Really? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Two back-to-back years. He's the right guy to do it with, isn't he? Just because of it, just because no. of his character. He, yeah. you're, not, you're not a fan. But it's, he's got he nothing. Now he's not got the Cena feud. All he has is Reggie heat from that when he goes, uh, duh, duh, and duh, even that duh, didn't help Chicago, him, really. Boo. Yeah, it's nothing for him. Like, yeah. in that, assuming that Seth Rollins is the first World Heavyweight Champion, that's Austin Theory cashing on Seth again. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe. I'd rather Second LA time's Knight. a charm and all that. Yeah. I don't know. I'd rather LA Knight as well for the record. Yeah. As long I'm, as it's not. I must be wearing the bloody glasses from They Live. Everyone's like, oh, Theory, you're so good. I'm like. I'm not saying he's <laughs> good. I'm saying they're behind him. 
Yeah, they they they're not as behind him as they were when Vince was full on in charge. Who knows? What's oh, up God, that. you're right. Vince loves him for some reason. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, Next no. John Cena and all that. Uh-huh. He's already beat him. True. true. We'll see. Anyway. I'm probably wrong. I'm almost definitely wrong. Also, after the match, Seamus said to The Rock, you might not be able to wipe your own ass after Butch is done rearranging your fingers. In one of the greatest taglines for, for a professional wrestling match ever. You might not be able to wipe your own ass after Butch has done rearranging The second hand, he could. Yeah, you've got two hands, right? Yeah. Or it could just be like the shower and just shake yourself off. Heyman gives the Usos a pep talk ahead of their main event match, but as Solo is taping his thumb and looking all menacing and whatnot, Paul mentions tonight is the night while looking at Solo, who in turn, looking at his brothers. They're going to shaft the Usos if when they lose, it says here, cynical Ross there, completely on the mark. Yeah, there wasn't a lot to, uh, to talk about apart from the draft picks on these episodes, by the way. Uncle Howdy returns to WWE to present the next round of the draft with RVD. Who is holding the cue card? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's Michael Hayes. Well, how do you declare? <laughs> Ross, thank you, mate. <laughs> SmackDown picks the Street Profits. Edge. Oh, double-sided. Uh, and Raw gets the Imperium Lads and Matt Riddle. Um, Quite early on for the Street Profits, wasn't it? I've been champs for a while. Don't get me wrong, they're a mainstay and everything. I'll just say a second round pick. You would choose Imperium. Yeah. I'm glad these two glad to switch in because they're both teams that have delivered uh, great matches whilst not always being like in uh, the foreground of storylines and things like that. So swapping them both. Totally. Uh, Ever reliable, the Street Profits. Really, yeah. really valuable. Um, I've talked about it 50 times before, but like they wheel them out first on house shows for a reason. Mm-hmm. And yep. that, that value is often understated. So all the people that are always going on about split them up, split them up, I think so it's the same sort of thing as the New Day, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? They, they, they've got that that value in that they get people pumped up and buying yep. tickets just to see them. They're, they're super over. They don't need to be tag champions all the time. Mm-hmm. They're just yep. the Street Profits. They're an established team, which has often been sorely lacking on WWE TV, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. I was quite worried they were going to split them up in the draft. They were teasing it, weren't they, they? I thought they were really going to do the whole, oh, we're choosing Mont- only Montez Ford for SmackDown and Angela Dawkins on Raw. So it's kind of nice that they've, they have been picked together as you, for all the reasons you've said there, but um, I'm excited to see what they do. Hopefully they, they actually split the tag belts as well and they get another run with them, even though they don't need them. Be nice to see them have the belts. They again. need to split those. Yeah, tag good. Belts. Always, uh, always reliable to have a tag team like that. That if something happens to the big tag team, oh, it's all right. Look, yep, guys like Street yeah. Profits. Um, the Street Profits defeat Ricochet and Braun Strowman and the LWO lads as Montez Ford traps Trev's shoulders to the map after a thrilling final sequence. Let the bodies hit the floor, indeed. It says here. Yep, JBL and Teddy Long are here with the third round of the draft. Bobby Lashley. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, creams Michael Cole on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> and the OC, which is Good Brothers, AJ Styles, and Mitchin. I'd forgotten that Mitchin was with them. Yes, part of the OC for some reason. I forgot about that. Yeah. AJ's back. Yeah. yeah, big pop for AJ. Yeah. Drew McIntyre to Raw. Ooh, his blackout on Twitter means nothing. Also, a lot of Michael Cole, mere seconds after blatting everywhere, and Bobby subtly saying, that's a really good pick for Raw. It's weird with Drew, isn't it? Because like they drafted him fairly early on, round three, SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Um, they they drafted him, but something's still going on because he's just been pulled from Money in the Bank in the in the UK. The UK shows has had added I think it's Roman. Just that, it's uh-huh. that everything's fine. Yeah, everything's fine. But Drew's not on the card anymore. It would so be, I don't know what's up. It'd be weird if they didn't draft him early. We'd be going. Ooh, draws more attention ooh, to it. I guess. Yeah, why is right. he not being picked? Mm. Yeah, but he 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 suits suits being on Raw. I think. It's a good spot for him. Like yeah. the, the main roster seen him raw after the draft, and we'll see all the picks later. It's probably stronger than SmackDown, especially with folk like, well, Gunter and Drew, mm-hmm. eventually mm-hmm. when Gunter moves up. But yeah. Separates him and Sheamus as well. And I yeah. think their story ended quite nicely. Yeah. I think it all worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah makes sense. Uh, and the Miz. Sonya Deville dominates the Vedica <laughs> for three minutes and three seconds before being rolled up for a shock question mark rolled up defeat. Sonya has lost each of her last 17 televised singles matches in the WWE with her last televised singles win coming against Mandy Rose in April 2020. Wow. How was this a good way to build up Zelina, lads? How is this a good way? Uh, It's It's a win. It's a big dub. It's a win for the LWO. Um, it, yeah, it, putting it, the L it, in the LWO, am I right? It presents the idea that she might be an underdog, but she might just pull it out of the bag on on the night on the backlash. I mean, she's not going to obviously, but yeah, you you, you got to do something because they're not giving LWO any other wins, are they? It's been so uh, no. tough for them, right? Oh, yeah, but they're so over still. Yeah, people you know, like, like crowd. 
the more they lose, the more they cheer. But it's the just LA Knight formula. They've got the actual tag team not tag teaming in the LWO. You've not got yeah. the actual tag team. Yeah. Just do it. Just put them in the ring. Uh, after the match, Mammy is here, and she sees a riptide reversed into a shoot TDT. She sold the bollocks off of that one. I forgot Ross's love of saying everything's a shoot move. <laughs> the shoot DDT. <laughs> and yes, uh, Rhea Ripley is really good at taking the DDT. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Uh, she's like Pac. Yeah. Just like really Pac. Cool. They're both hot. The OC, what are you doing? We're, we're here? in London. Yeah. The lads are about to talk, but are interrupted by the Vikings and Valerie Haller. <laughs> Valerie Haller, correct. That's a better name. AJ Styles steps back, so the numbers are even, and tells the OC to handle their business. So the Good Brothers and Mitchins see off the Vikings with ease. If they were this good, why were they MIA while Styles was out injured? Mm. <laughs> Styles rounds off the segment with a shoot phenomenal <laughs> forearm to Eric. His ankle must be okay now. Good for him. I'm just glad to see AJ Styles back, busting out some shoot. Yeah, for shoot yeah, offense, yeah. right? Um, I, I feel a bit bad for the Viking Raiders, you know, because they're like an actual established tag team. I feel like, and they, they've announced a match next week as well. It's going to be um, OC versus um, the Viking Raiders next week. It's like, you already murked him. You already, you already done him in. Why, why, why should they? But whatever. I, ju- I just think the Viking Raiders deserve a little bit better. And I thought we were on the right track following uh, following the return. I thought we were getting there and mm-hmm. it appears maybe not. Nah, they're right at the level that they're at. They're daft races. Shawn Michaels and Road Dog are here with round four of the draft. Road Dog extracts the Michaels out of Shawn it's by nice asking if it's possible yep. for him to lose a smile twice in the face of losing crucial members of the NXT roster. Shawn lost some big hitters here, Mafu. Let's put my name here. He's really up against it now. You have to ask yourself, why couldn't he put a stop to this? Who was pulling the strings in this draft? Yeah, they never said actually who's cheap. Making the picks, right? Just this is a representative to. It was the networks, wasn't it? Last, net- last time around, it was the, the networks. Yeah. Yeah. Cyrus Natalia. the virus, circa 2000. <laughs> that's right. Uh, also, was it just me who found out or realized in this segment that Road Dog is so much bigger than Shawn Michaels? Oh, he's a tall guy. Oh, has Shawn shrunk? Probably a little bit of both. That can happen to people. Yeah, but Road Dog's quite tall, isn't he? Not. It was just he was always stood next to Billy Gunn, right. who's an actual giant. Yeah, maybe that's it. Just in my head, like, of course, Shawn Michaels is this big, and this. It's like, oh no, he's he's huge. What's yeah. Michaels like? Six foot build, probably. Yeah, yeah build height, right. six six foot. Um, yeah, Dog's got to be six two, six three. Do you think you can like, wind him now as well? Everybody's yeah. getting older, aren't they? And Shawn Michaels has lost an inch with the hair. Yeah, that's why he was the big cowboy hat. Mm. Uh, SmackDown picks Damage Katal. Yay. And Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, don't you know? And Wait. as it says there, they're from Scotland. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, this is, is an attribute. Of course, Fraser's like, of Come course on. it is. Monday Night Raw gets Nakamura, which I thought was hilarious because I want, I really wanted a bit with, um, what's his name? Adam Pierce going, we spent all that bloody money in the video packages. <laughs> I bet you're just taking them. All right, cheers. It was a waste of bloody money. And Indy Hartwell, the NXT Women's Champion. It was hooked by Grayson Waller. I don't think he was capable of nice emotions. The wee dick, it says here. But actually, that makes sense now if we've been told that the HD crew didn't know if they were going or not. Yeah, they were all... It was a shoot reaction. Yes. (laughs) At the PC, the Cowie girls ask the witches if they want to throw down Come Tuesday. They did say Come Tuesday. It's on like Donkey Kong, but no lasses are in gimmick. They're real-life witches, for goodness sakes. And this is all caps locked, by the way. And they're there, crying like mere mortals. They have turned into the dogs who walk under the pale moonlight, or whatever they say about other NXT wrestlers. So you miss a couple weeks of NXT, and there's like <laughs> so much lore. Yeah. Oh, are the actual witches. Yeah, they've been doing bits because they were feuding, oh. and then it was just like, actually, you're also a creepy wee one, so let's get together. And they were, ooh, you know, toiling trouble and all this. And then, yeah, here they are. Oh, okay. Is the occult big in Scotland? Big. Is that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big out Soggy of, Hall of Street in Glasgow. Spooky bitches everywhere. Yeah, fair. Oh, I love yeah. it. It's one of the appeals of going. Uh, Karen Cross jumps <laughs> Nakamura. That and a fried pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is doing that? It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Karen Cross jumps Nakamura from behind, and it is very thrilling. Lies from Ross. Why is he doing this to us? Yeah. The Usos without Solo Sikoa <laughs> lose to Kevin and Sammy in your tag team title main event. While the baby faces were mounting a comeback, we see Paul on his phone to presumably Roman Reigns, which sees Solo try to hit the ring before being cut off by Matt Riddle. Tonight is the night, ringing through our ears. Nothing comes of tonight is the night. Maybe something will on Raw. Good main event. Absolutely. Fun main event. Um, 
Riddle obviously feels a bit thrown in there, doesn't he? It's it's a bit. It, it's, it's not quite even clicking the, for I mean, me. It but, did make sense because yeah. he is feuding with Solo, but it's also yeah. like Solo's also beaten him back in the revenge matches, which is funny. Yeah, Solo yeah. injured him, and that's yeah. that's that's it. And he's not got his win back. So it's just, it's just uh, yeah, it does feel clinged up. I, like I, I mean, throw not not. I, I understand why you, um, Riddle and Solo have the beef together, just like merging it all into into why one thing. Uh, yeah, I, I guess yeah. Solo and the Usos, are, yeah. yeah. Plus, I hate to say, it, but like Riddle's always going to be against or with someone who's you know got half a brain cell more than him. So <laughs> Kevin getting annoyed and frustrated at his dumbness works really well. Mm -hmm. That's how Elias, no, Ezekiel became a thing. Yep. Yeah. And then as soon as it was Ezekiel with anybody else, people were like, we don't care. We like seeing Kevin annoyed. <laughs> this brings us to AEW Rampage. It's, <laughs> let's just put, AEW Dark. Yep, Dark. You're not telling me this was Rampage with straight face, are you? It was dark. It was so dark, we couldn't even see a thing. This was an episode of AW Dark, and once the firm deletion is out the way, I really think we should consider ra dropping Rampage from the week in wrestling. It's utterly pointless. Speak soon, XO Ross. I agree. But let's see, shall we? What happened on this three episode? Not a great deal. No. Bullet no, Club. Rubbish. Yeah. Bullet Club Gold is here. Which is a funny name because when you stick gold on anything, you're openly admitting the thing that comes before used to be good and popular a long time ago and is currently over the hill and relying on former glories, defeated Ricky Starks and Sean Spears. Yeah. A whisper's pretty good. I don't like the whisper gold. It was going right? more to like ABBA gold. That was the best of. That was the was. best of ABBA. GFW gold. That was good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice Yeah, work. that's good gold. Jeff Jarrett must be buzzing to have Bullet Club gold because he was a member of Bullet Club. And he has the gold thing. he's got the gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I put Bullet Club gold sounds like a condom company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was it was actually a pretty decent match. I, I feel I've been unfair to Sean Spears in the past. Um, I, I felt him as a bit of a one trick pony with the ten stuff, and nothing since then has really clicked at all. But actually, he's sort of proved his he's quite versatile. Like he had good chemistry with his partner, good chemistry in the ring there, and he's never going to set the world on fire. But he recently came out and went like, oh, I want, uh, I want, I want to win one title before I wrap things up because he's, he's suggesting that maybe he's not going to be around forever. Mm. Uh, and I think, I think he maybe deserves it. I think it, it needs a bit of work and everything, but I think there's a story there ready to be, be told. Beat MJF. Beat MJF. Double or nothing. No, <laughs> give, give him a rubbish title, but get, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I think I'm. I'm basically just apologising because I spent the last like five years going, oh, he's crap and he's boring. He was really, really over his tight dungeon no, for a while. No, 10 was over. That, but that's, that Listen was it. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was yeah. it. And then when he actually had the run of the main roster, it didn't quite work. He got quite over in AW as the chairman. The chairman, yeah. But again, it was sort of like it was the chair that was over. <laughs> <laughs> Upstage yeah, my office furniture. Yeah. <laughs> and when he was teaming with Wardlow, I think that was his most entertaining bit in AW so far. Yeah. But the thing was, the, the less he did... The funnier it was. Yeah. Which I'm not, I thought that was a compliment at the time. And then you see what he's doing here. You're like, yeah. It's just bang average Sean Spears. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is he's competent. He's chopped. Workman like. <laughs> yeah. Some sick chops on Chris Van Vliet, though. You've seen that video where Chris Van Vliet yeah. tries wrestling and he goes to Tyler Breeze and Sean Spears' uh, training, training school. And they, they oh my, it, it's painful. Like yeah. his whole chest is red and bleeding. And he says he's got the best chops how, in wrestling. How was uh, Chris he Van Vliet? Or Tyler, Tyler Breeze says it's the, the best chops that he's ever taken. Oh, so he's how was Chris Van Vliet after doing that? Probably fine, yeah. But Sean Spears' chest was broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got there in the end. <laughs> uh, Sean Spears is team up with Ricky Starks, and it's funny hearing Excalibur talk about Jay White being the hottest free agent in all of wrestling. As AEW are still hiring and debuting so many people, that Jay has already become just a guy with a crowd, not getting a single damn. <laughs> since that wrong, point, is he? We've had Roderick Strong and everybody else since that. He's just <gasps> yeah, crowd like, oh, yeah, Tim. That's it's, nuts, isn't it? He was like the talk of the wrestling world for months of going, oh, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Yeah. Oh, it's ADLB Rampage. That's where he's going. Right. So, we got a Bushi to look forward to. Yep. And then after that, it'll be, what, Grado? Good sign. Right back. Yes. Frank, yes, we need him back. Damn right. Goldberg. Uh, I thought it was funny that the crowd, everyone, was, everyone was just suddenly decided that Goldberg was a thing, wasn't it? Everyone was reacting to this idea rather than him actually doing anything. 
In what way, sorry? They were saying like, oh, Goldberg should wrestle. Bischoff said Goldberg should wrestle CM Punk in mm. AEW. And then you had all these sound bites from people's like, Booker T's on, yeah, that'd be a good idea, or whatever. Like, like it, it's not happening. No. But everyone reacting like it was happening. It was fascinating. I mean, ticket sales are pretty healthy without Goldberg, but uh, Goldberg is a draw. P- people have just soured on Goldberg because the booking was ridiculous in WWE. Um, but there are a big contingent of fans who would want to see Goldberg live. I'm one of them. I don't think I've ever seen Goldberg live. Maybe a house show in 1999. Mm. Big retirement match at Wembley. That yeah, he's been right up his street. Who who would you have retire Goldberg? Or is he going over? Probably going over. <laughs> going over yeah. But if he's not, Wardlow. Sean Spears! Oh, yeah, yeah. Ward oh there that. you go. Sean he gets Spears. the title of Goldberg winner. <laughs> and you're a new Goldberg winner. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> he's so happy. Him and Braun getting a photo <laughs> together on social media. <laughs> Birds of uh, a feather. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The crowd didn't react to anything apart from Jay's finisher. So maybe they only know Jay White like I do from GIFs off Twitter. Yeah. They're like, oh, that I know what that is. Ah. Uh, the Hardys and Abigail. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. It's very lovely. The Hardys and Hook are mad about the firm taking Isaiah Cassidy hostage. The firm pop up picture in picture. Well, well not on TV, but whatever. And demand to know when the firm deletion match is going to take place. It's happening this week on Rampage. And Big Bill murders Cassidy. Like, yes, I'm glad I recognize this. Like a big show did to Kurt Angle when Tori Wilson was on the scene. Matt Hardy's acting was priceless throughout. No, 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 no. Let's go and find these son of a bitches. <laughs> says here. It was, yeah, it was tough to watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. They accepted something, but I was too busy laughing. As Matt agrees, and then, yeah. Do you reckon the moment's passed maybe with the deletion cinematic match stuff? Yeah. About yeah, it was tw- three, four years ago, yeah. <sighs> yeah. When was the first one? 2016. 16, 17. Yeah, it's been a bit one of them. It's a bit too long now. It's but it was great. Uh, the Impact run was fantastic. It brought Impact back up for a bit. And then, then they got rid of them because Impact's going to Impact. Uh, then they didn't do it. And I thought it was rubbish. Yeah, just a rehash yeah. and they do eyes everything. I was like, all right, now we're doing it again. It wasn't, I don't even think it was necessarily about du- it, the WWE eyesing stuff. I just think it had been done. That was another thing against. I, yeah. I think that's it. I, I, it's one of those things which stands out on its own uh, and should maybe just be preserved in the memory, rather. Mm-hmm. But, but because it's wrestling, you milk it and milk it and milk it till it's dry. Yeah, and, and now it's twenty twenty three, and we've got another final deletion match. Once they'd done Crazy Steve getting shot out of an active volcano into the wrestling ring to get pinned, Bray Wyatt on a tractor is not that entertaining. Thank you. But Brock Lesnar is. That is. He scuppered the ring. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I am a Brock Lesnar defender. Oh, me too. My favorite. He's on a tractor. He was. <laughs> From County Durham. Naturally Limitless defeated Brady Pierce and Charlie James before the Mughal Embassy come out for a stare down. What do you make of this Keith Lee Dustin Perrin? Uh, this is a good mix. Sorry, a good usage of Keith Lee. Okay. Because Dustin did a few things and Keith Lee did like, all right, come on, it is. You kind of big old powerbomb. That's it. Less is more comes to Keith Lee. I think the previous times we've seen him, he's gone out and done matches where he didn't look great. There were long 10-minute matches. It's like, luckily my young, youthful partner can take all... Oh, it's Dustin Rhodes. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, Keith Lee, he's, he's obviously an older dude. He's embracing it with the great. Nothing wrong with that. But then Is he that old? He's not that old. He's, he's just he's graying. mid to late 30s. He looks... No, he's not. He's in his 40s. Is he? Joe. You can't go... Actually, you can go 13 grey. I'm going to go few folks I'm still still they're already grey. Yeah, my mate went really? grey at 18. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go... Grey at 18? 36, yeah. I'll yeah. say 37. Salt and pepper and now he's fully grey. How old is Keith Lee? What age? I say 37. Oh, my guess, uh, 42. 38. 38. No way! So, he's not that old. He's rocking the grey. I like the grey. Yeah. Don't no, no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But it's like, okay, but obviously he's had the health scare. I'm not being funny here. It's a, it's not the guy he was Younger a few than years Kevin ago. Owens. No, that's fair. Yeah, he's and younger. he's obviously good. Dude, he's a massive dude. And he was doing planches and stuff outside. So I'm not going, ha ha, you suck now. But I'm saying like, obviously his body's been through a lot. COVID's a thing. Yeah. Long COVID's even worse. So it's just going out there and pretending that, no, he's still the same Keith Lee. I'm like, no, come on, have him powerbomb people. It's just a shame we've missed the boat on him as a main eventer. As it felt like in we NXT, just copy paste that for was, so many people in AW. Yeah, it's it, that's the thing. Like even Jay White going rampage now. It's like, but Keith Lee had a lot of potential to be the next sort of big guy, and it's. But I, I think I agree with Matthew in that we're thinking maybe of the Keith Lee of old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks cool. Which, so I never even thought of that, you know. 
That's quite upsetting. When, you, when you've been put it into words there, but yeah, he has changed. He's a changed man, isn't he? I hope he proves us all wrong. But it was funny because we were watching that match and Joe was like, yeah, I thought you looked good. And I'm like, when? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, name uh, three. Uh, uh, his entrance. I'm like, all right, Jack, just eat your spaghetti. Um, I like the fact that you uh, didn't explain the jokes. They can't see it very well, no. by the way. It's not working, is it? Sorry, this is right. because there was many, many jokes and we'll soon to come with. It just says, like, lol, Jack, um, Italian restaurant. Um, <laughs> I decided, you know, that the mountain come to Mohammed. Papa Jack has brought his laptop with Italian food. And by Italian it's a bag food, of pasta. I mean a <laughs> other bag of little whole wheat fusilli made from 100% Fusil. Durham wheat. There you go. And grown grown, Durham, in, Ferry, yeah, grown yeah. in Ferry Hill. And it's been in my cupboard for God knows how long, so I thought I'd bring this in. So yeah, Bubba you Jack brought the Italian restaurant to the podcast studio, and it barely works as a gift. No, it's gimmick. good. I mean, it's uh, you can't see anything. Can you? No, you can't problem. see anything. It's a puppet on what looks when like a bag to, of cat food. Well, you have to explain the joke. It works so well, doesn't it? So well, whatever. Glad you did, otherwise, they'd be confused. I'm so putting. In, that's what it is. All the, up to now. The puppet is putting more effort in than a certain real life individual. <laughs> He'll it's do hopefully it. going to motivate him into doing it because we like to deliver our promises See, here. Yeah, yeah, someone in the comments a few weeks ago worked out how many days it'd been since he promised he would do it. So he said it on like podcast, was it like 292 or something like yeah. that? And we're now, what, what's this episode three something? It's yeah. been it's been a long, it's been two years almost. This is like 270 something. Oh, so maybe it's not as high. But it was like... <laughs> it's been two years. Longer than Rain? Was, it was, it was, it was, it was like, no, like, wait, wait, September wait, wait, wait. 2021. That he'd said it on the Ooh, podcast. Oh, it's not that far off. No, yeah. it's not. So it's Rome a year off. Came back at SummerSlam, then won in the yeah. next month, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was very in August. Similar. So it's, but that it's was scarily similar. How oh, close they are. that was a year before. Oh, so oh, 20, oh. 20, September 21, <laughs> oh, yeah. a year and a half, though. God, that's a long time. That, long? that he said he'd go to uh, an Italian restaurant. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. <laughs> <sighs> also, good seeing Jay Bradley here, who has been doing the enhanced talent thing for AEW and XT for years. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I know that jobber. Oh. Uh, Tay Mello has it's turned baby face. Yeah, and I have. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's getting squashed on dark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not dark. It's rampage. It's sorry, sorry. sorry. He's like, yay, one up. I'm not on dark. I'm on rampage. <laughs> Tay Mello. Good. I've never seen his stuff. He's very sorry. He took this. Look, Keith, the crowd didn't react with Jay White, but they loved Keith Lee. Yeah, they loved, mm -hmm. Like everyone else, they loved the idea of Keith Lee. And the giant powerbomb that Keith Lee did didn't look bad. It's like, oh. They don't right. like Keith Lee. They just love the idea of him. Is what you're saying. No, no, no. I mean, they don't like the current version of okay. Keith Lee, who's like, God, I'm tired. Um, but the version of Keith Lee that just powerbombs people right over his head. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's our Keith. That's right. Tay Mello has turned baby face, and I have no idea when this happened. Tay is telling her husband, Sammy G, that it's his time to listen and asks, would the little Sammy in his T-shirt be proud of the real-life big Sammy Lee? <laughs> Lay it down for MGF. It's all very rocky, this probably. I don't know, says Ross. I've seen Rocky. <laughs> Tay wants the best for Sammy. She wants him to be an honorable man. So is he a dick and she is a nice lady now? I guess so. This was weird, lads. What say you? Yeah, I'm with him, apart from the fact that I've seen Rocky. It's nothing like Rocky. Yeah, um, it was a <laughs> lovely little bit, I guess, if the important thing that ruined it was the fact that Sammy is not a good guy. Why are they doing these... How can how could you be listening to MJF and doing his things? Like the real Sammy wouldn't do this. I'm like, yeah, we don't care about you, Sammy. Is it different You're a dick. shades of being bad though? He's a dick, whereas MJF is the name Proper of your, dick. your Twitch streams. Like, there's a layer to the to the evil in AEW, and Ty's just like, yeah. It's you're a dick. You're not one of them. You're you're our dick. You're a good dick. I would agree with you, but the opposite. I think I care more about MGF because he's a proper dick. Sammy's a half a dick. All not do much of half a dick. <laughs> Barely a mouthful. <laughs> so I don't I don't know what the bloody point of this was. Other than the fill time on the show, no one watches, and they moved it to make sure that no one watches it. Like I just just a segment ago, you're praising your. Brady being on Rat and Pinch, and you're like, no one watches this. <laughs> <laughs> They've moved see it. On the no one watches. They moved it. They have the same ratings. It's not a good <laughs> sign. Uh, Anna J defeats Ashley Dem Dembaus with a Queen Slayer inside 543. Ashley Dembaus? Dembaus. Dembaus. After the match, Julia Hart appears and is literally bent around the ring post by Anna in a very impressive move. Julia then no sells the move because goth. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I didn't realize how, like, Anna's got really good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so like she's, yeah she's, I think it's under the tutelage of Jericho, right? And having being in that group, mm -hmm. it's actually given her a bit more of a character as well, which has helped her in ring work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like right. she's she's like everything she was doing, like the transitions and the selling, just the, the sort of the fluidity of the match was like she's she's really decent, isn't she? She really is. I think she's one of the highlights of this show that no one watched. Uh, and then hey are uh, the outcasts. Oh, so hey are uh, the outcasts say they are ready for Soraya. Uh, to beat up Willow on Dynamite. The Outcasts are wearing the shirt with Britt Baker's punched face to mock her, which AEW then put up for sale for real. Mm -hmm. um, number one, oof, that's a bad look. Mm -hmm. But number two, the laziness of that design. It was just a JPEG on a square on a shirt. Yeah. I thought the joke of AEW was, aha, just a T-shirt company. Yeah, so they're pumping out tons and tons of T-shirts. Oh, produced. not good T-shirts. No, right, no, right, no. Right. Okay. Just they do. They do release a T-shirt for everything. Every little joke, they'll get some merch. I mean, out of it, which is fair enough. That's like how you make your money and everything. They should make a shirt that says "No one watches AW Rampage." <laughs> WWE's released a mugshot of Vince on a T-shirt before, so you know. It, yeah, because it, it was wishful thinking. It's yeah. about context, isn't it? In that, like, um, I personally would not wear that shirt because if I was seen outside with that shirt, it it, it sort yeah. of suggests a certain thing. It's like, do you remember when I, I think it was all the Edge Lords that were wearing the the Rihanna shirt after the um, Chris Brown? Chris Brown. After that stuff, people were wearing uh, wearing that. Um, but and was that a T-shirt that was up for sale, or were they making it? No, I think they were making oh, it. But well, I think I mean. a lot a lot of people had them, as far as I know, anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think people would assume it's a similar thing. Mm. Um, and it, 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 you, you can't wear that out to a non-wrestling thing without people know. knowing what that is. My grand wore it to the ballet. <laughs> 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 Went down a tree. It, it doesn't look like it's from a wrestling match, does no, it? It's, no, it's it, just, it, and, and just a woman with a black eye. Front row for King and I just wearing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Went down really, really well. But like, it's, yeah, it doesn't look like a wrestling t-shirt. And it's not like... It's someone who people would instantly recognize as a sort of like, oh, that happened on this program. That, right. Yeah. It's just, oh, You're it's... You know that one angle we've already forgotten about because they don't so quickly through things. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, like I'd As you've been stomped by three lads, someone would be like, wait, lads, stop. He just yeah. watches a show about <laughs> this. And goes, oh, okay. Sorry, Paul. Uh, Mr. Ass and the Acclaimed defeat Cameron Stewart, Dante Casanova, and rise in. After 52 seconds of action by my watch. Thank you for timing these, Ross. It makes all the difference. Um, and it's a shame because, pardon my ears, it did sound like they put in can pops for the acclaimed. Which oh, I really? Thought, Sad. I thought, it, like, if there was one, thank you for backing me up there, if there was one thing that was that you didn't need to add fake pops to, it was the bloody acclaimed. So oh, it feels yeah, like they've lost that. overness, like, quite I a think bit. it was just this show. Do you think it was just the show? Because I think it was like yeah. one of those sinkholes where everything that went near it got sucked in. When they, when they came out or during the match, they like happened. both, it just didn't feel yeah. as hot for them as it has been recently. Right. I noticed that I a little bit on, on Dynamite as well, where their their entrance pop didn't get as much of a pop until he started actually rapping and doing the, the yeah. lines. And it was like, okay, there's the reaction. And I don't know whether it's folk are just silent so that they can hear them, yeah, or quiet. Sir, but it's a shame to see them not in the in a tag. I hadn't division. picked up on that personally, so that's interesting you say yeah. that. At, at the same time, like. You can see the three jobbers in the ring. Maybe there's not that much to get yeah, excited yeah, about, right? Tall. Yeah, yeah, Billy's tall, so yeah. But I, I didn't get that. it. I, it felt like That's a analysis. Bit, I know it's I know it's less than a minute and everything, but like the baby faces coming out and squashing some jobbers on an hour long show. Do you not think of anything better for? The, like, That's probably it as well. It's, it's just like all right, cool. weird. Yeah, it's time for your main event. Yay! At least Mark Henry showed up for this. I'm not a fan of having pre-recorded Mark Henry to say one bloody line. How oh, are mean. <laughs> um, Cash Wheeler takes on Jay Lethal with Mark Briscoe in the Mike Tyson Enforcer role. After Jay, <laughs> after Jay shoot pushes Cash into Mark on the apron, sending the Briscoe brother to the floor, Jay nails a shoot. <laughs> 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 the great auntie. Shoot lethal injection for the win. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Briscoe, uh, for missing all that. Uh, it's probably a reason why FTR Ball does the singles matches. This was very, very okay, average at best. JR at least got to bust out his reference to Wilbur Snyder and the abdominal stretch saying this used to be a finisher in the 80s. No, it didn't, Jim. <laughs> but God <laughs> love you for trying. Uh, the, the whole of Rampage was like the start and the end were worth watching. I don't know if it's like this every week. Start and the end were worth watching. Everything else was just yeah. filler, wasn't it? 
Yeah. And yep. an hour long show. I know it, I, it's not going to be the it's not going to be the second show for much longer. I'm intrigued is it? So to see how it how it goes when it. Collision starts. Like, is it going to be treated? <laughs> yeah. Like, are they going to have any big names on there to even stick it on YouTube? Yeah, really? Stick I mean, that, is that not why they're cancelling <laughs> that? <laughs> no, they'll, they'll get Wings of Redemption on to get that hot one. <laughs> I love that happening. <laughs> but yeah, AW I've not done. been trolled. I hope that was a real graphic I saw. They produced a video. I wouldn't send it to me. They produced a, a hype video, so it looked legit. Of all the things to troll Can someone over. Yeah. Can You're you running. verify that? Uh, like, if, you've got nothing, if you've got nothing else doing, if you could check that, would be great. But if you are busy, then ignore me. You could do a run-in. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, he can't. <laughs> Knock him out. <laughs> Gingerly walk in. <laughs> yeah. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Triple H is here and explains the rules of the draft and the fact that Brock Lesnar has renegotiated his contract which show he'll be a free agent from May 8th so he can appear on whatever bully show he likes. Shocker. He's just got that little note from uh, so Parks and Rec that says I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Signed it's, Brock. It is happening. It's on the undercard of the KSI. The undercard? What? What? <sighs> well, is KSI's match one of those like lights out matches or something? Like, we have to put it last. <laughs> uh, when, when is that happening? With like next month. It's next soon. month. It's like it's June the twelfth. Uh, They've been putting the work in as well. May thirteenth. Is at Wembley. Well. It is at Wembley. Wow. What? May not even Wembley. What? Wembley Stadium. No, is it arena? Yeah. It's got to be the arena. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Imagine. So like Wembley. <laughs> we knew Boogie the answer was arena, but we're like, please say stadium. <laughs> oh, this month. Yeah. Should we all go down? Off it's next time. Friday. Next Friday? Really? Next Saturday. You need to catch up on Wings of Redemption. Yeah. You'll love him. Yeah. Oh, just, you know, those lovely videos about him. Yeah. So I know him. I'll do it. Raw was good, eh? How can we go, yeah. we go to Raw after that? God. Uh, also, since Roman Reigns is on SmackDown, the new heavyweight title is coming. Yeah, we've all figured that out. First round of the draft, Rhea Ripley and Seth Buddy Rollins going to Raw. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Rhea getting the first pick. We talked about it earlier. You'd have Rhea if she was on uh, under the SmackDown draft picks, but Rhea getting the first pick. And you know what? I was a bit confused. I was like, oh, they're going to split the judgment day up because they were drafted separately, mm. weren't they? I was like, oh, no, they're going to take Rhea away. <laughs> they realize what they've got and they maybe want to get her away mm. from judgment day, who are, who are getting better, by the way. Um, but actually, it was just to give her a rub, wasn't it? Just Which is awesome. First pick, yeah, right? Rhea getting the first pick. Great. Yeah. Good for Rhea. Yeah. Glad to see Seth getting picked as well quite high because he's had one yeah. half a year and not had the actual recognition of the title reign. Hopefully soon. Yeah, we have that. I agree with that completely, Fraser. Uh, SmackDown gets Austin Theory, the poor bastards, and Charlotte is drafted to Holiday. Because <laughs> <laughs> where is she? Anyway, yeah, so it's Rhea, Rip Rhea Ripley, the person who beat Charlotte. Uh, yeah. SmackDown, yeah, SmackDown getting the shaft there, fair enough. Then good idea to get Theory away from Smack. Sorry, from Raw onto SmackDown because all he's done on Raw is lose and then get win the worst match of the WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, it was pretty crap. Was it? Was it the worst? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Cena's fault. Even he went under time, didn't he? Even Shane did better. <laughs> hey, at least Shane was memorable. <laughs> yeah. Paul Heyman then makes his way down the ring and is impressed by the world heavyweight title. Paul lambasts the Usos for not winning back their tag team titles and says he's going to address them in private. Heyman then bigs up the six man tag for backlash and says Roman Reigns will be back to address some things next week on SmackDown. Heyman says freaking a few times, which brings out Seth freaking Rollins. He's like Candyman. Seth says Roman can stop running from him now. They're on different brands. And Paul doesn't like this, so he grasses on Seth to Roman. Uh, however, he does try and do this on the phone. The fans are singing Seth's theme song so loud that Paul can't hear Struggle Chief on the phone. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seth then threatens Paul with a stomp, which brings out Solo. And we then learn that Roman has pulled some strings, meaning Seth will face Solo in the main event tonight. Great opening segment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I, mean, I, I really enjoyed uh, <laughs> like Paul Heyman getting really annoyed. Just, my tribal chief, I can't hear my tribal chief. That's good because then Paul's yes, like, please, please, please stop doing that crowd. Oh, let's do it some more. It's probably pantomime oh, stuff. The, the crowd was so good. That's the best raw crowd in donkeys. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they were so good all night. We'll get there with that Dominic segment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, love it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that 500 times the loudness of AW Rampage. Uh, yeah, and it gets, uh, I've been quite critical of Seth in the past when it's been like, uh, are you supposed to dislike him or not? He's just a fanny. But now he's proper liked and he's all right being a fanny to someone like Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. Crowd love him. I'm, yeah, I think this is a good run he's on now. It's cool, And he's it? dressing so beautifully. Yeah. He is. Oh, get he, him. What I like about it is he's doing the same stuff as he was as a heel, but he's doing it to the baby faces and it just works. Yeah. yeah. 
Just annoying. Yeah, he is. But he, great. He's not diluted the character or anything. No. He's still Seth freaking yeah. Rollins. Yeah, and he's able to be a bit serious as well and going, you know, by the way, Roman didn't beat me. It was DQ. Yeah. Just saying. So I was like, oh, okay. We see Cody Rhodes arriving and Pierce telling the roll, roller coaster. <laughs> the American roller coaster. <laughs> I can't say that. Roller coaster of love to not allow things to get out of hand with Brock this evening. We later see Brock arriving at the arena and when Pierce says he wants Brock to keep the peace, Brock replies, <laughs> good luck with that. That happened. Damage Guitar beats Raquel and Liv after a sneaky tag from Pamela, allowing her to roll up Sabu, <laughs> which is Ross's term for Liv Morgan. <laughs> it, I, I, I'm ama- amazed that Ross can see these things. <laughs> <laughs> she went through that period where after she was really hot and they decided like, all right, Ronda's a heel now and everything. She was like, okay, but Liv's hardcore and crazy. Yeah. And people end up just reacting to the table spots. Like, Which, ironically, thinking about it, makes him makes her a lot like Sabu. Ross will now just call her Sabu from now on, right? And that, like, and the we just have to the pick up on as it. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the Rock's back. No, it's LA Knight. Oh, Sabu's uh, Sabu's wrestling. It's live. Bit right. out of left field. The result on this one, non-title match and everything. But mm-hmm. I'm so used to damage Katal hey, hey, losing. Hey, hey. Speaking of forced names, <laughs> um, so used to them losing. I was like, oh, oh, okay, that's quite nice. Is it too little, too late? Maybe. I wish Liv and That'd Raquel would... That'd be a good name would, for uh, Liv and Raquel. Too, too little, too, too little, late. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they'd feel more like a team because they feel just like... they weird. Aren't they? they don't work together, work, do they? No. no. And it's like they've not even got a good entrance together. They're both doing their own entrance just get, side by get side. Get matching. Get in the, le- the road warriors. Get in the, the Legion oh, of Doom yes. spikes. Yep. The face paint and everything. Uh-huh. Make them look like a proper unit. Do it, doing that with the road warrior entrance music and everything. And, do, and then they're both still going... <laughs> That'd be great, actually. I'd be on board with that. Right now, I hate them. Their looks. This match fell apart at the end like cheap toilet paper. Yeah. It really did. He was like, oh, promising. And then it's like they get one little thing doesn't go 100% right. They're like, oh, panic. And you're like, oh, calm down, man. Better than the water spot, though. Oh, you got water on my face. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I hate when that happens. Yeah. But you know, just, if, if that happens, though, you can, oh, that phrase of beating me, too. You can just go like that. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Uh, you're not t- doing it right, by the way. You cut. You'll be amazed. You'll see the actually just screw. No, you'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. It's, you'll see. Yeah. it's like windscreen wiper. Mm. <laughs> Do that again. Did you know what? Well, test it here. I've got water if you want to try it. Oh, maybe later. If we've got time. I don't know. About Fuji took up a lot of this podcast already. <laughs> <laughs> Booker T and Queen Charmella here with the next round of the draft. And thank God Booker's able to pay attention and actually get the names right. Uh, Sami Zayn and Gavin Owens are staying on Raw. And so the Judgment Day. Oh, you're right. I think some people were overanalyzing these going, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Bloodline were all these people. But this, I think it's just building tension. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it works, doesn't it? Like the Usos, even the... The idea of them being drafted separately because they've up, they've upset Roman Reigns that much. I don't know what gives him the authority to separate them from. I guess he's the leader, isn't he? So they do those separately. But yeah, they end yeah up you could argue, argue that they're in different divisions, and mm-hmm. that's how they're draft. Like Rhea's in a different division to the rest of Judgment Day, as is the Usos to Reigns and Solo. The only like problem there is LWO was drafted as yeah as one body. Then again, Angelo is in a different division to Montez. Oh. oh, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> but you're not. You're Shoot not, insults though. insults on the podcast. I, I love them both. I love Shoot them both. No, no, you Just being silly. You're like Don Rickles now. I kid, I kid. <laughs> Smackdown gets the Usos and the LWO, which is like, yeah, loads of them. Ray. Yeah. yeah. Ray, Ray, and mate. Ray and, <laughs> and several Rhea, more exciting matches. Ray is in there as well, I think, so that... Yes. Yeah. That shuts down <laughs> All the Latin wrestlers and Joaquin Wilde from the Philippines. Uh, Ricochet and Braun get a massive win over the AA in a match that officially lasted just under two and a half minutes. Yeah, it was getting going as well. I quite enjoyed it while it's it just lasted. A tease, just a moosh bush. Yeah. Uh, and go. it was lovely, though, what we did get. I love <laughs> saying moosh bush. It's really good. Isn't that great? <laughs> moosh bush. You said something right as well. Which Isn't is it great? Really good. <laughs> English I struggle with, but French. We, we. We, we. Braun. <laughs> How we? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half, half a yes. Bro, Braun slams Otis. Uh, they get a big pop when they're squaring off one another. Then Braun slamming Otis. Uh, I put boo. But I wasn't sure if the crowd booed or I just booed. So that's not very helpful. Uh, Ricky does the dive off Braun to win a really quick match. It was a great 
points there, Matthew. Thanks for the contributing. The, um, I, I really hope they keep Ricochet and Braun together. Because we talked about this last week. It's a tag team that shouldn't work, but it does work. My concern is Braun's probably really expensive, isn't he? And so they're going to feel like they're not getting their, their money's worth by keeping Braun in this tag team, which might win some tag gold at some point, but probably isn't going to go anywhere like really significant. So I'm worried that if they're spending a million on Braun, they're going to go like, oh, no, let's, let's try it again. Let's give him another main event. I would agree so. with you, but I don't think... Do we know that? I thought they got rid of Braun the first time because he was too much. Yeah, so why would they rehire him for the exact... It must be on would much he, less, less than what he was earning, but more he's going to get with bloody EC3. Nah, because he turned down... You know, he's come back. He would have made a lot of money with Control Your Narrative. He would have, they were about to get a TV deal. That's right. On the cusp of greatness. What's that? This close with? to greatness. Is it still cracking on? All I know is on the, the news this week, it did say that EC3... I don't know why you'd even say this out loud, but I don't know what happened to this lad. EC3 said this out loud to people that he emailed Tony Khan after Brawl Out just to give him some help. And he said in the first line of the email, he wasn't looking for a job. He was just trying to give him some advice. Yeah. Says EC3. Great wrestling. Who ran, uh, what, three shows of Control Your Narrative? Yeah. yeah something like that. So he knows all about handling and some in Ring of, of those... Honor. He appeared in Ring of Honor at the end of that one show before they all closed. That's right. What well, gave him like a pet talk? And hey, ins- I think it was quoted as inspirational. A shoulder to cry on. Oh, and he has got yeah. big ones like. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why would you say that out loud? Uh, and he's always sorry. And he come out. Tony Khan did not respond. <laughs> Bless him. He's a busy boy. Yeah, he's got, yeah, yeah. He, he probably consumed the knowledge, he absorbed all of that knowledge. And Punk's come back, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that's the inspiration. He, he Without that email, who knows where we'd so be. So EC3 can say, ah, I did that. Yeah. Punk came back. 90,000, yep. Yeah. We're going to play some backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> On his back. Yeah. Which looks like it's made of gammon. <laughs> Sorry, Ethan, I didn't get back to you. I delete the top 1% of my emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shawn Michaels and Pierce are here with the next round of the draft. But before they can get going, Brock Lesnar is here. Lesnar gets in the ring and asks the crowd how it feels to look at the only real cowboy in Texas. I thought that was nice because the crowd were like, yay, it's Brock. He's like, you guys suck. Boo, we hate you, Brock. It was cheap, but it worked. Yeah. yeah. Security are on the scene before Cody Rhodes attacks Brock from behind. Cody drops Brock Lesnar, remember, with one right hand. Shoot punch. Is he not it? written He's shoot not written there. shoot punch. Brock Lesnar it drops Brock Lesnar, remember. Almost like it's his name. And with one right hand, just one, and boots Brock's cowboy hat off in the crowd. The pair are separated, though it doesn't seem Brock wants too much of Cody's jelly anyway. Mm-hmm. An absolutely brutal right hand. Busted him open. It looked, you know, like when you pick a spot, looked like that. He had blood. That man was bleeding. He was, yeah, shoot blood. Yeah. It was a bit underwhelming, this. I expected a little bit it's more, and I thought, oh, it's all right. It's going to play out um, later. I guess we got this. Could we saw two weeks before. ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's In it. In fairness, though, less is always more with Brock on the segments leading up to something. Nah, I didn't think. Get, didn't get, no, no, I, I, I agree. I, I'm, it's the Brock thing, isn't it? Every every time he does something, it's a pull apart brawl with all the agents mm-hmm. or the security. We but just he does seen have that aura about him. Though, no, you're right. Like, it works. Favorite, yeah. But like, didn't work here for me. No, nah, two weeks ago we saw pretty much the exact same thing, and Cody wasn't clear to compete. And this week it was, why are you keeping them apart? You don't, you know, why? There's no point. They didn't do it when uh, Brock brutalized them after WrestleMania. Didn't have security on hand. To be, yeah. You've got me good. there. Exactly. Yeah. Why, Matthew? Thinking. Why? I don't know. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> after commercial, here is the draft Pierce and Sean we're here to present. Raw gets Liv Morgan and Raquel. Fair enough. And The New Day, which is Covey and Xavier, but not Big E, because, well, okay. Uh, okay, and SmackDown gets Asuka and all three Brawl and Brutes. Bit late for Asuka. I don't like her a bit earlier. I don't know who I'd swap out. Wait, she hasn't been on TV since WrestleMania, right? Or am I being dumb here? No, I don't think she has. Uh. She's, she's like, okay. So I think maybe she's binding her time until this yeah. happens. Done a Drew At with least her. she got one of the on TV picks and not just. Yeah. He was on Twitter. Unlike you, Johnny Gargano. Oh, loser. <laughs> who? Gargano didn't get picked on telly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's gutted. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> that smile. Yeah, I think uh, you they going to Raw is good for them because I mean, what else are they going to do? They've already had to recycle Xavier losing to Gunther. So yeah, there's your two hot house show acts, right? You got the New yep. Day oh, on Raw, Street Profits on SmackDown. Everybody's happy. 
if you're under eight. Yeah. And Gargano, if you need people to go in the stalls and get some shirts. Ooh, Matt Riddle, look, pow, pow, pow. Gargano, I loved you when you were good. Uh, Matt Riddle <laughs> defeats Jimmy Uso after Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn doing Eddie Guerrero to get Jay Uso sent the back. With the turn tabled and the bloodline at a numerical disadvantage, Riddle nails a, a shoot floating bro. <laughs> 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 but he was in the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Ross. Uh, yeah, this, again, continue the story, which rather like Fraser's uh, state agent thing. It's pretty much never, never ending. ending. Mm-hmm. But again, it's hopefully leading up to the Heyman Uso stuff. So yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, I, yeah, I liked it. I liked the um, exposing the turnbuckle and then it coming back to bite him in the arse. Or yeah. the head. Um, and it was, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was a good match. Also, Maze Riddle won a match. Bloody hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was also thinking to myself, oh, oh, another Eddie tribute. Chavo, furious watching at home <laughs> on TV. RVD turns his cue card the right way around before being ambushed by a couple of idiots, uh, Elias and Boogs. It's a shame where Elias is now, because he was, like, quite good for a while. Yeah. Back in, what, 2018? <laughs> yep. Five years. Yep, that's, that's quite That's a yeah. long time ago now. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's got a shelf life, so. Boogs is good, though. I like Boogs. He's not at the level he was before. No, no, definitely They really not. needed Nagamura and Pat McAfee yelling his name over and over again. Okay, Paul Heyman is giving Solo a pep talk when Jimmy walks in and asks why his shoot brother wasn't at ringside <laughs> for his match. Paul explains how Solo has a mission to do for Roman Reigns, so couldn't be out there for the match. Paul and Solo then leave the room, with Paul buttering up Jimmy's ass on the way out. Your tribal chief loves you. This is some form of emotional blackmailing, surely. As much as it is getting stale for me, this stuff, anything with Paul Heyman is great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he just adds so much to the segment instead of just the beat down at the end of the show. Having Paul Heyman involved, it's a win. I still like it. I think it, it still tends to capture my attention every show that it happens. See, it's, it, you're right. It's not don't what get, it once was, but it's not at the point where it's like, oh, God. Yeah, it's not go away. Like, I don't want it, mm. don't want rid of it, but I'd like to see just a bit more development. It just feels like the weeks between WrestleMania and Backlash have felt sort of like repetitive, the same thing, and not just, here's actual progression. Like, we've not seen Reigns. Killing time before the draft. Oh, yeah, that's really what it was, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm not sick of it. It's just I'm also looking forward to what's next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Van Damme and Bischoff are here with the next picks. Monday Night Raw, Trish Stratus. Calm down. Uh, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Blazer, is Eric Calder. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't notice that, don't worry. No one else has been paying attention to Eric Bischoff for a while now. Wait. Uh, SmackDown, Karrion Cross <laughs> with Scarlett, and the picture they picked for Scarlett, they did her dirty. Mm. It was horrible. Yeah, it, I, I remember it seeing this on the live stream. photos you get on oh, Facebook yeah. rather than one of the profile. It was horrible. It looked like it had been slightly Disney eyes. You know, the, the sort of like how frozen people look. You know, the people in Frozen. Like, yeah. Walt, like Walt Disney, who was frozen. <laughs> yeah, like Walt Disney who was frozen. They've done the same with Zelina. She looks like bloody Pennywise in hers. <laughs> it's weird. No, because she doesn't look like that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not slagging off anyone's appearance. She's obviously a stunning woman, but she's there. Yeah, like, she's doing like doing Pennywise the clown. Yeah. <laughs> But she doesn't in real life. My point is, it's been heavily yes. edited and yeah. it's not reflective of a yes. true beauty. Exactly. LA Knight, <laughs> who look beautiful no matter what. Yeah. And it's time for Miz TV. Oh, sorry. Any thoughts on those picks? Or not really? LA Knight, no. it's great to see him getting picked. Oh, yeah. On TV. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, I, thought he, I thought he was going to be with the ones that were picked on, on .com or whatever and everyone's going, why? Not even in the last on? round either. No, no, in, no. In early. They've got plans. It's oh, good. Yeah. Absolutely. And there was a big pop for that. Unlike this next segment, Miz TV with special guest Nakamura. Not a good sign, this. No. I'll spell this out phonetically, Mafu, but could you say... Oh, no. You, uh, phonetically, and you've typed in G-C-H-I. Okay. Kishi, Sai, Kin, Tama. Yeah. At some of the room, and then laugh at them. Ha, ha, ha. Because it means the one with the tiny testicles, and that's what Nakamura said to Mizzles. He, 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 Shambles, he, he. right? They've just built Nakamura back up with these brilliant hype packages, right? He's a real fighter, a real martial artist. Hey, you've got little balls. Yeah. It's just cry like why don't There's do it pressure. to Nakamura? It, well, yeah, and spot why on. why put him in uh, a talking segment when that's clearly not his strongest thing? Yeah, like, I, <laughs> put him in Miz TV. Who Miz? Great talker on the mic. Nakamura, who, that's not something you should be doing with him. He should be silent in like a like a, a scary wrestler, not 
Go on, you've got little balls. I, back, I, back to highlighting the negatives there. Uh. I do like it. Like Nakamura, when he talks, obviously he's never going to be the best promo just because um, English isn't his native language or anything like that. But uh, I'm... I'm totally engrossed when he talks because his delivery is so amazing that he he can say tiny balls. Not in this case. I almost said, and it works. It didn't work, right? <laughs> um, he can he can say very little, and it make it mean a lot because he is so charismatic. He's he's just got this charisma unlike anybody else. Very unique. Um, but my, my issue with this is like, I thought, oh, he's going to, maybe he'll be in the main event scene. Maybe this will be a little, like it, it could be in the, um, the tournament world heavyweight. Thing. Yeah. The tournament. And he might be still, but the fact that they've had him out and just embarrassed the Miz for the 50,000th time is getting embarrassed. Maybe, uh, maybe he's going to bring back his character from a few years ago where he hits people in the balls. Uh, and that's going to be have to find them. Well, he's going to the find Miz. them first. Mm. The Miz, yeah. And then that's the story going into uh, night of night of balls. <laughs> there we go. He, he hits Miz low, but his t his balls are so small uh, that it has no effect, and Miz wins. Exactly. The next evolution for Miz's character. Yeah. Tiny balls. Uh, these segments made me beg for Tubman in Japan. Uh, almost the free agent do you want to is go it? back and do it again. Then okay. it was great for him. He might have updated it. Oh, he might have. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the free agent is here for a match against all six feet and four inches of Anthony Alanis. Alanis? Who's this? Less than a minute, this one went, and Rollins was talking to the bloodline all night long. They have a PLE match this weekend. What? It did nothing to build this match. You excited to watch it this weekend? Omos no, I'm not. Seth? And I really like, like Omos. I really like Omos. I am... Um, I, I don't know if you've seen it, the interview that he did recently talking about the health stuff that he's had to overcome no, um, I didn't. and just how much performing means to him and like how lucky he is and everything. They've got this amazing human story that they should absolutely exploit on television with <laughs> with Omos. He's he's a fascinating, very likable bloke. Mm -hmm. Like very, And he likes anime. Like, I was yeah. about to say, I didn't really care much from until I saw... That he that's, loves drawing anime, and he's like, it was, it's, when I got outed, he was almost like, he was weird, like oh my God. So that's weird, brought a lot of people around. Yeah, it's, it's weird than people, like, people being gay nowadays. Oh my God, he's in anime. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people are like, oh, any recommendations? He was answering, yeah, I like this, I like this. He likes Naruto, it's not his fault. But, you can you know. like anime and shop at Robert Dias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but for the people who don't like anime who understand human emotions there's also something there do you know what I mean there's also yeah, really you can like also it. build on the fact that he's overcome all this health stuff he seems like the nicest guy and instead they've just created this two dimensional yeah. bollocks character where it's just the same isn't it it's a big monster yeah. heel who wins on telly loses at the pay-per-views God, we've seen it so many times before. You've actually got somebody interesting, like it more interesting and with more of a human story than perhaps every previous giant. I'm sure they've all been through their health stuff. But no, Omos chats about nothing, it. Nothing, nothing like Omos. I imagine they're right and it's like, oh, so I've got these ideas about showing the human emotion. It's like, uh, quantum TV and go, Bruh! That's like, it. That's, yeah. Bronson Reed, same thing. Are you big? Yeah, yeah just Bruh. Yeah. Ah. What's a PLE match? Premium Come live on. event. Oh. Get up with the lingo. I I'm going to call them pay-per-views even if they're not. Road Dog and Molly Holly are here with the next draft picks and Molly doesn't even wait for the microphone to work before talking. <laughs> she wants to get out there, take the money and run. Raw gets Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Bronson Reed. Yep, not okay, a good pick. Yeah. Hasn't finished doing what he's doing, Rawr. so that's all right. Raw. SmackDown gets Shotzi. Okay. And Pretty Deadly. Who didn't die? They got the lake and Elton brought Kit back to life. Yes, boys. <laughs> Do you see the little picture they put on Twitter? They really went all in on the bloody picture uh -huh. because like, obviously they didn't actually get thrown in the lake on telly, but uh, so they, put so. the, they put themselves in the lake um, and got all covered in mud just for a bit of a social media picture. God bless them. Good lads. God bless them. But that was funny because they didn't address it on SmackDown. Like, yeah, we're doing this. It's like, before that, that segment came after they were they were drafted. So I guess it's like, oh, we're not dead. No, that was before. Was it? Yeah, yeah they, they got they, they got they, thrown they... in last week's NXT, and yeah. then they got drafted on Raw. Yeah, right? yeah. So they'd so already just... been killed off. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Like, so you watch this yeah. going. Oh, the dead guys were drafted. So they... <gasps> look, Mickey James got hit by a train or in or something in Impact and was back and won the women's title. Because Impact had to go, yeah, but Impact had to tweet out, she's not dead. I'm like, <laughs> she went by a train. Stock prices fell massively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Trump's on the line. Is Mickey all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Judgment Day are here to brag about getting drafted together, but separately, but together really, to Monday Night Raw. Rhea Ripley is a naughty lady who isn't worried about Zelina Vega because Mammy is always on top. <laughs> While Finn Balor promises Bad Bunny will be turned into little bits of fluff by Damien Priest at the weekend. Priest then cuts a promo in Spanish before Dom tries to speak. Boo! All that booing and all Dom said was he can't wait for the weekend. The LWO lads and Lass arrive on the scene and Ray promises to win a six-person tag match tonight and that Selena will win at Backlash too. Hooray! Dom is on another level so in terms of heat right now. It's it's crazy to think that from Ray, this eternal baby face has come what, one of the most entertaining heels we've had in the past few years. Yep. Just awesome. fantastic. Great fun. Re yeah. Everybody in that crowd was having a brilliant time. It was shades of bloody Roman Reigns, This Is My Yard Now, mm. or the um, Kevin Owens Elias yeah. segment. I haven't heard heat like that since. It, seriously, like the crowd were brilliant, but the, the like he gets that reaction or nearly yeah. that reaction. And he's con been consistently getting it. Yeah. He and he's one of the greatest U turns I've seen of a wrestling. And he knew it worked the crowd as well and not just like try and go through yeah. with it. He's just, right, let's let them go th and have their moment and, and boo us. And the Judgment Day, a great heels, are getting annoyed at the reaction, not just being like, yeah, right, come on. They look like they're pissed off, and it's great. That's the reason that the main event was so rushed, but I'm not yeah, upset about it no. at all because yeah. Dom was This was fire. better. They all were. Yeah. In the six-person tag, Finn Balor takes a 619-shaped bullet to allow Damian Priest to hit a south of heaven for a Judgment Day win. LWO yeah. should have gone over here. No. They could have, yeah. Damian Priest might be headlining. Bloody yeah, in Puerto Rico, of course, Damien Priest needs to win. No, but LWO don't win. <laughs> this could have like Zelina pinning Rhea Ripley in an inconsequential tag match is just going to put that doubt in people's minds. Like, oh, maybe she could. Mm -hmm. Just, just maybe. Nah. No, they're selling so many T-shirts right now. Mm -hmm. nah, you could have had shenanigans and, yeah. and, and everything involved. Oh my god, shenanigans! I just want to see LWO win. win. But it means Bad Bunny's going over at the pay per view, surely. Yeah, I can't see that not happening. To be honest yeah. with you, but Cody well, claims. Well, Drew didn't go over in Classic oh, Castle. God, just right. have Bad Bunny come out and sing American Pie. Great. Bad oh, yeah, Bunny's... What, what song are they going to sing? Oh, they're going to sing a Bad Bunny a song bad, together. Yeah, Bad Bunny's going to sing a Bad Bunny. It's Booker to T. Cheer with bad Bunny. Booker T. <sighs> Please get Booker T singing after. Shucky Ducky <laughs> Quack Quack. <laughs> he just sings a different song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd become amazing. I want this to happen. Come on, Eileen. <laughs> <Yeah. no, I swear. laughs> Bad Bunny is more valuable to WWE than Drew McIntyre, as unfortunate as <laughs> yeah, it is to is. say. Right yeah. now, he's going, true. he's going over. Yeah. Cody claims that if he doesn't beat Brock Lesnar at the weekend, then the story ceases to exist and he won't be able to finish it. Back of the line, Ting, if he takes that big L, fam. What? <laughs> why, why are you writing? <laughs> big L. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. Back of the line, No ting. cap. <laughs> yeah, 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 aye. Yeah, he's got a point, though. The story never ends in WWE, though, so... Stop it. they got a year to kill. <laughs> it's oh. all right. I think he's losing. No, he's building... They're going to build traction for that big old Saudi Arabia fake... Oh, God. They're going to do John Cena's 2012, where he just loses and loses, but not actually, because John Cena... We look, Me and Aiden were talking about this yesterday. John Cena's 2012, he won quite a bit. Yeah. But they're going, oh, it's the worst year of his career. I they're remember that. I remember, win yeah, yeah. back over the rock the next year. They're doing that with Cody, aren't they? MVP's 2009. Oh, yeah, the losing God, streak. I, mm. That's a deep cut. That, that always helps people, that losing streak. Yeah. 2009? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the tunnel. Lost the tunnel. Because he was so oh, proud. Oh, yeah. Wasn't the rumor yeah. that that it. was caused by... They were doing the uh, pee tests and he <laughs> drank it. <laughs> 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 Stop it, you dirty bastard. <laughs> Get that tunnel out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. In the Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> There's your test. <laughs> you know what? That's better than Our I was going to Our superstars say, so. are fed up of wrestling with you when you're covered in piss, Montel. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly it. Now, what did he do? What did he actually I'm putting the P in MVP. <laughs> oh. Got it out. Piss all over the globe. Yeah, ring you. Go like that. Go like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true story. That all happened. <laughs> the guy with the initials LD told me about it on Twitter. Backstage, Bianca <laughs> Belair claims all damage Katal have done is hold EO Sky back. Bianca thinks EO could become a huge star, but only after she loses at Backlash. Sky shouts in Japanese. Great segment. That's yeah. what the subtitles will come up. Have you been watching films on Netflix or Prime? They'll come up the subtitles in English. 
like shouts in Mandarin. And you're like, oh, great. <laughs> That's tremendous work there. Whoever's doing the subtitle job, Amazon Prime. Squid Game must be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Man talks such shit. Stays there as high Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, good point. JBL and Tay Long are here for the next drafts. Monday Night Raw get Alpha Academy. No Maxine Dupree with them, even though she's been ringside with Otis recently. OMG. Yeah, because she's. Wait, why not... would Maxine Dupree be with Alpha Academy? She's probably she's the not... MMM. Yeah. Just because yeah, she's together. involved in the. She's a big fan of Otis. Just well, like, I think it's, Ross it's, really it's, gets it's, invested it's, in these stories. Is like. Otis in, in the models or is he in Alpha Academy? And it just confirms that he's in Alpha Academy. Yeah. I think yeah. is what it's. Being suggested. Right are they still? Are they on the same brand now? I can't remember where they. Uh, the models got they're drafted. On they're on Raw, so it will continue. Yeah. yeah. He said Gable before Sable, and people said she's not Sable. He went, "Oh bollocks." <laughs> uh, the Cowie Girls, NXT Women's Tag Team Division, mm -hmm. getting gutted here. And SmackDown gets Rick Boogs, okay, and Cameron Grimes. Hey, where's he, he been? Yeah, exactly. There was Get that photo, yeah, of him. He looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> He does. Why did you say that Cause, so weird? Because my nose started to run there. <laughs> it looked amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Massive crime spurt. Yeah, you can yeah. see Grace's thought process, can I get away with this? Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh no, it's Bashidi. <laughs> the best defense in the league. If, if Giant was here, he'd just laugh. He'd just, he'd just admit, he'd be like, how can you get away with that? And I can't, I can't get away with it today. <laughs> oh, guys, guys, my nose ran. <laughs> oh. A bloody DQ finish courtesy of the Usos sees Seth Rollins versus Solo cut short. If you go and watch the match back, Paul makes the phone call to Roman when Solo was on top. He just hit a shoot someone drop. So what does all of this mean? Why would Roman send the Usos out when Solo was on top? And why would the Usos take orders when surely they can see what's going to happen then? Poor little lambs. After DQ finished, Kevin and Sammy are here for a little scrap to end the show. They were just rushed for time, I think, weren't they? Yeah. I think just the time concern. They messed it up, essentially. Ross is completely right there. Yep. Um, but yeah, they realized they had like four minutes left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's it. Yeah. Fine, though. Like I said, it's it, most of the stuff this week was dedicated to the draft. And so the matches the that's just some of the things, though, isn't it? There's a whole lot more. We haven't got the notes out about some what of the, the ones. supplementary yeah. picks. I just remember Gargano. Yeah, Nikki Cross will have been drafted. Piper Rock. Niven. Oh, she yeah. just got her masters. Yeah, yeah. yeah she awesome. Bloody hell! Well done. What work or say? Aye, working hard. Oh, hardly working. No, wait, that's us. I mean, take a break because my nose is actually. Yeah, I'll bless you. I was going to say now <laughs> seems a good time to take a break. I think I've got nose bleeding. We, if we're being cruel, we. Fraser's got. A, Fraser's bleeding during this. He's, yeah, you are, yeah. he's called the Holix Moxley. <laughs> See you in a minute. NXT. Wes Lee defeats Drew Goulet to retain the NXT North American title. Dempsey's interference is thwarted by Tyler Bate. After the match, the champ's hand is raised by Tyler, but Bate's eyes are suspiciously on the belt. I wrote these ones, right? And I didn't realize Ross, Ross is really funny. And I wish I'd put more funny stuff in there. So apologies for the dry nature of the next. No, no, Ross would take this as serious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> NXT is a serious week. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. That's all right. So Tyler Bate going after the North American title. He's not from North America, Governor. Oh. He can't have that title. <laughs> Uh, excited? I don't, know, I don't know what to say. It'd be a good match. Yeah, really will. good it will, match yeah. when they have it. Um, I, I don't really know what the future holds for Tyler Bate. I thought he maybe was one of the ones that could have been called up during the draft because he's been in developmental for seven years. It's ridiculous, isn't years, it? Six years, seven years. Um, obviously, some of that was NXT UK and a pandemic, but I think he's kind of ready for the main, of it, like main roster scene. Do you reckon he hates Pete Dunne? That's what it is, yeah, yeah. Triple H just doesn't like him either, yeah. At least he's got Trent Seven. <laughs> <laughs> See, someone... <laughs> no, on, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. On my Twitch stream, someone messaged in and was like, oh, I saw you were out filming with Trent Seven the other day. What? I was like, what? Some guy called Fraser Porter does videography and stuff for club nights, and Trent Seven's a uh, host for a club event in Birmingham. There's a great video of him like trying to introduce it and he's like, what are we here for tonight? And the guy just doesn't say the name of the club. <laughs> so he has to do it himself. And then really crap fireworks go off, which is just like a little bit of steam. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry. Can we find this? Is that it's, his, is that his so job make now? you be doing like he's, loads he's, of work jobs. If you can find this, I'll give you a big kiss. I'll see yeah, I think it's on Trent Seven's Instagram as a reel. Um but he's doing like club 
event things uh, in Glasgow and Birmingham and stuff stuff like that. It'll be yeah, I think it'll be under his reels or tagged. Um, he's got a great look, hasn't he? Yeah, I like Trent that's the one. A lot. The, that's the one. The top twenty one. first one on the right hand. Yeah, the mid in the middle with a corner in his head. Oh, that's sombrero. Oh, it's a sombrero. Oh, yeah, look at that nutter. I don't know if he's. I, mean, I don't. I fun. don't think he swears. I don't think he does. We're going to try and get him with the leader of the patrol. What's your name, mate? Sam. And who are you here for? Zero. We're here for glass. But, but <laughs> that was better than I was expecting. Look at that. <laughs> it's just. It's, try is it called zero glass or what? I no, it's called glass. The night out is called glass. Maybe zero Why is the zero? DJ. Maybe. I don't know. Trent didn't know, and we don't either. But that was no. Some... You're here for glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> I felt like they were trying to get the guy to say glass because the event's yes. called glass. But it's. But he didn't, and they put that online. Filmed by Fraser Porter. Not me, but someone I know from cinematography. An... Yeah, right. I love there's an it's evil awesome. Fraser Porter. Yeah, yeah. It's but the darkest wait, timeline me with a goatee. But maybe he's the good one and you're the evil one. Jack wrote that line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trick Willie cuts a promo saying that he knows Carmella will bounce back. He's in the other by Bron Breaker. Who is staying in NXT by the looks of things? Huh? Bron says he never wants to represent the fans again, and the match is set up between the two on next week's show. Mm. Yeah, I'm fine with uh, Bron staying and just being this new character he's got, where he's a dick. I've not seen a lot of Trick's promo work, and I think he's really good. Mm -hmm. Have you not? Oh, he's good. Isn't bloody he? brilliant. Yeah, he? he's really good. Um, I don't know how much you can, how much more mileage there is with with Bron in NXT. I, I personally, and I guess this is the point, but don't want to see a heel NXT title run with Bron. So, mm -hmm. what do you have him do before he gets called up? What, what would you do with Bron after this is over? After he's had his rematch? Why do you not want him as a heel? As a heel champion. I don't want to see a heel world champion, Bron. Just uh, go on a, a rampage through the division, just taking folk out. Like, what? Have a quiet hour long main of. Ooh, Matthew, you're dying here. Bail out of this. <laughs> said rampage. Yeah. Ooh. Have you heard against... Mayday, mayday, <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tightly run back Tyler Bate versus uh, Ron Breaker for the North American title. Then you can have a, a heel title reign eventually. It's a step down for Bron, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I... I guess so. He's one of the most valuable members of the roster, isn't he? He's one of the people that are people who actually pay to see. So yeah, and if they like being a sign saying they don't like him, so yeah, yeah. those plants that don't pay money to get in there, they like to mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, JD McDonough oh, is backstage with Mackenzie Mitchell. JD says he's waited 21 years to go to Raw, so yes, he's bringing a big chip on his shoulder with him. Noam Dar interrupts and asks if he can eat the chips. Yum yum, pig's bum. Uh, no, he asks JD to hurt Dragon League tonight, so Lee stays away from his cup. Deal? Yeah, no deal. Huh? He's off the raw and whatever. <laughs> so he might he might take. The, I mean, he's not going to because he didn't. But he might take the cup with him to raw, which would be confusing for that audience. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm Dar plays a cocky little bell end. Well, yeah, doesn't he, he does, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> yum yum, pegs bum. I don't know mm. why he said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shoot line. <laughs> Stick to the script. <laughs> okay. JC Jane defeats Gigi Dolan for the Gigi's 11 year old brother, Miles. Oh, that didn't work then, did it? Because <laughs> Gigi threatened to bring the brother to watch the Get Revenge after JC talked crap. So naturally, she lost in front of the kid. The pair battled to the outside where Dolan knocked her rival in the barricade and steps. Even H. Jane got busted open. That was it, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was a yeah, stinker. Was... They got no chemistry together. It's a shame. They're right? not. They're not good. Like uh, they got the Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys and Dudley Boys curse, where it's like, wow, love seeing you wrestle each other, don't like seeing you wrestle one on one. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it is a shame because they they had a lot of heat coming off that barbershop segment where she got kicked in the face. Cool image though, wasn't it? She made the most of it. Yeah. Did she do the licking the blood thing and yeah. everything? Yeah. No, so that's what you have to do now, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you, I want to rest and just go. Oh. <laughs> I like the acting from her brother. Just sort of being like, oh. <laughs> "Hey, oh. what are you like?" Oh, no, she's getting beat up. Can't take you anywhere, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Axiom defeats Scripps, uh, where it wasn't officially said as mask versus mask, but they did say whoever loses will be unmasked and killed. Uh, Axiom beautifully counters Scripps' supposed big 
uh, springboard thing like he did that one time in the greatest moment uh -huh. in the history of NXT. Uh, then again, everyone cheered and he had to wait up and hit with the golden circle, whatever it's called. Then do it again. Axiom then rips off Scripps' mask, revealing that Scripps was actually Reggie all what along. What are you doing here? Yeah. And fans chanted Reggie as the worst kept secret in wrestling, as <laughs> underneath the worst mask in wrestling was revealed. Yeah, that was a good. great match. Oh, yeah. I, I think Axiom, good. I'm surprised. Another one that I think could have been called up during the draft and filled out sort of the mid card on, on maybe SmackDown. Why not Reggie? I don't think he's ready. He's already been there. Yeah, he's been there, but he was a Somalia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a decent match. You're totally right about the mask. Because I've not seen much of uh, Reggie's work in, or oh, sorry, Scripps's. Scripps's? Scripps's work. Scripps's, Scripps's work uh, in NXT. It's a really bad mask. I'm glad they're getting rid of that. Scra I'm amazed that it made air. And everyone yeah. went, well, this is it? And they did like the, the promo photos and stuff like that. And people are going, no, no, really. Is this, this is the final design? Was he meant yeah. to be serious? To begin I with, he did the... This is NXT answering machine. Please in the merchant. This is scripts. Right. Want... It, was, it was pretty crap at the start. <laughs> I'm going to change. That was so funny. He's all these like, I'm going to change the days of the judgment and the revelation. And then this guy shows up looking like a doylem. You're like, oh, <laughs> all right. Then they kept going on it. But then the one match he had, the big like, dun, 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 it's scripts. He came out and everyone, oh, God. Uh, People have known since the start, right? Everyone, because yeah. Reggie, Reggie, wow, they're chanting for Axiom. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm got the bailing on it and going, all right, just do something else. So what Briggs, do you think I'll have him do? Anything else? Yeah, fair. It would be good. It's like this is Reggie <laughs> <laughs> with a mask of yeah. Reggie. On. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to this <laughs> NXT. It looks like a really good show. <laughs> Click beep. Riggs and Jensen are in the pub and they're back on the same page after what happened last week as we've skipped through what seems like. After a storyline's been going on forever, we've gone through a good three months of storyline in like a week. Yeah. But I'm not really complaining. Ross probably is though. This probably made him even sicker than he already is. Uh, two lovely ladies walk up and ask Jensen if he'd like to have a drink. But he says he's catching up with his pals. Fallon and Briggs are surprised, commenting on how it looks like their little brother did grow up. But I thought the whole point was he hadn't got his end away. So now that women are coming after him for a change, he's like, nah. No, he's, not, he's, not, he's, he's interested in the relationship of his, his, of his NXT stable mates. Not time. Flues, he's a bar. He was got, very respectful. He was, yeah. He's, he's got, learned his lesson that, you know, trouble. Beat it. He's got business tips as well for the bar. Yeah, yeah he was like, nah, in fairness, that this, this, this place is on an ancient... Indian burial ground. We should sell this and like, oh, you yeah. was like, no, really, it's worth a lot of money. Oh, the lore in NXT is is incredible. That's oh, why that's people. Real. He's like, that's why people keep that's... on getting attacked in the parking lot. It's oh, cornered. Yeah, yes. They could make a lot of money to sell the bar. That's the whole. That's what yeah. the whole story. He's going to buy a... it if it's just run the story back again. The whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I'll just be some bloke and say, like, I was sold to scripts, Reggie. <laughs> I'd like to put a bid on for the bar, please. <laughs> He's right there in front of them. He's not even an answer machine. So why are you doing that thing with your hand? <laughs> <laughs> JD Muck, don't Google me, defeats Dragon Lee. Dara's at ringside talking to his heritage cup. At one point, JD takes Lee to the top and tries to move Dragon Lee's mask. Dara gets involved, but Lee rocks him. Lee follows JD back in, but JD nails a headbutt to stun him. Because he's got a massive head, you see, so it does lots Funko of damage bottom. to them. Yeah. <laughs> JD goes on and hits the devil inside suplex. For the, is that the name of the move? The devil inside suplex, the pid, the win. The devil who is who JD's going to be spending all the afterlife with. Uh, after match, Lee nails a dive on Dar before the two pair scrap to the back. He's a bad one, you see. I think th this match was kind of unneeded because <sighs> JD, if he lost here... Looks weak going to Raw, but Dragon Lee also looks weak because he, you know, he's he's trying to be the top guy on NXT. I, I think JD should have lost on a way out. Not enough people are watching NXT for it to really matter. That's and true, yeah. like, um, he, uh, what's his name? Dragon Lee should could have done with a win there going over. Yeah. it's all right though. We're getting, building up that really hot Dragon Lee Noam Dar match, where Noam Dar is the only person to remember NXT UK exists. Which is yeah. a very endearing gimmick, but not for a few. But Dragon Lee. Clon the NXT UK Heritage Cup, or is it just the NXT? NXT. It's good. They've scrapped the logo. They've got the logo off, yeah. Off, yeah. So. <laughs> Scratch it off. <laughs> yeah, again, yeah, he wrestles really well. Um, 
as many people commenting online, it's a shame he's been drafted to Raw and not the inside of a prison cell. The schism is backstage watching tape of Joe Coffey. Oh, gone from strength to strength there, aren't we? Joe Gacy, God Almighty, says Coffey is impressive, but tonight he will get, get what? He will give his own body for the schism, taking pain and punishment for their greater good. The greater good. Interestingly, Rip Fowler and Jagger Reed are backstage too, so I guess they're going to use them for a bit longer. Yeah. Yep, yeah. They didn't get the release. Still kicking about. I noticed during this bit when they put the masks on, not to slag off masks or, or podcasts, all we've been doing, it's really cheap sounding. You know, when you get like a, oh, che- yeah, a, a Halloween like, mask yeah. from Poundland when you're a kid? That noise. That was that was my input. Look at to mass them. produce them. Have you, have you seen how many people are they schism? Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. They did the segments where this was looked like when Schism take over Chase Hewn and loads yeah. of the students there. Loads of them. Mm. Hunters. Let's go to three different Poundlands to get all them. Uh, Joe Gacy defeats Joe in the battle of the two Joes. <laughs> Rip, Rip Fowler puts Gacy's foot on the bottom rope to break the pin before the two factions scrap. Ava runs in for the ring and confronts Coffey. Ava then falls to the mat and acts like Coffey hit her. Gacy capitalizes to pick up the win. After match, Ivy is backstage watching and she's seen enough of Ava, always interfering. Ivy storms off. Another sort of Eddie Guerrero esque spot. Yeah, you know, like, oh, it's, it's, me. No, yeah. it's just the piss off Chavo oh, at this point, is. isn't it? Mm. It is. Yeah. Danny Palmer defeats Tatum Paxley. Aye, right, she does. Von Wagner's with Mr. Stone. Why are they back together? Why? Because <laughs> I thought he, I thought they had that match where because he Robert Stone, and... yeah, Robert Stone went right. I've had enough of you. You crap. And he went, no, don't do it. Come back. And he went, no, I've had enough. You've got no emotion whatsoever. Stop. No, I'm going. Uh, yeah. I'm Von Wagner, and I'm here to say, wow, that was beautiful. I guess I'll stay. <laughs> I guess the thing was, he was supposed to deliver a line that was so stunningly beautiful uh-huh. that I went, wow, you can talk and act. But Von Wagner, because he's Von, he's Wagner, Von Wagner, said it in the exact same way as his other stuff. So it was only second when you have to watch back and gone, did they miss something? It's really endearing. And no, we didn't. I really, I, I like it. Like He's like Sling Blade. Do you not think? <laughs> you think Sling Blade? Yes, but he's not supposed to be. <laughs> no, but he is, isn't he? Well, this was the, oh yeah. The, he's a free he, he, agent. He can pop up anywhere now. Oh, always, God. Always on the lookout. Don't threaten us a good time. Uh, Von talks about... Sling Blade. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. You should Von Wagner's in it. Von talks about his dad, Bo Beverly, wrestling at the Reese Super Slam years ago. That's right, 92. Stone asks about a photo of a young Von but he doesn't want to discuss. Von Wagner doesn't want to talk about a photo that shows him with stitches on his head as a baby. He's not happy. So he clearly killed Voldemort. <laughs> no? Oh. So what are they... Are they trying are they to humanise insinu- him, right? Are they trying to explain why he's like he is? Why he's a horrible promo? Yeah. If it's going to be that something happened to him as a kid, I'm still going to make jokes. What I, like, I did like the, the bit where he, he did have a bit of personality. Robert Stone was like, there's your dad at, at SummerSlam. Maybe that's what happened. He's like, I wasn't I wasn't born yet. It was just like, <laughs> she's very blunt. <laughs> and Robert it's like, oh. He delivered it. He, he's doing it like GCSE drama, but not very good. It's the one that gets picked last. Right. You know when it's like you're doing it, you're reading. No, no. You're, we read, you're Wait, doing English. What? Go on. Sorry, no. Like in GCSE in, No, you're in doing drama. English language. Like, everyone has to read a bit, a page. We're going to go through the Tempest. You know, you start off and the person who doesn't give a damn is like, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> SummerSlam 92 was years before I was born. All right, next. And then we go to Pachidi, who says, Oh, no, I was thinking of Fraser's GCSE drama class. Like, yeah. everybody lined up. Like, it's Not PE. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, you, you. Come to be honest, Von Wagner. Yeah, Bloody to be hell. honest, yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> in, we did hires and National Fives, which is slightly the same as GCSEs almost. But like the teacher would be like, you're with them, you're with them, you're with them. What, and you're, she's oh, a crap one for oh, each group. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'd, you'd be so... Oh, with Imagine Von Wagner playing Zip Zap <laughs> Boing. <laughs> Duck down. <laughs> not, not, not a clue. Which Do you have played Zip Zap Boing? Yeah. Which one's Zip Zap Boing? Uh, zip to the left, Zap yeah, to the right, yeah. Boing. So we could, we could play it now, in fact. Uh... This Go is going to work really well on it's, the audio. So I, it's first person to ma- mess up, right? So I could zip it to Fraser, I'd zap it to Matthew, yeah. and you could boing it back. So it's the first person to mess up, right? Yeah, it's not. I, yeah, it's not one. I know it, but it's not one that I, I know. Well, you got it. That's it. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Go so on, I'll start. Right. Zap. Zip. No, you'd have to boing there. I think. <laughs> 
Well, I'm here. Yeah, I can only. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> play Dr. Goose. Bloody though. Von Wagner of yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all your favourite. Yeah. Later on, let's like... just play games. Let's set up for Bulldog. Should we have rounders outside? <laughs> Come on. Sack this off. It's only an XT. Yeah. Bye. See you next week. <laughs> Kiss Chase. Come on. <laughs> oh, you can't. Be. <laughs> let's go shopping. Yeah. So, yeah, the thing is, Von Magda got zipped. We should have been boinged, and that's the issue. Uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dome defeat Katana Chance and Caden Carter to retain the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. Good for them. How do they solve the problem now? Still champs going up to the main roster. Do you, do you yep. scrap the belts? Well, they might do an Indy Hartwell and relinquish them. I mean, they said they were going to defend them on all brands, which defeats the point of it being you know, women's titles. They said that. Makes... I think they're going to forget about that really quickly. Like, yeah. we don't know about... <laughs> no faith at all. Yeah. <laughs> they ignore who, who that said they what? said that. Who <laughs> said what? No, 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 no. I'd scrap them, honestly. Mm. I, I don't think like NXT really has the, the depth for it. And nobody it did a while around. ago. That's a big issue. It did, but now right. they've gotten rid of like them and um but GG. No, G. that's it. Nobody's in NXT long enough for a tag team to feel like a proper thing. So I, I just don't think NXT needs that. Not anymore. Maybe it could be built up later on, but like, yeah, if they've taken all of them, it's like, oh, who's who now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Indy Hartwell relinquishes the NXT women. Sorry about. I was going to say it was a, it was a weird Sorry. weird match up in the sense that both people in the match were going to take the belts to a different brand. Mm. Like, yeah. The neither of them are NXT anymore, which it was it was just a bit odd. I thought they'd put in another tag team, but right enough, there is no other. Yeah. At the moment. That's, that's, that's a point. That's why the wrestling as we said, there's, yeah. there's no one else. Title change. And it's like, oh no, they're going to the main roster. Yep. They they retain. Oh no, they're, they're going, going to the main yeah, roster. Yeah. This this is right. Why Sean's, yeah, right. Sean's enabling all these tag teams and people to be taken from an team. This is why. We had a tag team with Danny Palmer and Sol Ruka, but on a level up, but Sol Ruka's now injured. So yeah. with an ACL injury out for uh, a year. A year? Yeah. Is that right? Oh, oh that's something like that. And Indy relinquishes, there we go, the NXT women's title. She, oh, Jesus. She quotes Princess Diana saying, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Only she could get away with that. Obviously, she didn't quote Princess Diana. Un- only that. her. No, no <laughs> like, such a crap, like, like, so, like this is the sort of thing that you have put on your wall in glitter, isn't Von it? Von Wagner could. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he could Take do about it. four years to get it out of his mouth. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it's a crap line. But because she was saying it, because she's so so nice, so like, it was, oh, yeah, don't, yeah, don't cry. Smile, it's happened. But I would say, don't cry because I'm not over. <laughs> she's then carried to the back by Dex Loomis again. The camera focuses on the belt in the ring, and then Tiffy Strat walks out to grab it. I mean, fair enough. Nice. Her and Jade struggle for the title. Uh, Laya Valkaria. I can't even get that big name right. Suddenly close lines on both. Then all the wounds spill out and there's a big old scrap because how else are you going to end this? Showing hey. off all of the women's roster who's still there. It's like, don't worry about it. The, the good ones are off. Yeah. We've got to look at these ones. <laughs> <laughs> look at what you could have won. <laughs> no, I, you know what? After you said about Tiffany Stratton, and I, I think you mentioned that Ross had said like he saw something in her. I just went back and I watched a few promos and like, she's very good in her character. Oh, yeah. Great, yeah. No, I haven't watched really much, so it's yeah, good. Don't worry about it. They should have even less now. All the good ones have left. They should have maybe called an audible last week and had her win the belt when Indy got injured. Obviously, they didn't know the extent of the injury, but it would have solved this whole "who's going to be the champ" situation. Yeah, I love yeah. That NXT's been in like second gear for a while. Like, what well, what's happening? We're not really sure. So apparently, they're not knowing like, until yeah. the last minute, which is again fascinating. Thinking about the is like. Uh, I'm five more minutes left before Raw goes on the air. Oh, all right, that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dynamite. Boom. We kick, off, uh, we kick off Dynamite with Adam Cole, Bandido, Orange Cassidy, and the returning Roddy Strong, taking on Jake Hacker, Daniel Garcia, and 2.0. Before the match can get underway, Chris Jericho makes his entrance to join the commentary desk with everyone's favorite t-shirt, the Britt Baker Black Eye one, the one that got Pachini's head kicked in the other week. Uh, Adam Cole's team gets the win following the boom. Post-match, Adam Cole runs to the top of the ramp to attack Chris Jericho with security getting involved. Now, it's, they are doing a good job with the Adam Cole-Jericho feud, but it does feel like Jericho is miscast somewhat because he's way too hammy to be playing a serious guy, like, I beat up you. Well, I ordered whatever. The attack on your girlfriend. Whilst he's then doing commentary, trying to sound like he's in Skid Row still, like, yeah! Yeah. And the crowd still singing his song yeah. as he's got the bloody photo of his, his battered last on it. It's like, I think anybody else might be good for this, but it's just Jericho's just too... Jericho. People, it's just the music's over. He should change his theme. But it's so iconic now that it's kind of 
pointless to do so. Yeah. Um, AW's oh cool heel approach, which is like, okay, but it, it's not that effective. <laughs> thing is, Fozzie have loads of crap songs to choose from. <laughs> There's an entire back catalogue. <laughs> Give me yeah, yeah. Choose one of those. Enemy. It's the only time you'll get an arena people uh, full of people singing a Fozzie song. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> people have said it's like, is Jericho going to count as headlining Wembley this, Stadium? Mm, as Fozzie? He will, won't he? Yeah, yeah. I had a ninety-two thousand. He'll play himself out, won't he? Yeah. Yeah, oh, he actually should though. That'd that, be yeah, great. That's quite that good. good that's quite good. Um, my favorite part of this though was the fact that after the bell, I thought the match was over, so I went to speed up the play. You know, the playback of Dynamite. So I put it on two speeds. So Adam Cole running up the ramp. It was already quick. It was quick. rapid. Yeah, <laughs> it was good though. The art because he wasted not a second. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. One, he, two, he was three. Straight up oh. there through the stage bit. I thought it was. I thought it was really good. Charles actually. Robinson all the way up the ramp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it was nice seeing Bandido wearing Orange Cassidy shades to show that they are. Friends, because yes. that's how you do it. You wear your friends' clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have nothing. Else. Oh, Roddy Strong Roddy again, Strong. kind He's of maybe you. lost it, but he we did get a reminder of how good he is at the backbreakers and the suplexes, all the things mm -hmm. that brought him to the dance. Yep, it's like nice, oh. nice reminder. Well, if if you've not seen Roddy Strong before and you're watching AEW, which is probably about twelve people, then you know what he's, he's about right. now. So it worked. He's like, like a good Bobby Fish. Also, Jericho <laughs> and commentary was. Yeah, I'm always amazed when he does commentary because he can get everyone over while also staying in so character. Awesome. Like he was bigging in, up everybody, but every it worked. Every person, yeah, and they're like, totally "Oh, right. Roddy Strong's just taken down the whole of the Jericho Appreciation Society," and he's like, "Well, he's really good, but he just got lucky." You know, it's like, okay, you you've got yeah. him over, but you're still staying in character, and it's I'm excited for when he does leave the ring and go into the commentary dress because that's surely where he'll go once he once he's retired. Oh, I can deal with him every week. <laughs> well, that, that's the you thing. Mean, I mean, he's he's a lot better than he used to be when it really, literally was just yelling the entire thing. Like, All right, shut up. But yeah, I think it can be like a, if they've got that rotating seat that, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Ross and Jericho, then a crying Taz. But he also wouldn't be, be in storylines at that time. So it might not be as grating of him being like, I've always nah, got to take true. it back to my character. Mm, and yeah. It could just be Chris Jericho. Yeah. Uh, Jungle Boy and Darby Allen speak with Rene Paquette backstage about their chances of main eventing Double or Nothing. Just to, to set up. Uh, it's nice storyline progression throughout the show of this one, actually. Yeah, they are building up all right, but it's just like, okay, cool. Neither of you are main eventers, lads, but you are going to be in the main event of the pay-per-view. There's yeah. a difference. Jumping backstage, security physically remove Cole from the arena under orders of Chris Jericho, but Britt Baker gets involved and slaps Jericho. So then she has to wear a shirt with Jericho's face on it next week then, <laughs> right? Uh, better make it next, though. So. Brian Danielson and John Moxley were up next, flanked by Wheeler Yuda and Claudio Casagnoli. Danielson insults Bret Hart for being egotistical enough to think that nobody would be, ever be better than him. But Danielson claims he is, and he hopes that Wheeler Yuta will be even better than both of them. So I'll say, I've never liked Danielson. I think he's a completely <laughs> overrated wrestler. <laughs> Mocker of human being. And I hope he... When he goes outside, he finds out all the tires have been let down on his car. Disgusting. <laughs> it claims that the biggest difference between them and the elite, they want to push people and make AW the best place for professional wrestlers and the best wrestling company that has ever been. Moxie then sends a warning to Kenny Omega out of their cage match next week. He says, I'm going to batter you. It was so in a good way. I thought it got everyone over, but it was just funny watching Claudio just sort of stare at the camera and not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, you got yeah, something yeah. to do. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Danielson's boy. Claudio's just like, just like. Okay. Have you seen? I, I don't know why it's got sent. It was on a wrestling blog, but it was talking about the the last Run DMC album when the band were the three of them were at loggerheads about what they should be doing next. Mm -hmm. So the last album, I've not heard it. I saw the track list though, and it's filled with guest stars like Limp Bizkit and Kid Rock. And D did not want anything to do with it because he thought the songs were rubbish. So he doesn't sing, doesn't rap on it. Yes. But they're doing music videos for these. So there's just him in various positions going like that <laughs> while everyone else around him is doing stuff. That's and it's him. hilarious. So that's what I thought. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> so. I am also here because I have to be. <laughs> no contribution to it whatsoever. Uh, Soraya defeated Willow Nightingale following numerous interference spots and shenanigans. From the rest of the outcasts. Oh, yeah. Hikaru Shida, what are you doing here? I like that Ross just gives up and just types, do it. Oh, that was me. Oh, yeah, I thought I'd give it oh, that. that. Yeah. We all know what it's going to be. Yeah. Made her return and teased joining the outcasts, but in a massive swerve. She instead joined Britt Baker and Jamie Hader in laying out the baddies and sprayed them. Spray painted them with, a, yeah, with an L. Oh. Tony Giovanni kept going. What a great swerve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I like. Uh, Soraya just like 
she doesn't feel like a vet, does she? It feels like she's got this ring rust that she's not quite shaken off. Everything's still like I, obviously she's been hurt and everything, but it's just I don't know. There's there's something not quite. It's not right. clicking. It's not, yeah, you know, that's AW it. run at all. And I think it's for me. It's she's being a heel, but she still wants to be liked, or it feels like she still wants to be liked. And sort of like, look, I'm back from from a career ending injury, and she's not. She doesn't fit the AEW style for me. They made her heel so quick, didn't they? Yeah, well, the crowd started turning for a bit. Yeah, fair. But like, it's not it's not working. This story has gone on for far too long of the outcasts yeah. beating all the originals. I was happy to see some development with it. Like, oh, okay, cool. So we're getting some of that. All right, cool. Yeah. And like every other AEW thing, it's going to involve 17 other people. So you do forget. Oh, yeah. Like, Sarega Wrestling's a kind of a big deal. Yeah. It's, yeah, But right. it's not. No. At the same no. time. TV because, match. You know. Oh, and Hikaru Shida's here. It's like, okay, cool. Shida doing the DDP thing. Cool. Yeah. Bang. They're just repeating everything from 20 years ago, aren't they? Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Like, the, if the, it ain't the, broken, the, it's Yeah, yeah right. The House of Black got a promo backstage announcing that any three competitors can challenge them under house rules. A stipulation that sees 20 second count outs, no rope breaks, and DQs being enforced. However, the challenger has the choice. What? The challenger yeah, has the so, choice of doing a DQ. So it's up to the challenger oh, okay, so to say the whether they right, have DQs right. on or not. They said that it only makes it fair because they've set the rest of the stipulations. Before declaring that the house always wins. Uh, yeah, so um, I feel it was okay. to sort of set up that, well, the battle royal that we've got later on to be yeah. like, that's, you're getting a big, a big cluster of tag team action at double or nothing. The open house idea, I quite like it. Yeah, I like it. I, th I think it's good. Um, and th th they should hold those belts for ages. I don't get quite w why the rules benefit them. Am I missing something? They, yeah, that's rather. what I thought. St how is their style really No rope that? breaks. I guess the 22nd count out, a lot of their matches have gone to the outside and there's a lot of... Yeah. And like... Mm. No more Brody, than anyone else's though, right? That, that, that's a point. Yeah. Their style, um, I do like their matches, but it's just like, it's not like, oh wow, that how, that unique House of Black style. It Brody seems King's like something finish. that the Black Blackpool Combat Club would want. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Their whole thing is like, ah, that's right. Proper match and rules and round system maybe, but like... Sure. It's a it nice idea. Hey, it's an open Look, challenge, if it, right? Yeah, if it opens yeah. up variety on the show, hell yeah. Yeah. And, and then we saw all the three man tags, tag teams come out yep. and have some fun. Yeah. Yay. They had a big old get together that played uh Zip Zap de Wap or whatever it's called. <laughs> Zip Zap de Wap, that's the one. Is this not like Bill Cosby? <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> what are you saying? Why? You said it. That I'll came out you. your mouth. Oh, why, Matthew? You're why why did you say that, <laughs> me? <laughs> it was on that shirt. He's not a wolf. <laughs> he claimed in Daddy Ass with a trio's battle royal, lastly eliminating Butcher, the Blade, and Kip Sabian. Setting them up as the number one contenders for the Trios Championships and double or nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this was a nice little battle royal, to be honest with you. So, it was, again, weird that only the acclaimed and the Lucha Brothers got a pop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. Was it a real pop for the acclaimed? It sounded, it real. sounded, it sounded more real, real than agree. Rampage. Nice. Some good lines. Um, it's just something. strange that you've you've got Death Triangle, but Pac's not there, and he's not been there since January. Mm. And me and Aiden were discussing this, and he was like, oh, he's injured, but he's wrestled at OTT since. So what? why is AEW not using him? Why are they using Vikingo? Visa? It could be visa issues, don't yeah. Know. I did read that it was... Maybe he's just complete balls. I don't know because I can't remember where I read it. But it's, it is expensive to bring him in for a couple Can of weeks. So, so only yeah. use him when it's important. So that'd be nice to see him at AW All In. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, it feels like you're having a trios, their former trios champions, mm. a number one contenders battle royal. He should be in there. Was it a number one contenders? Because I don't think it was formally announced. But so, then they went at the end. Oh, you've got to believe they're next in line. Yeah, I mean, they're surely they claimed we'll have a title match. It was like, okay, so that's. <laughs> You oh, I just assumed, before. right, yeah. Did they, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. That'd be funny. <sighs> Strange. But I'm excited. If, they, if it is the acclaimed, I hope they don't take the belts of the House of Black. No, House of Black. Especially but, you just set up the open yeah. house thing. That, that needs to run for six months, really, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, also, very sad to see. I know it's been beaten over the head, but Dark Order getting nearly no reaction. I'm like, oh, they are just like... Yeah. Like... Yeah. Mm. Uh, they claim, though, I heard the Q in QTV stands for Q can, and on. Can you do it rap-wise, though? No. The acclaim. I heard the Q stands for Q Quanon. I would say Quanon in my head, honestly. Q and on. That got a big oof. Blown away, everyone, like a drone in the Kremlin. Nice. Yep. 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 Right. I mean, the just entire that. act is played, but it's just like, oh, he is good when he tries. Funny, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Do you see Hobbs run over the top rope? <laughs> Commentary, you have to sell it. You catch that. 
Uh, who was it? Uh, the, the acclaimed elim- eliminating hops. But hops just pegs it at the rope. The acclaimed basically just go boop like that. And he just pulls <laughs> over, and then the commentary have to go. Well, he had a head of steam on yeah. him. There. <laughs> okay. So it's not the situation that already happened in battle royals. Yeah. Well, I better run at you. <laughs> Hope for the best. Uh, but yeah, decent battle royal. Yeah, yeah I'm a sucker fine. for a good battle royal. You like a battle royal, do you? A good one, yeah. yeah. And this one with the crowd reacting and getting into it, the more it went on, which is always standard for battle royal, like, oh, you know, those those noises people make where it's like, you're watching, I don't know, uh, it's a knockout or something. Oh, he's going to fall off. Oh, he fell off. No Stuart Hall reference there? No, moving What's on. What's he been doing? <laughs> <sighs> Backstage, Sammy Guevara was speaking with Renee. Sammy is a smart wrestling character. As he says, he watched the show back last week and saw that MGF abandoned him last week and that they are not friends because friends don't do that. MGF appears, apologizes, brings on the tears and that he's a horrible friend and Sammy deserves better. Sammy kisses MGF and tells him he should never have doubted him. They end the segment with a big hug after MGF explains he's got this crippling back injury from carrying the company for all these months <laughs> and that he needed to drive away ASAP. He couldn't have stopped and waited for him. He had to stretch out across the back seat, so otherwise his crippling back pain. Oh, It's the a little smug face when he gets pulled back, and it was, oh, it was great. Loved it. It's like, okay, nice. Then you remember, this is supposed to be building up to a main event. Oh, it feels, this event. feels WrestleMania worthy. Oh, yeah. Which this one? Feels... Nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, up next, Kenny Megan. Don Callis could a promo warning Moxie about the violence that awaits in next week's cage match. When Don Callis was speaking and going, look at this big scar on my head. It's even bigger than Von Wagner's as a kid. And all the stuff, it felt like, okay, cool. But then, bloody Omega, I want to like him. And I thought, good, he's being serious right now against the Blackpool Comic Club. We're going to kill him otherwise. And he goes, oh... You might make me bleed, and you may even make make yourself bleed, Moxie. I'm like, why say that? Wrestling's get, get, fair. Get over with the fans, eh? Get over with the fans. Yeah, he's doing what we do on Twitter. Excuse me. <clears throat> you do. Anytime some types your name up in Giphy. <coughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I, I agree. Wrestling's fair. <laughs> scar. I wish they put a bit of makeup on it. It's only little, isn't it? This is. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, you could see his skull. You're like, mm-hmm. Just looks like a fold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on, put it open again, Callus. Do it again. Eh? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Cheers, Kenny. Wardlow then squash uh, Logan Larue, God, formerly of Misfits in Action, with a powerbomb symphony. After the match, Wardlow calls out Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. Christian announced that the title shot for the TNT Championship belongs to him, not Luchasaurus. And they have another awkward stare now. Christian, I'm- of course, older than the dinosaur. Sad about the reaction that Wardlow got because he was so hot and they've really pooed the bed I, with him, haven't they? Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not the same. I, I don't know what the hell they, they got. He got a really big pop for beating the Hobbs, but they also had Arn Anderson and they also had this. It was the end of a, it was like a feud ending match. It was like, all right, but yeah, you can't do that every week. So it's like, oh, and again, Hobbs was even more over than him. I don't understand it. Mad and it. And it, was, it wasn't even like an entertaining squash match. Like it's just clothesline, clothesline. Powerbomb. Oh, right, okay. Mm-hmm. There was no- nothing to it, and he was like, oh, look, Christian, I've not even broken a sweat, visibly sweating and panting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, even... He I'm was not even bro- I mean, on, hold me. I'm not even... <laughs> it was It was like, all right, cool, mate. You've got You've got your lines. Get them done. But no, I wasn't, wasn't a fan. I think Wardlow needs... I think you get the TNT title off him again. <laughs> Just move it. It, needs, it should have yeah. been on Hobbs. A Wardlow, every time he's got that belt, his overness has dropped. It's like in TEW when the, the, the <laughs> overness levels from overuse. Yeah. Doesn't need it. Give it yeah. someone else. I agree. Well, don't worry with the, the rate of, it's been changing lately. Don't You won't have to wait long, yeah. Fraser. Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and Satnam Singh all join Mark Briscoe on his farm to lend a helping hand. Papa Briscoe warns Mark not to trust the guy in the overalls. Which he goes, which one? <laughs> and he goes, all of them, dag nabbit. Thought <laughs> <laughs> this was great. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Satnam Singh was really funny, he wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's funny on a tractor. Yeah. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt's not. <laughs> yeah, it was Give good. Give him a, a, a tractor entrance every single rampage and we'll tune in. Yeah, then, uh, you know, Jeff Jarrett about to start playing that hit song of his. Who owns then the rights to that? De- whoa, 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 whoa. Is he allowed to do it? Because he did it WWE Hall of Fame. Is it a WWE piece of intellectual property? It is, yeah. Is it? So he can't do it. Well, so he can tease it and tease it. Brock and never get the payoff. contract that says I could do what I want. <laughs> and instead of a signature, it's him doing that. 
No, it was good. It was funny. It's hammy as hell, but it was good. Yeah, it was yeah at least doing it, you know, knowingly and being a bit daft and silly with yeah. it. And, you know, Mark Briscoe's facial expressions make this. So good. Sat and sing swinging the baby about. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. Like a church bell ringer. <laughs> And just, again, the, the Briscoe dad is like, what incarnations <laughs> are happening on my farm? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Rick, it's like, if anyone starts trouble, he's got one of those guns that fires like bits of metal. <laughs> Rick, Ricky Starks then defeats Bob. Is that just a bullet? <laughs> is it? No, no, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, what are they call the huge one, the blunderbuss. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm with you. Is that what they shoot? Just shrapnel. Yeah, it's just oh, it's like it's crap. That. It's recycling, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky, he's there chasing them with his assless chaps. Oh, get you! <laughs> Ricky Starks said <laughs> the beats Bullet Club. Go- Who cares about this? Bullet Club goals Juice Robinson with the Rochambeau. After the match, Jay White, wow, remember him, blindsided Ricky Starks and attempted to hit the Blade Runner on him. Haha, <laughs> there's the name of the move. But Starks managed to reverse it and tried to hit the Rochambeau, but White and Robinson managed to escape once again by the skin of their teeth as Papa Briscoe chased up them <laughs> with no shoes on. I'm a bit worried that Starks is going to end up back at square one after this pay-per-view match because like, he, he had the big win over Jericho at, what was it, Revolution? Yeah, and yeah. then he had to fight to earn the match with Jericho. Or was that in the run-up to Revolution? <sighs> when was it? Yeah, it was run-up to yeah. run-up. Yeah, so he had the, he had the match. Uh, and now he's against somebody who is almost definitely going to beat him. And I just think it sort of takes him back a There's such bit. a lack of structure on the tiers in AEW. It really is amazing how maybe it'll come to bite them on the ass if they have like a freak thing where like loads of the top people leave or whatever and they're struggling to make a main event dude and suddenly, I don't know, Jungle Boy has to be a main eventer and like, oh, oh. But it is really like people just go from yeah. here to here to here to here without cracking that. Mm-hmm. That class scene in a lot. Actually, one so, thing I like about WWE is you can say that okay, they're a mid card, exactly. so it means yes. a great deal when they go above it. But with right. AEW, you're floating all over the shop, so I think it means less when you get to like the upper level. Yeah, yeah. do you know it's, what I mean? Exactly. And with this, I hate this because I love Ricky Starks. I think he's the mutts nuts. Came out very little pop. Oh my, you gotta be kidding. Thankfully, they're able to get it in doing the stuff off the little ring steps and stuff he, like he that. He was getting good reaction by the mm-hmm. end of it. Yeah, but just the fact that like, duh, 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 and then just, eh, I'm like, yeah. It's not the AW fans being fickle. It's, you really do have to manage the talent. Yeah. So hopefully Will Washington can get these people in the shape. Oh, if not him, then Papa Briscoe, obviously. Of course. <laughs> but it was all right. And then, yeah, Whiteman run off, blah, blah, blah. And they don't look like Bullet Club members. They could be anybody. I don't like the branding of this whole Bullet Club yeah. Gold thing. Like, what's the point? It's It does feel... I mean, it's, it was, what, 10 years of Bullet Club yesterday? So that was the Jeez. anniversary. Yeah. So, like, there's that. But they never referenced that on the broadcast. I thought they would do something yeah. with having Bullet Club Gold there. But they don't have it in any of their Titantrons or whatever yeah. they're called, you know, um, or they're on their graphics or wearing shirts. Why not? Yeah. Do they well, own the image? You'd assume so if they call themselves the Bullet Club Gold. Yeah. I mean, you'd hope they would. <laughs> New Japan watch AW the first time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How long has this been going on for? <laughs> but and it's even weirder because obviously Bullet Club stood out because they weren't like, I'm saying New Japan, they weren't like that. Any other stable, they're cheating yeah. and doing this and blah, blah, blah. But what they do in AW, there are a bunch of lads who attack and run away and stuff like that. Great. There's literally six of the teams like that in AW. So. So might as well call himself the Fall Stick Horseman to the rules. Club. That's Gold, what they should whatever. do. Stick to the rules. That would be way funnier. Yeah. We're Bullet Club, so we're going to be nice and honourable <laughs> and shake your hands. <laughs> Backstage, Darby Allen and Jungle Boy are getting warmed up for their tag match. MGF comes to speak to Jack Perry and offers him a place next to the throne if he betrays Darby Allen tonight and costs him the shot at the title of Double or Nothing. Jungle Boy says he's not looking for a place next to the throne. He's coming for the crown. Darby Allen returns to not looking for a place next what? Darby Allen returns to the room and sees MGF leaving, causing some tension between the pair. Well, okay. Yeah. It just causes some tension between Jungle Boy and, and, yeah. and Darby. A little bit like, oh, they were they were on good terms before this, but you've seen MGF coming. What's happening? Box ticked. Yep. I, I, they did all right, actually, for me, having this one night story of Darby and, and Jungle Boy being on the same page earlier on. Sammy and MGF reuniting, but not really. Mm a little bit of tension between these two who I thought was like, oh, they're both faces. They're both going to be fine with it. But it adds a little bit more drama. I agree. It's like one of the segments you'd see on SmackDown 01, which me and Tom 
do sometimes and Tom's not <laughs> having a holiday not telling me until last night um, <laughs> love you Tom um, that was but a yeah, shoot comment there. It was a <laughs> Matthew <laughs> shot on Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way you'd like. Uh, when like Jericho and Rock are like teaming up tonight, but it's just like, yeah, we're going to take on the Dudleys tonight. But just you remember, I want the title that you have. Okay, Rock. It's like that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm like, yeah all right, with it. Box tick. As teased earlier, MJF and Sammy Guevara had mashed up theme music, which combined their music. They held hands at the top of the ramp to show that they are unified. Jungle Boy and Darby Allen managed to defeat Sammy and MJF after Sammy and MJF had a falling out during the match. Sammy super kicked MGF, taking him out of the match. Jungle Boy hit an elbow to the back of Sammy's head, which was followed up by a coffin drop, which Darby looked and saw Jungle Boy was there and went, still going to do it. Jungle Boy moved and they tagged it. So yeah. like, yeah, I thought that was a lovely finish, uh, meaning that it will be a fatal four, uh, fatal four way, leave me alone, a uh, double or nothing. <laughs> double or nothing for the AW World Championship. Hooray, they got to it. We got there in the Yay. end. Yay. Uh, it, a grimly predictable um, result and everything. But actually, I, I haven't hated the journey as much as some other people. I think it, it, no. like the character work's been good. It's all made sense-ish. Right. It's, it, the issue isn't what they've been doing because it has been like, oh, okay, building up long-term, stuff like that. It's just the fact that there's no chance any of these three lads are winning. No, totally. Yeah. It, they can talk about the pillars all they like. Pillars this, pillars that. Blah, 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 blah. But they're not. There's one giant pillar and the baby pillars yep. underneath Agreed. going, Mam, mam, feed us. <laughs> like the only one that's got a bit of credibility that could potentially get a win is Darby, right? Like he's the closest, but there's no chance he's winning. Right. It's uh, just like, oh, hey, Darby's the most likely if there's going to be a, a, a winner. But um, yeah, I, this, I thought this match got everyone over. And got yeah. the got the point across. Love the mashed up theme music. All it the works. best tag teams actually, have it. It actually Jerry works show. on this. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um, big, big, big. <laughs> it's the big show. A Jericho. <laughs> That's that. it. That's the January best theme music. Stick. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> um, I also like the character work. As you said, it was well put together. MJF and Sammy going, hey, the opponent's on the outside. Let's do a tope together. Okay. And then MGF runs, stops, and yeah. Sam just does it himself. Yeah. And Sam's like, well, he's like, oh, you know. MGF wanted the glory for himself. It's yeah. all, all sensible stuff. And Will Washington's yeah. influenced that. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Willie. Yep. Thank you, Willie. Yeah. So, anyway. AW, it's, there's some good stuff here. Just, you know. It's nothing bad. outright bad, bad, yeah. is it? Yeah, it's not that. It's just so much stuff happens with so many different people. It can be a bit of a blur. When you read it back going, God, this did happen. And yeah. I did watch it. And it for does, some reason, I didn't feel much. It does feel like we're in a little bit of a lull period between them trying to get Punk back going, where do we fit him in? And like, what do we do to fill that time until he's back and we've got another big storyline there? Imagine it'll be, what well, we've heard rumors of Jericho Punk. But also MGF Punk would be quite a big match to Jericho see. is the source of those rumors, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's the guy? You think he's the one that's, that's saying that he M MVP ran away from a fight in a hotel lobby? Willie, Jericho Willie, would be really strong. Willie, if you're listening, see over yeah, Punk versus anybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, so this was a lovely episode. Danielson can go to hell. Yeah. Bret Hart. <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our. Mail bags. <laughs> ah, mailbag time. Hello to the wrestling equivalent to the <laughs> to the in betweeners. Like my love life, I'll keep this short and sweet. A hey. every week when the podcast drops, I always salivate Ooh. at the reactions of Matthew Ross and especially Jack whenever they've said something and their faces immediately go, "Oh God, why did I think that was good?" Well, you love this episode. I'm sure some weirdo out there looking at you out of context, cultaholic. Oh, I've not heard from them for a while. As a montage of all the best bits of you guys regretting what you've said at one point or another. Or, as we call it, last week's episode with Pachiti. Okay. My question, what is your favorite, oh no, what have I just said, reaction caught live on TV? Can be anything. Doesn't even have to be wrestling related. It will be. Cheers from notorious Wimbledon jobber, Tin Henman. That's not fair. <laughs> 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 oh, we're not, we're not doing mid-carders for football. Mid-carders. Midfielders for football now. We're now doing Wimbledon. A.K. Stephen from New Newtown. Newtownards? Oh, God. I have some help here. Newtownards? <laughs> Newtownards? Yeah, I'm not sure. Newtownards. Yeah. Northern Ireland. P.S. Jack, it's been almost 300 episodes. Buy a new beanie or cap. That's a good point, actually. Has he just got one? PPS, Mafu, please add more time crisis references like you used to in your old Botchamanias XOXO. Thank you. I will. Great game. Yeah. Well, we'll give this guy some action with the answer. Uh, there was a one a while ago where I've been eating Huel 
and drinking Huel, I guess. And the thing about Huel is it fills you up. If it's like on a timer, it's like, duh, 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 duh. I'm full, full of food, full of food. Ding! I'm starving now. Mm-hmm. So there was one time a few weeks ago when I went to go say whatever Ross had written for the notes of the, this week of wrestling. And instead of reading out, it just came out as, this is a good... <laughs> like that. Response. Are you all right, Matthew? I was like, oh. just powered down. Yeah, it was literally <laughs> the exact moment. They were like, yeah. you know, yeah. wrestling good, isn't it? It was pathetic. And it was caught live and in 4K. Very nice. I'm struggling because I've not been on camera long, that long. I thought this was stuff that's, that's not on the... So if it's not on screen, then uh, bringing up politics at the Christmas dinner table with my grand and my brother. No, oh. I thought this was like TV shows. No, well, we haven't, we're not is, all you, are we? You I get. thought I thought this was our own. Thank like, you. Oh my god, our reaction. Like I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. So you we know. can't all know Lorraine Kelly. My question: What is your favorite? Oh no! What have I just said? Reaction caught live on TV. It's something that's happened on a on a TV. We haven't been on TV. You have. No, he's not. Stop he's doing not, this. No, he's, he's not asking. He's, he's, asking, for, TV he's shows. asking for like a Hulk Hogan. We coming for you. Yeah. He's asking for that, but oh. not necessarily wrestling. So it can be wrestling. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, not so it not awkward okay. things that we've this said. This is open to interpretation. Okay. It's not. It says it. No, it does say it there. Yeah, we've just not read it. <laughs> <man. laughs> Us being on TV or you know, no, Hulk no, no. Hogan. You've been on TV, surely. Yeah, but I was good. <laughs> what were you on? Was on was on bloody Wrestle Talk. That like ah, was a TV ah. show. You've been on telly? Oh, God, no. Maybe on the news. Oh, hang on. Yeah, maybe on no, news no. for interviewed stuff. I think. Box, um, why? What did you do? Box Pops and stuff like that. Um, but not, no, no, I've got, no, no, I've got an so. alibi. Don't think so. Nothing else. Have I appeared in anything? No. Nah. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. My favorite reaction. This is a great answer for the mailbag I've, question. I've got one. Have you got no, one? You've not got been on one. TV, but you've been in many people's dreams. Oh, well, what have you got, Pachiti? Is it a, on a program called At the Races? And the guy went. You want that? No, no, I'm not on for. F- Jesus Christ! He's just been talking about this stuff. He's not been on. You have been on TV. But he does you it know on TV. this. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been on TV. Mess. Thank Do you. That, um, and the the bloke in the studio says to the outside reporter, um, "Oh, you've just been joined by a beautiful lady." And he goes, yes. it's a man, actually, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah. funniest thing. It's this woman who looks not dissimilar to Lewis Capaldi. And I see... Well, <laughs> it's so good. Then I, I went, a guy called me interview on BBC then. Guy Goma. Oh, guy Goma. Oh, Goma. God, yeah. yeah. His face. I've never Legendary. seen a face move like that. Because <laughs> he's, he's re- it's so good. Like, he's realised it's like, if this is a Hitchcock film, it would zoom in and pan out at the same time. And then he go, goes for it. He does a whole interview. Didn't he, get didn't get the job he applied for, though. No, that was really sad, yeah. wasn't it? What's up with that? What's up with that? Uh, yeah, he was uh, yeah. an amazing bit of telly. Amazing bit of telly. Like. Right. When the weatherman, the, the, the news people, this is like, I think over here as well, they're like, Oh, I feel like it's a bit rainy over there or something. Oh, you better wear your coat. Oh, like the other day when you got soaked. And, uh, and the, the weatherman's going like, uh, and it cuts to him. He's not expecting me, like, he's just doing this off camera. And he goes, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scratching me face with me middle finger. He got the hives again, aye. <laughs> yeah, that was a good, good one. Book. The other one that used to, you can, uh, do you ever remember the news reader from, he will, because he's like a 90s guy, uh, Peter Sisson. And, 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 oh, what, Peter, Peter Sissons. Yeah, Sissons? him. Yeah. Aye, something like that. Was one time he's I, I don't know the context, but he's he's on TV and he's he's looking like that, like on the side. He's watching an advert or something. He thinks they're off and he goes, "Christ, is that Anne? Is that Anne Robinson? She's had a face done." <laughs> <laughs> and it was broadcast. Yeah, and he just goes, you know, "Ah, now you're watching BBC." You've seen everybody see you. It's, it's, it's not even relevant, really. Oh, I don't know why he's talking to a tree. Good. What are the wrestling ones? Are there Hawk walking out and go? Oh like yeah, that. no doubt. Yeah, uh, you've got yeah Booker T. Um, you oh what is that yeah, the whole when they restart the segment? WrestleMania. Sid. Yeah, Sid and Jr. We're live, pal. It's, yeah. it's live, pal. Sorry, and he's just well. They'll get their act, their answer tonight as well. Man of, <laughs> man of few words. <laughs> 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 and Sid's there's going. <laughs> um, good lucha things. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the one that Hulk Hogan says on SmackDown as Mister America to Vince? I'm not the gay, the guy. Yeah, that that's one, the one. Yeah. yeah, just just one thing. You, we wrestled. We're, we're about to wrestle. Into, <laughs> let me start again, brother. Oh. <laughs> and Vince, I'm gonna do that. Look, the entire time, <laughs> blessing can't crack. Um, 
Michael Cole going, he's been taken. <laughs> was it Jim Ross or Lawler? He's been taken to the hospital for anal bleeding. The funniest. And then thing. Booker T just pauses and goes, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and JR's there just shaking his head like, <sighs> so done with life. Fantastic, that. Oh, all right. When, okay, we're going this too we- long, but like quickly. When Great Carly was hitting on Santina Morella, and Santina went, no, no, I can't be in love with you, Great Carly, because I'm already in a relationship with JR. <laughs> who was, it was clearly not supposed to be like Ribbon. And so, and they keep on cutting to JR. And he says, <laughs> not like this. But then the comedy team were like, oh, Angela. All right, all right, rib time is it. And then he's like, no, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. And like, um, the lad was with Great Carly, his name, I can't remember, was like, we we thought you might be with somebody because you're so beautiful, but Jay, ah, like all this, so like ah, uh, and Cole just goes, "Come on, Mr. Barbecue Man," and it's cut to Jay's face. He goes, "Mr. Barbecue, who fed you that line?" He's getting really annoyed. He's getting shoot annoyed, as uh, Ross Bay say. It, it's really it, it, it's horrible. Some of the stuff they did to Jay, like the draft and all that. It's oh yeah, just like, oh that's a bit out of order. But I can see like why because he he gives a real legit peed off reaction it makes it so much funny I'd totally forgotten about that until you said it there and the same thing with the angle bleeding yeah yeah it is funny that's a thing yeah you're being rude but But wrong no that's a harmless one obviously like (laughs) changes the entire schedule on TV that's a bitch but (laughs) Mr. Barbecue man hello fine folk (laughs) 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 Hope you're all well and looking forward to the next of our regularly scheduled public holidays. A very merry Kingmas to you all. Oh, thank you, Paul. I started thinking about the recent Cody promo where he called Roman Reigns a multi-year investment that only started paying out late on. It made me wonder if more legendary names in wrestling are ones that were naturally skilled or took time to develop. Say, for example, we instigate a 10-year cutoff. In a world where all careers are capped at a decade, which wrestlers raced out the traps and would end up being seen as the biggest successes? If the question of indies versus TV is a sticking point, I'll say so, say it's 10 years from their TV debuts. All right. Thanks again for all the value content. You lot make up at least a small part of most of a, what? Most every of my days. Thank you. All the best. Adam in the West Midlands. Cheers, Adam. Uh, well, it's a 10 year rule. So I, the first one that came to my head, but he's, he is a success. I would say Dolph Ziggler because within f- three years of his main roster debut as Dolph Ziggler, not yeah. as, as the caddy or spirit yeah. squad Nikki, um, he'd won the World Heavyweight title. Yes, it was under weird shenanigans with Vicky Guerrero just giving him the belt, but he, he'd had a world title reign and then he won money in the bank and he'd, he'd cashed in. He had quite a good run, multiple time intercontinental champion. He's it, still a success now though, but I think 10, 10 years from his debut was a good, like t- 2008, 2018, great run. You're still Good catching answer. a lot of crap at the end, yeah. though, aren't you? Yeah, it's post staying at Survivor the, Series. The one that springs to mind is Sheamus because he's always been a good. Oh no, because he, oh, he got the world that's actually, title. That's really actually a really good one five, because six but the investment he was, is there. Now. But I think they put like all the stuff on him, and he was cack to begin yeah. with. He could barely move. He was like a Ford Focus with legs. Got one, and then out of nowhere, he starts getting great Mark, after he won the world titles. Mark Henry. Oh, there of we go. Hall, there of, we Hall go. of Pain promo yeah. peaked right toward that 10 year mark ish, probably. Yeah. Hopefully. It was amazing. It's like, that's right. They're pushing Mark Henry again. And all my mates went, you got to come on, mm. man. And we were like, no. I had to tell my mate, he came around for the pay per view. was just like, have you heard, Matthew? I was like, what? Mark Henry challenging for the title. I went, yeah, if you don't be watching, he's probably going to win it. And he went, what? And the look of like, just Mark Henry. You know what's Mark Henry, right? Mark yeah, yeah. Henry. And he watched and he went, oh, okay. Yeah. It and he won, good. and we were like, yes. Good. But yeah, ten year, uh, PCO, if that counts, maybe, because he's just oh, kept he's on going David on and on and like on. David, like 30 on. years ago. Yeah. But he's still he's still going strong. Um, I, what, Who's had it, like, because it's 10 years is a long time. Like, as you pointed yeah. out, Dolph, there's a big dip at the end there. So you wanted somebody to get good at, like, the seven, eight-year mark and uh-huh. then keep it fairly consistent for the last couple of years, right? That's the what rock. we're after. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> he was uh, only wrestling full-time for, like, what, six, seven years? Five Series 96 to... 2003 was his last sort of proper match. Yeah, when was his... When, when did yeah. AJ... Because no, AJ did a few... No, 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 no. I was... Oh, yeah, because I was counting the WCW stuff there. Because I, mean, I was talking about... Oh, I can't TNA run. TNA run. Mm, I if you count... It's all in one company. It's got all, 
all be not that many people no. stick around for that long, do they? No. Um, true, but if you no. do ten, year, like a what a ten year run, yeah, is early days in the two thousands going to impact the air right rate stuff? The end is oh yeah, pretty good. or even two thousand ten. AJ Styles, when he goes off three years in, goes to New Japan, becomes a world champion there, joins Bullet Club, then joins WWE and has mm. one of the all-time best runs in WWE for someone who's not been a WWE guy. Yeah. You got any more? I was like Kurt Angle, but he, he achieved so much in yeah, such a comparatively really little time. Yeah. Like it's, it's racing out the blocks, as you say, but then he did so much stuff after that, so it's actually a really bad answer. Uh, nah, Becky, it, singing Becky... Because she was she was around just doing oh. stuff for a bit, but it was it wasn't anywhere near ten years. God, I she was took a few years for her to get hot. River dance for a bit, and then yeah, but it took with Charlotte being horrible. Balor, he had Ooh. like if you go from his TV debut in New Japan, <laughs> what were the rules? It was, yeah, from, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was from their TV debut. Peaks and troughs with Balor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's two time NXT champ, longest NXT champ apart from Adam Cole. But the other thing is, like, LA Knight would be someone that we'd have to cut that off because he's been going for oh, yeah. a while. And he was NXT very, 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 very briefly. I'm not even sure he made it up to TV. He's an FCW as well. God, he's an FCW dude. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. But now, look at him. Yeah. He was in Brooklyn 99. That's da, the peak da, of his... da, da. Yeah. Right now, he's, he's hotter than uh, Freezer. So, yeah. Oh. Um, Wow, oh, oh. that's a good question. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, and I might just realize because you look thought. to the side there, looking at Fraser intentively, and I realize you are rocking the Jeff Jarrett look now with the blonde hair and the, piss off. the beard. <laughs> Absolutely, it's only piss just off. hit me there. I'll, I'll take it over, Mister Bean. To be fair, the Jeff Jarrett look. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, sure. Can you say wee woo? Wee woo. Yeah. <laughs> suicide. Does what? anyone have a guitar suicide with them today? <laughs> suicide dive. Hello, but. <laughs> By the time you record this podcast, the draft has come and gone. It made me wonder what a completely randomized draft would look like. There are obvious cons to this idea, yes, but I believe it would be very suspenseful. <laughs> It'd be a disaster. <laughs> if a writing room was forced to work with the wrestlers they've been randomly given, it would also maybe give an opportunity to less prominent wrestlers to get in the spotlight. Very curious your opinions on this. Kind regards, former Belgian 2016 Burnley midfielder Stephen DeVore. I don't watch football, but I do it right. A.K. Jose from Belgium. Oh, well, merci beaucoup. Um, Did not uh, kind of test the waters with randomized r- randomized drafts back in like 2008, 2009. I remember watching episodes of Raw, and it, the one, what was it, John Cena got drafted to SmackDown at the start of the night yeah. and Raw at the end of the night. That's, ran- the, that's the, random, the lottery. It was and definitely random. It was random, <laughs> completely random. I'd... He wants shoot random. Yeah. <laughs> and it'd be, no. It would be the best two evenings of television, and then it would be a disaster, right? Yeah. Like those oh, two episodes, be, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Akira Tozawa gets drafted first, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> followed by Tamina, then Roman Reigns. It'd be really funny. It'd be great TV. And then everything after that. Yeah. Hit, uh, uh, or even funny, like SmackDown gets Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, <laughs> Kevin Owens, <laughs> the Usos, Kevin. And it's like, Raw gets Tamina. <laughs> <laughs> JB, BJ. I don't know how it would play. May Young, <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior. Hang on, stop it. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop the show. <laughs> uh, oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to see it. It's a dreadful idea. I like it. <laughs> it would it would certainly be a really fun stream to do. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. It would be great for us, yeah. But I mean, it's it's obviously the the draft's a way of refreshing things, ending some feuds that goes, right, well, that's over. And also making sure that we've still got some... some st- like I said, that AW doesn't do it very well. Everyone's like kind yeah. of up and down, but everyone's like, there's the hierarchy. So that's why you've got to keep it randomized. Unless you kept it like, here are people at this level. Like yeah. that, um, that, that game that uh, Natalia oh, like got annoyed the fa- with. The Facebook one where you get, you get $20 yeah, yeah. to spend yeah, one, and yeah, Natalia yeah. was a quid. <laughs> <laughs> she, not understanding it, or on the company was like, how dare you, I've been wrestling for 30 years and I'm worth a dollar. <laughs> she just didn't say, no, that's not what we're saying. You just take 15 Natalias. There you go. <laughs> Natalia's been... <laughs> LWO Natalia. <laughs> that would be good though. I guess it's like the MyGM mode on the 2K games, yeah. isn't it? You get a yeah. set budget. I'd quite like to see it done like that, yeah. but then you're giving away how much everyone's worth. That, Natalia would be I more mean, annoyed when she's like 30 <laughs> right, grand. Right. It's, it's sometimes better when it's not said yeah. outright. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, saying, flout saying, well, these guys are at this level. I mean, 
Because then someone will go, well, that'd be a good segment, wouldn't it? It's like, why am I at that? Yeah. I'm it's like the rating this. system on 2K as well. Yeah, when everybody yeah. gets their ratings they out and people, so are, people are upset. People are legit upset. I'm a 68. Amazing. Are you joking? Are you not been on TV for six months? You're crap. <laughs> yeah. I'm not naming no names here, by the way. Will you leave Gargano alone? For God's sake, <laughs> <cheating. laughs> Yeah. But, you know, the idea of a completely randomized one is hilarious. And it will never happen. But yeah. thank you very much for asking, Jose. Come on, get that name right, pal. And thank you very much for your lovely questions, answers, queries, and all the bollocks we get sent in the mailbag. If you have any of your own to send, please send them to mailbag at colaholic.com. Riss piss. Morning, afternoon, Mafu, Ross, and Jack, or others. Hello, others. All right. All right. Really enjoy the podcast. Spend most days not working, but listening to you guys, and that helps the day go by. Great. Always wanted to send the Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Buried. Through, but never really sure what's the question, however. Uh, so I had, I had that, are you wasting away the years song in my head. With recent draft, nah, never mind. With recent draft taking place, I thought I'd ask a few this or that type pitches to see where you'd like the read to run post-draft and for the foreseeable. Hope this makes sense. Look forward to listening to your ideas. Ooh, okay, let's see where this goes. Uh, <clears throat> oh, these are the things, right? So the questions are, would you rather MVP introduces a new Hurt business of free agents, Omar Shelton Cedric, to form float across brands and cause havoc, or Mustafa Ali forms a new retribution? <laughs> That's a tough one. Of underutilized free agents, i.e. Ali, Ziggler, Gorman, and prove why they should be the dominant force. There's something in retribution done right. That's true. The underutilized lot. Retribution Not gold. Jack. Yeah, as long as they don't have the mask. I, you know what? The people who have been overlooked for too long have been consistent. Like your Dolph Zigglers, yep. like your Baron Corbins. Yep. There is something there, but you're attaching it to the retribution name. Yeah. And I don't know. No, Mr. Ali fits in there, doesn't he? He's doing a lot of, he's had a lot of crap to deal with. Uh, I'm going to go for the retribution idea, even though it sounds terrible on paper. It's got to be hurt business. Yeah, yeah thank bag. you. Yeah. You're, uh, the, you're the tiebreaker here. You're going to hurt business. I like the idea of... Uh, doing the retribution thing and going, come on, we'll make this work. Because if they do it, treat it as comedy, it's going to be gold. So you're going to take it seriously. Ali just being disillusioned and Corbin be like, look, I'll, I'll wear the slapjack mask. I'll do whatever. <laughs> Happy to be here. I'll be reckoning. You know, it's a much better name for a stable than is a person, whatever. And he comes out as like Blackjack Corbin or whatever. And he's got the mask on and he loses. And he's like, this weren't ready for retribution. <laughs> <laughs> that would be men. That would be, Corbin being the focus would be, make that amazing. Uh, Wyatt returns to form a musical Wyatt family oh, and recruits Rick Boogs and Elias culminating in a magical mayhem. <laughs> Wyatt Five on that match. In which Rick Boogs and Elias go to a musical adventure against the Wyatt puppets in a cinematic match. Or Tommaso Ciampa joins The Way, leading to a 4 by 4 war games match between the Judgment Day and The Way. So I'm currently picturing Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family as the Jackson Five. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one more chance to show you. That. And that's all that I sold me on that. That's idea. how they get the match. Yeah, Adam exactly. Adam Pace is like, no, I'm not going to sign this match. They just Give me one more chance. You know, it, it's, it's all right, what damn I want. It, I'm in. Bray Wyatt as Michael Jackson. <sighs> I'm going to go for the way. <laughs> <laughs> It's not actually terrible booking. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? You're on. <laughs> all right, sorry. Because Gargano's involved. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. But yeah, uh, well, you know the, you know what they say? Everything's better with it. Puppets. They do everyone's say. Everything's better, with, pu everything's uh, better uh, with puppets. No, they say Jack's never going to the Italian restaurant, but mm, thank you for uh, saying it. Um Wow, look, look at the chemistry. Uh, I think that would be a beautiful idea, having the, the musical. <laughs> sure. the stuff. Of course so, you do. Yeah, of course. One more to add. Sheamus wins the Royal Rumble and challenges Gunther to a match at WrestleMania for the IC title main event night one and finally gets his big win. Oh, I like that idea. Or Cody wins the Royal Rumble and challenges Roman Reigns for the uwu title to finish the story. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Like, Should a Royal Rumble winner go for a mid-card title? Sheamus is the exception there, isn't it? Because it's all he wants. If right. there's a storyline reason for it, yeah. Why the hell not? Yeah. If there have been two nights, that's not that yeah, bad idea, totally. really, isn't it? 
And if they're doing the whole Cody having setback after setback, I think he shouldn't win the Rumble next year. Yep. He needs to but find how do you a, get him in the main event picture if he doesn't? Elimination, elimination chamber. chamber. Yeah, yeah, instead of having like come really, really close. And then if it would need to be done really well, if it is Sheamus that wins and the last eliminates Cody, you can't have the crowd turn on Sheamus. But I think Sheamus doesn't need to be involved I, in the finish. I quite if I'd quite like. Yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose. I well in this order, if it's like which one would you rather? Mm -hmm. Sheamus is winning, right? Yeah, it could like Super Imperium team. like double team and take out Cody or whatever the match I'd, that leaves just Sheamus and Gunther. I'd rather see Sheamus win. <sighs> oh, I'd go see. Cody. Sorry. Being contrarian. Yeah. That sounds like e Sheamus. I love the idea of having the IC title raised up to the same standards and saying, like, it's the one title that he needs. Sheamus yeah. hasn't got long left. Been saying that for three years now, but it could be true. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Logan Paul or Bad Bunny or Pat McAfee wins Money in the Bank, eventually cashing in against whomever wins the new World Heavyweight title. <gasps> Logan. Well, yeah. 100% Logan. He's the best at the three. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be Logan Paul. It would I'm work, wouldn't it? He, heel cause... Logan with a briefcase could be really good. Him going to every boxing match, Boogie versus Thingy. Oh, Logan wings. Yeah, wings. He catches in on wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Logan Paul. <laughs> so yeah, give me give me Logan Paul as the money, Mr. Money Bank with a briefcase. That's perfect because people like, instead of it being a, oh, he's got it, we're going through this, the people like myself going, no, God, no, whenever you appear. Make it prime themed as well. Oh yeah! Fill it with prime. Yeah, just throw it. Out, yeah. I'll throw it out. Oh, oh it costs mate, a lot. mate! Yeah. The there's a thing in the Central Station Metro where they've got like like candy and sweets and whatever, uh. and they sell them prime. And I saw some kids like going, "Oh, I could buy the prime." But like, Thomas himself, it was fifteen quid. Yeah. No. So then I went. I went to Sainsbury. I'm like getting stuff there. So I went and came out, and I could hear them going. So I'm completely interested in what prime is, and they're like, "Mate, I can't really spend fifteen quid on prime. Gives a taste." And goes, "No." For one bottle, well, yeah, 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 just normal fifteen quid. I, I thought was, the hype uh, was gone. It feels like it's gone, but I was. But people are still was, paying for it, though. That's it, the thing. Well, it was in Oxford Street this past week. I was down in London, and we went into one of those American candy sweet shops. How much do you think a bottle of Prime was going? The grape flavor. Oh, in London, in London, hell. on Oxford Street, so big shopping area. Twenty, thirty, it's more, more. No, fifty. Yeah, it's fifty pound a bottle, and they had it security tagged behind the counter. Um, Success, so like it? folk couldn't steal it and it was like it's 50 quid for a bottle of Prime in these American candy stores and they only accept cash because they're scams they're yeah. scamming the business rates or something yeah. aren't they I can't, I can't quite figure out all the specifics but they all popped up um, in London in these like quite high rent tourist areas um, oh. all of those are apparently just money laundering outfits yeah. a few documentaries oh. on it it's really they, interesting they always close the and change the name as well like there was so many on Oxford Street that had just a temporary banner above the old name or it was slightly tweaked like one was like planet sweets and then it was planet off sweets was the new name oh. and it was like okay that, that's you're getting around something file bank the jimmy hart something. version right yeah, yeah. but um yeah oh. 50 quid for a bottle of prime have you tried it i've not ross did though yeah yeah ross, ross got, got in so i tried it and it goes okay it's, it's pleasant but 15 quid i think yeah i think luke got him a bottle from metro center they were selling it there and we did they did it on the christmas podcast i saw it in asda that's the cool. other day the ice pot one for two quid Maybe I should have wow, stopped should have, up. Yeah, yeah, that was a it chance. Was, no, it was just on the shelves. Wow. Was it That's the why energy I assume the height was gone. Was it the energy drink one? Not a clue. Because uh, they've got the, the. I think it's the bottle of the energy one that's like crazy. Big. It was three colours. It was like Neapolitan colours, but oh, no, okay. red, blue, Green, blue, yellow, or something like yeah, that. Something I don't like know. That. Done, done interesting. Anyway, this is why Logan Paul should win Money in the Bank because mm -hmm. you need money. money in the Bank to buy Prime. <sighs> Go on. Thank you the one good one this week. Uh, the King Queen of the Ring is introduced as a network exclusive tournament similar to Cruiserweight Classic in which it focuses strictly on wrestling, the winner receiving a mid-card title opportunity. Right? Who would you like to see win? Chad Gable or Booch or Santos Escobar? Can you Gable. roll your R's, by the way? Uh, no. no? R oh. Right. Of course you can. Oh, it's a Scottish thing. Of course you can. It's a Scottish thing. Uh, Rugby. Um... <laughs> I'd go Chad Gable. Yeah, it's Gable. The, it'd be a great choice. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Winning King of the Ring and getting you're the, in the prize being the king. Or just being a pedant. I feel like it should be for a title opportunity. Yeah. Like, yeah. Otherwise, why bother with getting it? Because you get a nice crown and cape. Well, Butch should do that because to coincide with King Charles III. King yes. Butch. You're like... He's the Butch King. Nah, Gable, That's right. Gable deserves it, doesn't so he? So Cole could be like, well, this king's better than the other king <laughs> from England or whatever. Imagine. Wait, where's Gable now? Did he get drafted a Raw or SmackDown? Raw with, Raw. Raw with uh, 
imagine Seth Rollins, workhorse world champion, and Chad Gable, workhorse IC champion. <laughs> what? That's a lot of horses. The Grand National. <laughs> Too many horses. Mr. Hands. <laughs> Carry on. Well, the world title is actually won by a returning legend, promising to have one last full-time run, which ends up by being defeated at SummerSlam in a big retirement match. Which outcome would you rather see? Shawn Michaels wins to be to be dethroned by Seth Rollins, or Steve Austin wins to be dethroned by LA Knight, or RVD wins to be dethroned by Matt Riddle? I hate all of these. Oh, I mean, I, I like the middle pitch. Steve Austin, Austin LA yeah, Knight, yeah. that's like a big passing of the torch moment as much as I don't think he needs to win the belt, but LA Knight beating Stone Cold for it, that is big. Yeah, that's the the best of a bad bunch. But that sees one of these legends beating the current champ. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you got to pick one. That's, that's oh, the game. Oh, God. I hate this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I have to pick one, it's Seth beating Sean. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Just to see Sean getting his head kicked in would be nice. Roman Reigns wins the World Heavyweight title and remains unbeatable, or Big E shockingly returns to win, <laughs> only to be squashed oh. in six seconds by Brock Lesnar the next night. <sighs> oh, that's really tough, actually, because they're so bad. I, I think, or death. I think I'd take the Big E one because that's... I know Kofi's not recovered to a main event level, but it won't do Biggie that much harm to lose to Brock because it's Brock Lesnar and Biggie can they can play the whole he came back too early from injury. Ah, uh, okay. It's nice. Rocky three, you know. What? I don't understand, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> uh, exactly. I'll pick I'd rather have Reigns held a title for another year than have Brock win the bloody title this again. This is win the other title. To win the World Heavyweight the Championship. New title. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I'd go that for that because it'd be really funny. <laughs> Reigns winning the third version. Would Everybody's be hopes up here, and Roman comes. As long as they got the Triple H going like, really "Oh no, this is the what one thing we didn't want to happen." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what? That would that would be. Funny. And then you get a fourth and a fifth, <laughs> presenting the brand new Puerto Rican Heavyweight Title. <laughs> Roman Reigns beats Bad Bunny for it. It's like Triple H is there crying. Going, oh no. That that would be amazing. Actually, really good. New GMs for Raw and SmackDown are announced. What would you rather see? Elias for SmackDown and Ezekiel for Raw, uh, which results in a big match between the two. Right? Well, like Tom, Tom Hardy in Legend. Or Tyler Breeze takes over SmackDown and the returning Dirty Dango takes over Raw and the shows become a crime series oh. <laughs> in which the fashion police are crooked. Oh, so it's a reality one. And rigging the shows and must be dethroned by true fashion icons pretty deadly. Rigging yes, wrestling? Boys. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, yeah, the second one for yeah. sure. It sounds really funny. Absolutely. It'd be great. Be great. Give, us, give us Dirty Dangle back. I really enjoy him. Yes. God, the fashion police. What a time, eh? You see, Vince didn't find them funny at all, the fashion police. Oh. Well, no one was farting and falling yeah, over. Just didn't, so, think yeah. they were, didn't think they were good crack. That was too deep for him. Fashion police. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Says it all. SmackDown and Raw get their own identities and set stages tight and drawn and themes, but keep sharing PLEs. Or more brand specific, unique PLEs set stages tight and drawn and themes, but Raw and SmackDown stay the same. Mm. Stay the same in what way? Creatively? Visual, I think they mean like visually. visually. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, second one. Yeah. yeah. Brand specific, as long as they're not every two weeks, like it was back in 2016. Yeah, right. But that's yeah, give, give us like unique pay per views. Yeah. I'll ask him was a big dirty tank. Bless you. Raw returns to being a darker, grittier show, similar to the Monday Night Wars. What? Or a new SmackDown Six is introduced and becomes a workhorse show. The non-selected show will be a black, will be bland and dull. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> second. No, God. Yeah, because you can choose what you watch. Can't you? I know we're in the wrong job for that, yeah. but like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just, yeah, have a really good SmackDown and then Raw's a slog. Yeah, as long as it stays two hours. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Nice yes. one. Uh, hope you enjoy these pieces as they are based on not what I think will happen, but what um, he wants to happen. Hey. We'd love to hear some post-draft thoughts of your own. Don't worry, you will. Thanks for always providing entertainment and fun. Aww. Love listening to you guys each week. Will Turtle. 
Isle of Wight, born and raised, if Adam sees this. Is that Big Willy Turtle? Big Willy Turtle? No way. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Turtle. Well, was Much appreciated. He's a shell of his former self after oh, that. But... Come oh, on! Well two. Done. Make it a hat trick. Come on. Two. Come on. We got this. Thank you for sending that Reese's Pieces. If you have any of your own, don't worry, they'll be as long as humanly possible, as evidenced by this. Send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics! The question. Do you remember the theme from Blockbusters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? It's good, isn't it? We're going to get that in. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> ah, what a beautiful podcast we've had. Uh, there's just still a little more time to say thank you to the producers, if they're still listening at this point. Chris Routh. Ruth, Ruth, I assume. Thank, thank you, so Joel's doing it. Mike Staley. I forgot we don't know this, but yes, Staley. Staley. Reno, 2200. 000. 000. Oh, Noah this? Anderson. 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 Oh, there you of go. course. I was Sorry, I forgot. Well. It's the, yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Joel from the camera was yelling. Thanks, Ruth. Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, the executive producers, you magnificent bastards. Hope you're all doing well. There's just still a little time now for our big, big question, which is what's going to be the best match at WWE WrestleMania Backlash? Not WrestleMania this time. I thought it was just I just, just had a thing then. It is just. I yeah. swear they, 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 they did. Cody call it. said WrestleMania backlash in a promo yeah. and then it got scrapped, I think, straight away. Yeah. Ha ha, Cody. Yeah. So it's just plain old boring backlash, I guess. Yeah. I'm look here. Ha ha. And the matches are let's do the little rundown uh, Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn taking on the Bloodline. And we usually at this point, we do a. You do a. How enthused you are about that match? Like noise. noise. Oh, okay. okay. So, so like, uh, that match, what do you guys think? Ah. Mm. That's right. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Oh. Ooh. Rhea Ripley versus Zelina Vega. Yeah. Mm. Seth freaking Rollins versus Omos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed. Yeah. Mm. Right. Look at this. This is good. Frank Valair versus EO Sky. Yeah. Mm. And Bad Bunny versus Damien Priest. Oh, oh. 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 oh you dirty <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Some great noises there. Uh, Fraser, we'll start with yourself. What do you think is going to be the best match? Best match, I think, will be Cody versus Brock. I think in terms of just how it's put together, I think it'll be the most fun to watch. But mm. I do wish it was uh, no disqualification or a street fight or whatever. But I can understand why they kept it for the Bad Bunny Damien Priest match. For me, the one that I'm most excited for is actually Bad Bunny Damien Priest. I'm most excited for that one. But I think the best match of the night will be Cody Brock. That's a risky pick, isn't it? Because you never know with Brock. You'd like to think so, wouldn't yeah. you? You'd yeah. really like to think so. Um, out of that lot, I mean, it's probably the six-man tag. I'm going to go for an outsider here, right? Rhea Hulk. versus Zelina, because Zelina has oh. everything to prove. We know we know Rhea is fantastic. I think she had match of the weekend over WrestleMania weekend. Um, Zelina... Very, very talented, and this is the biggest match of her career so far. So I think they're going to, if they're given the time, I think they could produce something really quite special, and I really hope they do. Realistically, it's probably not going to be that uh -huh. much. Re but realistically. Yeah, very yeah good. it's very good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, that's, that's what I'm going to go for. Yeah. Wow, that was going to be my pick, actually. Was it really? Um, it's, not just, it's not just so we can put Rhea Ripley in the thumbnail and get way more hits <laughs> than we usually do. Thank you, Rhea. Thank you, Rhea. So if you picked that one... And then up and up and up and up, I like to think that because of the last time he was in a three-way match, also involving Bobby Lashley, now I remember it, the theory lashley Reed match yeah. could be one of those uh, dark horses that could do very well. Because mm -hmm. I remember watching that bloody Survivor Series match. I couldn't believe how invested I was, considering I don't care about theory. Yeah. And I was just like, hell yeah, because Lashley's great. Theory, I guess, can be good with the right dance partner. And Reed, Reed is an opportunity now to prove himself. Obviously, with the draft and everything, Theory's going to go to bloody SmackDown, so this could be a good opportunity to get the bloody belt off him. He can go feud with, I don't know. Yeah, but Gunter's... Randy Orton or something. It's got to be a... It, it, that's the problem. For Reed, the problem is that Reed is the only man um, who is, like, uh, not being drafted to SmackDown there. Yeah. We've already got Gunter with the IC Championship. Obviously, he's not dropping it. He doesn't even have a match. That's so the it's, thing it's, it's taking missing, some yeah. of my investment out because, because Reed's off. 
Uh-huh. I think it's Lashley that's winning for me. You reckon? Yeah, I think he'll take it. And they're both on SmackDown, so it's not like yeah. they can keep that feud going and transition it into that. But I don't know. It is weird that Gunter's not got a match. You know what? I forgot about that uh, little thing, so you can scrap that up and put that in the bloody bin. I'm going to pick Omos, the anime-loving giant get. Uh, thinking that Ron's on a hot run right now. It's mm-hmm. obviously a, basically a foregone conclusion. But I'm interested to see what he can do with Rollins because he's been... I'm going to put this in a nice way. Phoenix he's been Lash. really good. That might be nice, but it, uh, plenty of him to land on, I guess. But he's been a good guy who like follows instructions, goes, do this, do that. Him and Braun had that mini classic at Saudi Arabia. Um, him and uh, but he brought Lesnar. Yeah. yeah, he's been having solid matches. They're mm-hmm. not being like, you know, oh, we're great. But I think for variety of reasons, it'll be good. Seth will do some good work out of him. You know, so and he'll, and he'll draw like a picture of Akira afterwards and be like, all if, happy. If anybody is going to bring a great match out of Omos, it's obviously Seth Rollins. I hope Seth likes him. I hope he likes him backstage and he's like, oh, come on, mate, I'll do you a solid. We'll produce something really, really special. Yeah. Really. Could be a bit of a coming out party for Omos. Yeah. Which is going to be the worst match Ooh. while we're in? Oh, that's a good it's question. Probably Seth versus Omos. <laughs> it is, it's, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's got the most potential to be the worst match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the triple threat could fall flat if it doesn't connect with the crowd and if it comes so soon after, like... <laughs> yeah, before Ring of Panzer down, boo, we've seen the draft. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, like if you're not <laughs> invested no in the outcome. <laughs> we miss Bianca EO, though. That could be great. A lot of talent there. Yeah. It, it's it just strange the the booking for it for me a little yeah. bit going in. It's it, not as hot right. as it could be. Right, the storyline's been about damage could all splitting up. So it's like, and then, now this is happening. You're like, all right, cool. I, I think Andrew did a good pitch for it yesterday on the pitches video. Well, two we'll days have once to this watch goes that, out, so won't go and check we? that out. Andrew uh, Andrew had a really good pitch about how you could go navigate that whole title scene. Wow. Yeah. Good. Another great thing to click on. Yeah. From Cultaholic, because this is the end of this particular podcast. Other than that magnificent pitch video, Fraser, have you got anything to promote or hype until next uh, week? Go and check out Worst Shows Ever. It's on Backlash 2018. Uh, <sighs> so if you can get yourself in the mood for Backlash, this looks like a good Backlash, which we've just run down. 2018, it wasn't. It wasn't very good at all. It's pretty pretty crap. So go and watch that video. It's good fun. I forgot how bad Backlash was. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, it's Bo- terrible. Miss and Seth. It's a boring, yeah. boring show. Yeah, Miss and Seth Tired. kill it, and then every match seems to be exactly the same afterwards. And then that main event, the crowd chatting, beat the traffic. Half of them left, didn't they? They yeah. did leave, lights started going out, just to mask the fact that the crowd wasn't there. They started doing the flight, flights flash, like, please, the sp- end the match. End it the did match. run over, though. Like, the show ran over by, like, 50 minutes. But find out all about it on that video. Yeah. Uh, live stream reactions, myself and Andrew. Oh, get it. The um, noises I, you two are going to make. I know, I know. Uh, on Saturday for Backlash, uh, I stream regularly on Twitch on Tuesdays, if you like old British TV. Watching The Hotel at the moment. What else did I start watching this week? I forgot oh, about The Hotel. The Hotel. Oh, really, you brought it up last really, week. I really, really love it. it. Really love it. Uh, I can't even remember what else. They all blur into one, Matthew. What you got to plug? I will be reading more of Bret Hart's magnificent tome. We're just skipping through now. That Even Bret's not interested in some of these years. Because he's like, I had a great match about Kushi, even though he didn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> he's just, uh, Brett, man, he's just like, he's that guy where you're like, you're like at the Christmas table, you're like, oh, here we go. As long as the greatest <laughs> ever, but he's going to say something. And um, yeah, and he's just like, and then, you know, obviously Diesel sucked and Shawn Michaels sucked and like, one eyed pirates sucked, but I was great. Everyone <laughs> cried and weeped wherever I went. Tell me how great I was. Do We're you, in Germany and all they did was cry. Do you Horrible, read though. S- Car crashes everywhere because people are crying. Do you read it in the accent? I've tried doing it, but it's a bugger. Oh, then exhausting. I forget. I just go back to the normal. And we spent some time looking at Seals. William Shatner from Tech War was there on Monday Night Raw. And he punched Jeff Jarrett. It was after I called him. It was great. Shatner was a professional. So I'm like, what the hell's Tech War? And watch that. Oh. Tech War. I've heard it referenced on The Simpsons. Right. Like, in their book or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or DVD or video, I guess. At the yeah, time. It, was, it was everything. It was always like, oh, it's a book by William Shatner in brackets, but also f- properly finished by a real author. It's, it's the only book that's in Springfield Elementary, that's isn't it? it? And they're like, that, that's it. And they go, well, the children have to learn about Tech War sooner or later. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it, that's, that's it. it. They go, what is this thing? You look at it and it's just a really, really naff looking is the year 20, you know, so far in the future, like 2006, and there's something, something, and blah, 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 and tech, and it's just drugs. It's like, <laughs> people on tech and destroying their lives. Tech needs to be stopped. And you're watching the advert going, I have no idea what's happening, and it looks dark. <laughs> William Shatter plays a character. Have you got a favorite episode of Simpsons? The one with tech war in it. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite episode is um, Sideshow Bob's Last Gleaming, the one where he takes over the army base. 
Oh, with the helium and yeah, all that. it yeah, takes yeah, over yeah. and it's a classic line. Nearly every second in that one, and it gets it's, it's like a snowball going downhill. It just gets die, crusty, die. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> followed by the, the running over the the Wright brothers. Play. Oh, sorry, we don't use these <laughs> oh, yeah. in the Air Force. <laughs> it's just oh, mate, so good, Fraser. Um, I quite like all the Treehouse of Horrors up until oh, yeah, what season. Basic bitch, aren't Yeah, it's basic bitch. <laughs> uh, who shot Mr. Burns? That's also a very oh, niche That's one. an episode, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to recall episode names, but there have no. been so many that, oh, okay. that I'd, I'd Is it watch. before your time? No, because the good ones the, were, I the guess. The good ones were, yeah. So I'd like come home from school and it would be the Paul Grady show and then Simpsons on Channel 4. Mm-hmm. And it would reruns where Sky One had the new seasons. That's right. And it was like, it was kind of past it by that point of what's a good episode. And it was like, I've seen this episode like four or five times on Channel 4. So I wouldn't be able to pinpoint what season's what until Fair. until I got the box set. I like that they introduced the, it's like the little raven or crow at the start. So you go, all right, switch that off. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself? Dead Putting Society. It's oh, it's okay. not a, an especially hilarious episode or anything. I really like mini golf. You know, I've got yeah. the same thing, right? If uh, if something is set in a fairground, I love fairground so much. Okay. I automatically just love it. There's there's something about fairgrounds that I find like really comforting. It's not even a nostalgia thing. I didn't go to many as a kid. I just like bright white, bright white, bright lights and movement. Um, and so yeah, the, the, the Dead Putting Society I think is a is a lovely episode. Also, uh, you only move twice, so there's a, oh. a normal episode for you. I like I'm con- enjoying chatting here. Let's, let's go another hour. <laughs> yeah, I like the conclusion to Dead Putting Society, where it's like, ah, oh, the 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 son, the about the son who doesn't <laughs> win. <laughs> he's like, I have to do is it would be worth it just to see your face. Then Fanders is having a good old time. He's oh, I remember it. this. Take what my colleagues say. He's like, oh my god, he's enjoying it. And there's this cr- crowd yeah, of people going, ha ha ha. What's what's the one with Bleeding Gums Murphy doing Baker Street? Ooh, what, the, what what, on the, the sax. Like that's the first time I I remember well, hearing he was Baker killed Street. off, wasn't he? It was, it was yeah. one of the earlier episodes. Um, it's uh, the, where Lisa gets um, sacks on the beach. Yeah, five hundred dollars. I can't so remember the name. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's one of my, that's one of my favorites. Oh, ones. with yeah. Bart doing ballet, that's brilliant. Where he tries yeah. to leap at the end. Yeah. 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 Go on, that one. Simpsons podcast. I can't remember that bit, but I just always there's some things stick in your head. Obviously, a lot of Simpsons does, but just. Saxophone, saxophone. Like, when he's, <laughs> I, I can't. I struggle to call it a saxophone now. It's has to, oh, the saxophone. Saxophone. <laughs> it's two seconds of Simpsons, but being played endlessly. Speaking of endlessly, this podcast. This has been Fraser. This has been Pachidi. Speaking about magnificent Joel. Heard but not seen. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Obviously, patreon.com forward slash called the holic. Do they know what you look like, Joe? Yeah. No, he's been a few they times. Oh, uh, you, you've yeah. been doing it. Because all the, comments, the, all the comments are like, whoa, he can take me to an Italian restaurant any day. Oh. Stuff, yeah. Oh, Joe's got a man of fine club going. Ah, yeah. Not even had Ryan on yet. Not oh, to take my. anything away. No, he's probably the EWO. <laughs> but everyone. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. The, yeah, EWO. Yeah. Um, yeah, patreon.com forward slash cult stop it. We're not come for thoughts. Stop, what stop. What is that? It's, it's just, we're all... breaking the table. It's not me. I'm blaming you. Do you uh, that quick? Go, go to the <laughs> Hall of Fame pick that will be put on a bit earlier than the day before the record of this podcast. two days ago. Yeah. I did it two days ago. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Hopefully, like, when it comes out, it'll be great. I was on holiday. Don't look at me. Oh, I'm, blame, I'm not in the office, so... It's my I, fault. I blame, blame you. Blame me. Puppet Jack, shoddy work. Mailbag at cultaholic.com that sends in your queries, your research pieces, and your song parodies of selling estate agent properties. Thank you very much for listening and watching and enduring. We can't wait to see you next week. We'll get end this week's podcast by pointing at this and going, never ending, was it house? No, it wasn't property. House. Property, that was it. Uh, three, two, one. Never, never ending, ending property. property. Uh, 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 just me, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs>